is touching the truth. On the other hand, Genos defeated the armored gorilla and tried to find out the origin of House of Evolution from him. However, the armored gorilla was as stubborn as a rock in a latrine pit. No matter how Genos threatened him, the armored gorilla remained silent. The armored gorilla also said that Genos had fought so hard to defeat him. With his strength, he was definitely not a match for the Beast King. After all, he was only no in the home of evolution, while the Beast King was no. Although there was only one rank difference between them, their strength was worlds apart. The armored gorilla believed that he had encountered a tough opponent. Perhaps the mosquito girl had been killed by this guy in front of him. However, it was impossible for anything to happen to the Beast King. His opponent was an ordinary looking bald man and a small brat. Moreover, there was almost no movement from the other side. This meant that the Beast King was as steady as an old dog. Facing the two brats, he would probably crush them. Therefore, even though the armored gorilla was defeated by Genos, he did not panic at all. This was because the Beast King would come to save him later. I advise you to run while you still can. The Beast King is much stronger than me, and he's quite ferocious. He likes to eat humans like you the most. Who knows, maybe your two companions have already become food on their plates. However, just as the armored gorilla finished his threat, Yazai and Saitama had already walked over from the other direction. Genos, are you still not done here? As expected of Sensei Saitama. Have you already defeated your opponent? Genos had no doubts about Saitama's strength. After all, he had seen it with his own eyes. Based on the data he had sent back, the armored gorilla and the beast king's strength was not even close to the punch that Saitama had used to kill the mosquito girl. Saitama saw only the severely injured armored gorilla. He could not help but heave a sigh of relief. Fortunately, Genos was not fast enough. Otherwise, there would be no survivors. That's right. That Mossenter was too weak. I didn't even have time to ask before I accidentally killed him. But fortunately, you still have one on your side. There's still hope for the compensation from them for destroying our house. Saitama looked at the armored gorilla trapped in the rubble, his eyes flashing with the light of money. Although Saitama used to love money, he wasn't that crazy. However, because he had been hanging out with Yi Zai for a long time, under his influence, not only did he become a little greedy, he even became a little two-faced. Yes, Saitama Sensei. I wanted to interrogate him, but he was quite stubborn and refused to say anything. Initially, Genos wanted to perform well in front of Saitama and gain a good impression of him. However, he was rather helpless now. You're still alive. Where's the Beast King? It's impossible for him to run away. When the armored gorilla saw Yazai and Saitama walking over and scathed, he actually had a bad feeling in his heart. The Beast King, you mentioned, is it this guy? Yazai had watched the original series, so he knew what kind of person the armored gorilla was. Therefore, he had just brought a part of the Beast King's body over. When the armored gorilla saw the Beast King, with only the eyeball left, he was instantly terrified. His previous image of a tough guy was completely gone. Before Saitama could use force to threaten him, he spilled the beans and sold out his boss completely. Saitama's eyes lit up when he found out that the House of Evolution was a building that was eight or nine stories high. The compensation for the damaged house was in the bag. Anyone who could live in a villa with eight or nine stories was obviously rich. Yeah, yeah Genos, let's go find this House of Evolution. They actually used genetic modification technology to create weirdos. They're definitely up to no good. I think we should get rid of the evil for the people and get the compensation for destroying my house. Although the bald man's words were righteous, Yazai knew very well what he was trying to do. Get rid of the evil for the people. Yazai dared to guarantee that the bald man was obviously aiming for the latter part of the sentence. Sensei Saitama, please let me go with you. Yazai knew how shameless the bald man was, but there were some brainless fans who would fall for his tricks. When Genos heard that this Dr. Genus was an old man in his 80s, he was also quite concerned about the fact that he had successfully regained his youth through genetic technology. 
This was because his enemy, the crazy robot, seemed to be the product of a certain doctor's experiment. When the three of them arrived at the House of Evolution, Genus had already learned of their arrival from the surveillance camera. The entire House of Evolution entered a state of alert. All the defense systems were activated. Dr. Genus and his clones finally decided to release the final weapon, the Carnage Kabuto. This was because even the Beast King and the Armored Gorilla were no match for them. Their strength ranked second and third in the House of Evolution. To stop Saitama and the others, he could only release the Carnage Kabuto. Dot. Even if the final weapon was somewhat out of control, Dr. Genus had no other choice. Although he was fine, he was still eyeing Saitama's body. After provoking Saitama, the House of Evolution could only become a House of Degeneration. Along the way, the various traps in the laboratory did not pose much of a problem to the three of them. Before the traps were activated, Genos could already analyze where the traps were through his electronic eyes and destroy them in advance. On the other hand, Yazai successfully defended against all kinds of trap attacks through the wind rampart. From time to time, he would slash out tornado-like slashes to destroy all kinds of facilities. He only had one mission, which was to destroy the House of Evolution. He had to take advantage of this opportunity to slash a few more times. Otherwise, if Saitama directly wiped the House of Evolution off the map, it would be bad if the system judged that he did not contribute. As for Saitama, he was probably the most comfortable facing all kinds of traps among the three of them. No matter if it was a huge axe that suddenly fell from the ceiling or an iron ball that suddenly rolled out from the walkway, Saitama would not be harmed. When these things fell on him, they would usually collapse on themselves first, let alone hurt Saitama in the slightest. Saitama strolled leisurely in the courtyard, then looked at Yazai and Genos, who were as tired as dead dogs. It felt like he was not here to cause trouble, but to come here for a walk. That bastard Saitama is indeed a monster. Will I really have a chance to beat him to the ground in the future? At this moment, Yazai was really envious of Saitama's strength. If he could also have such strength in a short period of time, even if he became bald, Yazai would endure it. See, there are people who say that the protagonist is too weak. Starting with a punch, he will definitely be weaker than Saitama in the early stages. After all, this is not an invincible story. However, in the later stages, he will at least be comparable to or even surpass Saitama's strength. Yi Zai and the rest were actually at the underground laboratory of the House of Evolution. When they arrived at the eight-story building mentioned by the armored gorilla, they searched the entire building but didn't find any traces of Dr. Genus. In the end, it was Genos who flattened the building on the ground with his expenditure cannon. Only then did they find the entrance to the basement. As for Genos' actions, Saitama felt that it was a waste. It was a luxurious building. Even if it was built on a wasteland, it could still be sold for some money. But now, it had been reduced to ashes by Genos just like that. On the other side, Dr. Genus looked at the three people who were rushing forward and finally released the Carnage Kabuto. After the Carnage Kabuto was released, it first beat Dr. Genus up. This was also the reason why Dr. Genus didn't dare to release it. Although it was powerful, it wasn't under his control. However, after he expressed that as long as the intruder was killed, he would be at the mercy of the other party. The Carnage Kabuto reluctantly let go of Dr. Genus for the time being and rushed toward Yi Zai and the rest. Seeing the Carnage Kabuto in the form of a giant rhinoceros beetle, Yi Zai finally knew that the main character had arrived. Carnage Kabuto, the strongest demon created by the genius scientist, Dr. Genus. Its normal strength was about low level dragon level. Once he activated the Azura mode, he would lose a week's worth of rationality, and his strength would rise to the above average dragon level. Seeing the appearance of the Carnage Kabuto, Genos immediately couldn't hold back and rushed forward with explosive speed. He felt that it was time to show off in front of Saitama. As a disciple, he naturally couldn't let his teacher do everything herself. Flames suddenly shot out from the back of Genos' metal arm. Under the reaction force of the flames, his fist became faster and heavier. However, Genos's punch, which he thought would definitely win, couldn't hit the Carnage Kabuto at all. It was casually swatted to the wall like a fly. Yi Zai had already expected this to happen to Genos. 
Even if he had spent money and upgraded his equipment, he shouldn't have become so arrogant. He was a dragon level monster. What kind of strength did Genos have? At most, he was at the middle to lower demon level. No matter how he thought about it now, Genos's character was indeed rather reckless. It was the same in the original novel. No matter what level the other party was, they would just go up and fight. I'm a robot. At worst, I'll just have to go back for repairs. I won't die anyway. Ever since then, Genos had lost count of the number of times he had fought with the monster. Even his apple kidneys had been beaten out several times, but he was still alive and kicking. Ding! A crisp sound and a few sparks appeared behind the carnage kabuto at the same time. TSK, this shell is so damn hard. Needless to say, the person who launched the sneak attack was naturally Yizai. He didn't want to be like Genos, who had to face him head on. He was made of flesh and blood, and he was a skilled player. He was different from Genos, who was a pay-to-win player. Heh, little bug, you're courting death. Carnage Kabuto realized that its back was suddenly attacked. It immediately turned around and greeted with a punch. Although the attack just now didn't cause much damage to it, Carnage Kabuto didn't care about its reputation. However, facing Carnage Kabuto's powerful punch, Yizai used his superpower to make his body complete a somersault in the air and easily avoided the punch. At the same time, Yizai used his legs to kick the Carnage Kabuto's huge fist and used the reaction force to increase the distance between them. Actions must be fast and posture must be cool. Yizai fully demonstrated how this phrase should be embodied. Passing through the narrow passage, Yizai moved quickly on the walls on both sides. From time to time, he would leave a slash on Carnage Kabuto's body. In the dark passage, one could even hear the rustling of the wind and the occasional sparks in the darkness. Genos, who had just been sent flying, saw Yizai's fighting style and felt that he had learned a lot. Genos knew how strong Yizai was. At most, Yizai was on par with him. However, facing Carnage Kabuto that sent him flying with a punch, Yizai was able to fight so well. Damn little bug, don't run around if you have the guts. Although Yizai's damage to Carnage Kabuto was rather limited, he had successfully angered Carnage Kabuto. It's funny, isn't it? You're obviously a bug, but you're calling others bugs. The rhinoceros beetle was indeed a bug. There was nothing wrong with that. Due to Carnage Kabuto's large body, it couldn't move easily in the narrow passage. Therefore, even though it had the strength of a dragon level, it had now become Yizai's target. However, because it was a monster that had been genetically modified by the rhinoceros beetle, Carnage Kabuto's carapace was extraordinarily hard. Even the demon blade, Muramesa, that Yizai had just obtained could only leave scars on the soft parts of its body. As for the carapace, it could only leave white marks. Moreover, as a rhinoceros beetle, the strength of Carnage Kabuto was also exceptional. Yizai couldn't compare to Genos's metal body. He was made of flesh and blood. If he was hit by a punch, it was inevitable that he would be severely injured. Therefore, although Yizai was fighting rather coolly and played Carnage Kabuto like a fool, he was actually very careful everywhere he went, deeply afraid that he would be hit by a punch. Sensei Saitama, do you think Yizai can win? Genos looked at Saitama beside him. Only now did he realize that those who could be friends with Sensei Saitama were indeed not simple fellows. Just like now, Yizai had done something that he couldn't do at all. He was knocked down by a punch, but Yizai was fighting brilliantly. Yizai, this guy who only knows how to act cool is really despicable. Why do I have to be bald? Saitama looked enviously at Yizai who was moving rapidly. That's right, he was envious. This wasn't the first time Saitama had seen such a scene. In the past, when they were exterminating monsters together, most of the monsters were dealt with by themselves. However, the one who was thanked in the end was usually that bastard Yizai. Why was that? Because Yizai's battle was gorgeous and exciting, and he was also extremely good-looking. On the other hand, Saitama didn't have any extraordinary martial arts skills because she didn't need them at all. Every time they encountered a monster, they would all be knocked down with a punch. Therefore, the results were predictable. Every time he saw a large group of beautiful girls surrounding Yizai, 
clamoring for his contact information, he would feel envious. Saitama was filled with envy and jealousy. However, although Yazai was very showy, it was still unrealistic for him to kill Carnage Kabuto. Because he had just used his strongest move, Gale Blink Slash. The strong Gale even left several deep trenches on the walls of the corridor. Genos also sensed that the strength of the move Yazai had just used was far stronger than his. However, even with Yazai's desperate attack, he only managed to scratch the Carnage Kabuto's skin. He couldn't even seriously injure it, let alone kill it. He only managed to slightly injure it. Moreover, all of this was based on the fact that the space here was narrow, and Carnage Kabuto couldn't move freely. In the end, the difference in strength between the demon level and the dragon level was too big. Yazai, who couldn't do anything to Carnage Kabuto even after using his strongest move, had no hope of killing it. Moreover, as Carnage Kabuto violently attacked everywhere, the originally narrow corridor became more and more spacious due to the violent destruction. Once Carnage Kabuto could use its full strength, Yazai didn't think that he could be faster than the dragon level even though he was only at the bottom of the demon level. Even if he was the type that was known for his speed, he had no chance at all. Yazai felt that he had already shown off enough, and he had already dealt enough damage. This way, even if Carnage Kabuto was killed by Saitama, the system should judge that he had completed the second mission. In short, Yazai wanted to stop while he was ahead. While he was still not injured, he wanted to switch opponents as soon as possible. Logically speaking, he was at the bottom of the demon level. It wasn't embarrassing for him to be able to fight with the dragon level monster to this extent. Yazai flashed again and suddenly appeared behind Saitama. As long as he was here, it was almost the safest place. When Carnage Kabuto saw Yazai, this bug, stop, it wouldn't let go of this opportunity. It rushed in front of Saitama and angrily threw a punch, intending to crush the bald man in front of it and the little bug behind him. Boom! However, the punch that Carnage Kabuto thought was bound to win didn't have the effect that it imagined. A huge sound wave rang out, and his incomparably huge fist was caught by a palm that was completely disproportionate to his size. Furthermore, the body of this baldy who had received his angry punch was like an iron pillar, not even the slightest bit shaken. Looks like you're different from that insect that's scurrying around. You're a powerhouse. Do you want to have a match? Azura looked at the bald Saitama with interest. Since the other party could easily take his fist, it meant that he was qualified. I'm only here to ask for compensation. Your people destroyed my glass and ceiling. Although Baldi Saitama had been longing for a fight, the strength of Carnage Kabuto clearly did not interest Baldi Saitama. Baldi Saitama wanted to get back the compensation for breaking his glass, but he did not mention anything about it. They had turned an eight-story building into ashes outside. Ha, you actually came here to ask for money? If you can't beat me, then you'll die here. Carnage Kabuto obviously did not expect that the Baldi's reason for coming to cause trouble would be so laughable. Sure enough, if I beat you, you'll pay me back, right? Saitama completely ignored Carnage Kabuto's provocation. In his opinion, if he could get the money as long as he defeated this big insect, it would be too easy. If you beat me, everything here will be yours. Of course, there's a greater possibility that you'll be torn apart by me. Baldi Saitama's indifferent expression was constantly provoking Carnage Kabuto's nerves. However, his rationality told him that this Baldi was different from the two noobs just now. Let's change to a more spacious place. We can't fight freely here. There was no other way. Carnage Kabuto was now traumatized by Izai. Fighting in this narrow aisle was quite disadvantageous to him. Furthermore, this Baldi was different from the sly brat just now. Just by looking at how this Baldi was able to receive his heavy punch without batting an eyelid. Carnage Kabuto could tell that the Baldi was very strong. If this Baldi was as nimble as the little brat just now, then there was almost no need for him to fight. This was because the Baldi's strength was not weaker than his. If they fought in an unfavorable environment, then he could only wait to die. I don't have any objections. As long as you remember to pay me back the compensation after this. Baldi Saitama expressed that he did not have any objections. After all, it was a matter of one punch. Since the Baldi wanted to die in another place, he could totally satisfy him. 
After all, the Baldi had already paid him to choose his own grave. A little service was still necessary. Then, Carnage Kabuto brought them to the underground training room covered in white tiles. The spacious degree of this place was so big that even Carnage Kabuto could move freely. When they first arrived at the spacious place, Carnage Kabuto wanted to kill Yizai first. After all, Yizai had used a rather wretched tactic just now and left many wounds on his body. However, considering Baldi Saitama's strength, Carnage Kabuto decided to throw him aside and deal with the Baldi who was, on par with him, first. Anyway, other than the Baldi, the other two brats were just noobs in the eyes of Carnage Kabuto. After killing the Baldi, Carnage Kabuto was confident that it could kill the other two bugs in an instant. Brat, you can leave your life in your hands for now. Later, I will personally break your neck. Yizai turned a blind eye to Carnage Kabuto's provocation and pointed his nose at him. You want to kill the Baldi? Forget it. If the Baldi could be killed, then this world would be the end of the world. Sensei Saitama, can you let me try again? This time, I plan to use my strongest move. When Geno saw Carnage Kabuto, he only had eyes for Saitama and Yi Zai who had just played him. And turned a blind eye to him. Genos felt that his self-esteem had been trampled on. The warrior of expenses expressed that the warrior of expenses was not to be provoked and wanted to regain some sense of existence. This time, Genos put his hands forward and began to gather high heat energy in his palms. Finally, it gathered into a huge beam of fire and shot it at Carnage Kabuto. Indeed, compared to the energy cannon he had released with one hand, the power this time was indeed much stronger. It was probably the difference between one shot of 188 and one shot of 688. The energy cannon that was worth 688 instantly shot out from Geno's hands. The high temperature from such a distance even made the sealed environment feel a little dry and dry. However, Carnage Kabuto told Genos the truth. In front of a level 100 boss, a level 10 newbie like you would be useless no matter how much money you had. Genos' expenditure cannon had no effect on Carnage Kabuto at all. Carnage Kabuto blew a breath of air and the expenditure cannon collapsed instantly. While Genos was still in shock, Carnage Kabuto flashed and appeared behind Genos. It raised its back and Genos lost his apple kidney again and fell beside Yazai. Yazai shook his head as he looked at Genos' miserable state. You won't die if you don't seek death. Didn't you know the difference in strength? Even if you want to be reckless, you should at least use your brain. Yi Zai followed his heart and cowered. From this moment onwards, he would quietly be a handsome man. The current environment had no effect on Carnage Kabuto. If Yi Zai was still fooling around, he would probably be smashed into a pancake. You actually beat Genos up like this. His equipment is very expensive. Now you have to pay more. Yi Zai said as he looked at Dr. Genus, who had secretly followed them over, with malicious intentions. Dr. Genus didn't react to Yazai's words, but Saitama's eyes lit up. He's my best friend indeed. He thinks the same way as me. He's so good at extorting people. Saitama was frantically checking in for Yazai. After living together for so long, the two of them had developed a tacit understanding. Yazai is right. Since you beat Genos up like this, you have to pay his medical fees. Otherwise, as his teacher, I won't let it go so easily. Saitama's words were filled with righteousness. At this moment, he was like a compassionate teacher, fully displaying the image of a teacher who loved his disciple. Teacher Saitama, I didn't expect you to value me so much. Genos instantly felt it. He made up his mind that he would be willing to do anything for teacher Saitama in the future. Yazai looked at the expressive Genos and knew that this kid had taken it seriously again. Sai, after living with them for a while, Genos would understand Saitama's true colors. I'm going to kill you now, Baldi. Carnage Kabuto was dissatisfied with Saitama's attitude of ignoring it from the very beginning. They kept saying that they would compensate him in all sorts of ways, completely looking down on him. It was as if they were certain that he, Carnage Kabuto, would lose. Next, Carnage Kabuto began to jump left and right, showing off its speed. This scene seemed to be rather familiar. Carnage Kabuto that were moving around quickly seemed to be reenacting the scene of the battle with Yizai. 
but this time, he was the one who moved quickly, and Saitama became the target. However, unlike Carnage Kabuto, Saitama had become a target. It wasn't that he couldn't react in time. Instead, he just stood there and watched. Carnage Kabuto flashed and suddenly stopped behind Saitama. Just as it was about to give Saitama the same kidney meal, it inexplicably felt a huge threat. The look in Saitama's eyes made Carnage Kabuto feel that it was so close to death for the first time. Carnage Kabuto didn't hesitate and instantly pulled away from Saitama. But this time, the way it looked at Saitama was completely different from before. It was filled with a strong sense of fear. Carnage Kabuto was actually quite something. At least in the past, other strange people, even those who were stronger than Carnage Kabuto, couldn't sense Saitama's danger. But this Azura Rhinoceros Beetle sensed it. How did you get such powerful strength? Carnage Kabuto was terrified. The feeling of being able to kill it with one punch just now shouldn't be an illusion. But could a human really be so strong? He had been, genetically modified, and his strength was far from reaching this level. Do you want to know the secret of my strength? I can tell you, Saitama said indifferently. Carnage Kabuto didn't react. Dr. Genus swallowed his saliva crazily. Why did he catch Saitama? He just wanted to know why Saitama was so strong. But now, Saitama was so generous that he was going to reveal the secret of his strength? Since you have to pay me a lot of money, I don't mind telling you. The secret of my strength is. After that, Saitama's one-punch class started again. Once again, Saitama revealed the secret of his strength. Every day, he would do 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups. In short, the key was to persevere. At first, he might feel like he was better off dead. But after three years, he would realize that he had become strong, but also bald. After listening to Saitama's lecture, Carnage Kabuto and Dr. Genus's first reaction was that they had been played by the baldy. This was nothing more than ordinary, physical training. It was not a problem to exercise the body. How could one become strong? If it was so easy to become strong, they wouldn't be playing with genetic modification. In short, the baldy was playing with them. Baldi, I'm going to kill you right now. Carnage Kabuto felt that its intelligence had been insulted. Anger instantly overtook its fear. Next, I'm going to enter my strongest form. In this form, I'll fight without thinking for a whole week. Carnage Kabuto felt that it was time to use its trump card, the Azura mode. In this state, its strength would skyrocket. At the same time, it would become addicted to fighting. It would not have any feelings of fear. Carnage Kabuto's aura skyrocketed. Even its skin turned purple. Its strength had increased by more than just a little. It's over. We're all going to die here. Two, he must enter this form. Carnage Kabuto will not let go of any living creature in front of it. Dr. Genus's face turned ashen when he saw the purple azure rhinoceros beetle. This was also the reason why he had to lock up Carnage Kabuto. Yazai, is Saitama all right? Seeing Carnage Kabuto's strength skyrocketing, Genos was a little worried. This was the first time he had seen such a strong monster. The mosquito girl who had almost killed him previously was nothing in front of this monster. Genos, you know nothing about Saitama's strength. However, it was understandable. Genos had only seen Saitama in action once. Saitama, I forgot to tell you. Today is Saturday. Do you know what this means? Yazai said as if he didn't care. Is Saturday some kind of secret code? Both Dr. Genus and Genos had the same thought. Today is Saturday. Isn't it almost 5 o'clock? Although Genos did not know what Yazai meant, he could clearly see it. Saitama, who had been expressionless since entering the House of Evolution, suddenly became anxious. Could this be some kind of special signal? Genos analyzed in his mind. It shouldn't be something simple if it could make the powerful master Saitama change his expression instantly. Due to Yazai's reminder, Saitama obviously lost his patience to play games with Carnage Kabuto. Carnage Kabuto suddenly charged at Saitama at a speed that couldn't be seen with the naked eye. However, the anxious Saitama threw out a punch impatiently. The punch exploded the air, and Carnage Kabuto, 
whose strength had skyrocketed, was smashed into minced meat under Genos and Dr. Genus' shocked gazes. Saitama originally wanted to warm up with Carnage Kabuto, but due to the discount at the supermarket, time didn't allow him to play. Following that, Dr. Genus gave Saitama and Yazai a huge sum of money as compensation and watched them leave with a dumbfounded expression. Although Saitama could kill monsters as easily as chopping vegetables, he would never kill humans. Yazai wasn't interested in killing Dr. Genus either since his mission was completed. Moreover, this Dr. Genus seemed to be a genius scientist. Perhaps he would be of use in the future. After a long while, Genos finally understood what Yazai and Saitama meant by Saturday. He was speechless. It was completely understandable for the strong to have weird personalities. Moreover, being thrifty was also an advantage. Well, Genos couldn't make up any more stories. In his opinion, Yazai and Saitama were two weirdos. However, what he didn't know was that he would probably be assimilated soon. Yazai, you can fly, right? Let's fly over quickly. We can buy some meat on sale today so we don't have to eat bean sprouts all the time. Saitama said that they had just received a large sum of money, so they could afford to be a little extravagant. Don't forget that you have to redeem all my treasures and give me a new game as compensation. Yazai bargained, completely unaware that he was being treated as a flying tool. No problem. I've been eyeing a good TV game for a long time. We can get it together this time. Due to the two unexpected gains, Saitama said that they were rich now and could afford to be extravagant. Moreover, he was also a game enthusiast. He had no objections to Yizai's words. Moreover, Yizai's game collection could also be considered as their food reserves. Once there was a financial crisis, Saitama said that he could sell Yizai's lifeblood again. Genos, you go back first. Yizai and I are going to snatch the goods. If we bring you along, Yizai won't be able to fly fast. Genos was speechless. What was going on with these two? One of them was obviously extremely strong, yet he liked to take advantage of such a small thing. Although the other one wasn't as strong as Saitama Sensei, he wasn't weak either. But now, he was using a rare superpower to be a taxi driver. Then, without waiting for Genos to say anything, he could also go over and help. A trail of flames was left behind in the sky, and Saitama and Yazai's figures were nowhere to be seen. Genos could guarantee that Yazai's speed just now seemed to be slightly faster than when he was fighting Carnage Kabuto. In order to get discounted goods, he broke his own limit. Genos couldn't help but laugh. It seemed that he still had to work hard to fit into Saitama Sensei's circle. By the time Yazai and Saitama returned from the bloody battle at the discount supermarket, it was already close to dusk. By the time they reached home, they realized that the house had changed greatly. As no one was interested in the houses in City Z, after Genos obtained the consent of the house owner, he connected the houses on both sides. By the time Yazai and Saitama reached home, Genos had already cleaned up everything. The living room was much more spacious, and the furniture was shiny and new. Even the pots and pans that were piled up like a mountain had been washed and tidied up by Genos. A full-time nanny was indeed not for show. When Yazai saw the brand new house, he knew that the days of eating and waiting for death had arrived. Saitama was also stunned when he saw Genos, who was wearing a pink apron and waiting for Saitama and Yazai, whose attributes were off the charts. He originally thought that another freeloader had come, but now it seemed that wasn't the case. The three of them sat in front of the hot pot and had a sumptuous dinner, which they hadn't had in a long time, to welcome Genos in. What a joke! Saitama had just seen Genos's housekeeping skills. What reason did he have to reject him? Such a nanny. Bah, where could he find another one? Not only was he willing to work hard without complaint, he was even paying for it. Compared to Yazai, who was also a glutton and lazy guy, Genos was simply an angel. It was great now. In the past, after dinner, they still had to rely on rock-paper-scissors to decide who would wash the dishes. Genos directly did all the work. After Yazai and Saitama finished their meal, they immediately picked up the game controller and started working. After switching to the new game that they had just started, Saitama and Yazai both looked at the game screen seriously. 
their degree of concentration was even more exaggerated than when they encountered a powerful monster. Saitama could no longer find an opponent who could match up to him in real life, so he could only look for an opponent in the game. As for Yazai, it was because he was currently no match for Saitama in real life. If he wanted to vent his anger, he could only torture Saitama in the game. Although that was the case, Yazai and Saitama's battle records were actually evenly matched. From the perspective of a professional gamer, no matter how one looked at it, the two of them were noobs. Although Yazai was known as an otaku, he only collected games purely because he liked the characters in them. His actual gaming skills were actually very average. Moreover, Saitama was not like the original novel, where his gaming skills were so bad that they could scratch the ground. The reason why others would think that Saitama was a noob was because his opponent was the real veteran, gaming otaku king. Obviously, Yazai's skills were not as good as King's, so he could not torture Saitama like a noob. The two of them fought fiercely until it was almost midnight. They only win 48 battles, lost 48 battles, and drew two battles. Just as Saitama finished choosing his character and wanted to continue PK with Yazai, Yazai uncharacteristically put down his controller and prepared to sleep. In the past, they would often cultivate through the night. That was normal. However, Yazai unexpectedly chose to sleep tonight. Yazai, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping so early tonight? Saitama looked at Yazai, who had crawled into bed, with a puzzled expression. Do you know why you're bald now? It's because you stay up late. I think that if you maintain the habit of sleeping early and waking up early, your hair might still be salvageable. Yazai was actually making things up. However, after Saitama heard him, he had already changed into his pajamas and lay on his bed. 1. In fact, it wasn't that Yazai deliberately wanted to fool Saitama. Normally, he would be more enthusiastic about cultivation than Saitama. He went to bed early today because he had just received a message from the system saying that he was about to transmigrate again. Therefore, Yazai wanted to sleep to hide the fact that he had entered the system space to draw cards. Although he didn't know why the system would give him a notification in advance this time. It wasn't like last time, when he was pulled to another plane without a sound. However, after thinking about it, Yazai felt that he was different from before. It seemed that only his zero star hero had become a one star hero. Maybe it was because his hero level had increased, so the system gave him a notification this time. Was this another benefit of the hero level? Although it didn't indicate which plane he would go to, maybe there would be such a message as his hero level increased again in the future. Since he was going to go to another plane, Yazai certainly had to prepare in advance. At least, he had to use all the card draw chances he had accumulated before this time to obtain more protection for himself. Yazai, who was pretending to sleep, had actually entered the system space. This time, he planned to draw all the rewards from the previous missions. Once for the Underground King, once for the Mosquito Girl, and twice for the House of Evolution. Although the four times he had accumulated were the most ordinary random draw. But since he got Kaiatsu, Yazai felt that he was going further and further on the road of Lucky King. First, the first draw was a prop card. The card picture was a swimsuit. Item card, Nami swimsuit, from the One Piece world. Effect, increased temptation. Of course, the premise is that you are a woman. The male host can also try it. Maybe he is a special fan. P.S. You will never know how unscientific the three measurements of 98 are. Good stuff, it can be used to. Bah, what rubbish. And what was with the system's comments? Yazai felt that the system was becoming more and more immoral. Last time, it was the chest wrap, and this time, it was the swimsuit. It was determined to make him go further and further on the road of crossdresser. It's okay. First, not being able to deliver the goods is a basic operation. I'm a person who has seen the big picture. This little setback can't shake my heart to become a European emperor. The second one was an item card. The chances of getting character cards and skill cards were quite low, so item cards like this were the norm. Yizai had been slacking off with Saitama for a few years, and the cards he had accumulated were all useless. Item cards, Sailor Moon CD set. Effect, none. 
allows you to learn how to quickly transform into a beautiful and strong warrior. P.S. As an otaku who has watched countless movies, beautiful women are a must. Yizai no longer had the energy to complain. He silently threw the disc into a corner of the space. Read countless films. Could this be counted as well? Might as well give him a set of teacher songs collection. Yizai's nickname of unlucky was well deserved after two consecutive trashy items that were used by girls. However, he still had to continue. The third time. It was still a prop card, and the card drawing was a tablecloth. When he saw the introduction, Yi Zai was instantly overjoyed again. Although this tool was useless in battle, it was a treasure in daily life. Item card, gourmet tablecloth, from Doriman. Effect, a magical tablecloth from the 22nd century. Cover it on the table and all kinds of delicious food can be produced at any time and place. P.S. A must-have artifact for foodies. Seeing this ordinary tablecloth, Yizai felt as if he had obtained a treasure. If he had this thing earlier, would he and Saitama have needed to eat discounted bean sprouts every day? This wasn't just an artifact for foodies. It was simply the savior of poor people. After drawing the gourmet tablecloth, Yizai expressed that even if it was still trash on the fourth draw, he would be satisfied. With an indifferent attitude, Yizai once again opened the last card. As expected, it was a prop card. This time, the card drawing was a capsule. Item card, Hoi Poi Capsule, from Dragon Ball. Effect, a product of Bulma's Hoi Poi Capsule Company. It can store objects and carry them with you. The capacity of this capsule is about 100 square meters. P.S. Fantasy is the Chinkuan bag, 2D is of course the Hoi Poi Capsule. Another good thing came out. Although Yizai didn't need to carry a lot of supplies for the time being. But when going out, wasn't the space bag a basic configuration? Although Yizai's system space was larger, it could only store the carts drawn. It couldn't store other things at all. After four draws, Yizai was satisfied. At least he didn't have to be too thorough. The card draw opportunities were all used up. Next, Yizai silently waited for the system to pull him to another plane. It was estimated that when Saitama woke up tomorrow morning, he would find that Yizai was missing again. Yizai originally forced himself to be awake and wanted to see how he transmigrated. But with an inexplicable sense of fatigue, Yizai unconsciously closed his eyes. When he was awakened by the noisy alarm next to him, Yizai looked at the strange ceiling and knew that he had transmigrated again. Looking at himself in the mirror, he was still as handsome as he used to be. However, the dark green hair was really a little too eye-catching. This time was different from the world of One Piece. Yizai's physical age was roughly the same as his own age. Although he was a little younger, he was at least the age of a high school student. Opening the wardrobe, as expected, there were only a few sets of school uniforms inside. Since he had come to an unknown world, it was necessary to collect information. Perhaps the school was also a good place to go. Yi Zai, who had finished his preparations, walked on the road and constantly observed the surrounding environment. It was more dilapidated than he imagined, and because it wasn't because the civilization was backward, on the contrary, the technology in this world seemed to be quite advanced. The first thing that attracted Yi Zai's eyes was a black stone tablet that was hundreds of meters high in the distance. It seemed to be protecting the town, blocking the town behind it. The identity that the system arranged for Yi Zai this time was a transfer student from other places to the Yodo district. Today was also his first day of reporting. In other words, even if he arrived at the school, he might not be able to obtain information about this world in a short time. Just when Yi Zai was struggling with how to quickly understand the voice of this world, there was a sudden noise in front of him. A person in a security uniform and a group of passersby were surrounding a little girl and cursing. TBH I don't know much about Black Bullet so if there's any mistake please bear with it. Peace. When Yizai walked in, he realized that these people were surrounding the little girl and were no longer just cursing her. Some people had even started to punch and kick the little girl. And the reason why they did this was just because the little girl stole a piece of bread. The little Loli, who was only 8 or 9 years old, was wearing tattered clothes. She seemed to be used to the curses of the people around her. 
No matter how the people around her punched and kicked her, she only swallowed the bread in her hand quickly, worried that it would be snatched back later. These damn monsters. It's all because of them that our family members are all dead. In the end, they were beaten to death. It's these damn monsters again. I really don't know why the Saitenshi still allows these monsters to stay in the Tokyo district. Dot. The people around them had no intention of stopping the two security guards from punching and kicking the little girl. They even kept clapping their hands and cheering. What made Yizai feel even more deranged was that the last two security guards actually held sharp steel pipes and wanted to stab the little lowly to death. This made Yizai, who originally didn't want to meddle in other people's business, instantly angry. Just how sick was this world? How ruthless must one be to do such a thing to a child like this? The furious Yizai rushed forward and suddenly appeared in front of the little girl. One hand grabbed the steel pipe that was about to pierce the little girl. It's about time to stop, you bastards. What kind of thing did she do to make you treat her like this? Yizai had always boasted that he wouldn't meddle in other people's business if he could. He thought that people with such a Virgin Mary attribute would definitely die quickly if they weren't the main character. But now, Yizai really couldn't stand it anymore. A bunch of adults were bullying a child, and they even wanted to kill her. She stole the bread from our shop. She deserves to be beaten to death. Anyway, she's a monster. The two security guards said righteously, as if what they were about to kill wasn't a life, but an animal. Just because of a piece of broken bread, you actually want to kill her. It was fine if he didn't know the reason, but now that he knew the reason, Yi Zai was even angrier. As a person with normal values, Yi Zai was now burning with rage. Yi Zai lifted a security guard with one hand, pulled out the Muramesa, and placed it on his neck. I'll buy that piece of bread from her. If you do anything to her again, I'll kill you. After saying that, Yi Zai threw the security guard to the ground. The security guard, who fell on his butt, stood up and looked at Yi Zai fearfully. He said with fear and sarcasm, So you're a civil. No wonder you saved that monster. That's right. They're all the same. They're just using monsters as tools. I thought they were some kind of messenger of justice. It wasn't just the security guard. The other people around them didn't seem too surprised by Yi Zai's sudden action. Moreover, they began to point at Yi Zai and whisper. However, under Yi Zai's cold gaze, they instantly scattered. Civil. They seemed to have called him that just now. It seemed like there was still a lot to be learned. It's easy to harmonize the word civil with the word police, so we can only use pinyin. Now, Yi Zai was basically certain that he did not recognize this world. Other than the gigantic stone tablet that left some impression on Yi Zai, Yi Zai did not feel anything else. It was probably because he had only watched one or two episodes in the past. After the surrounding onlookers left, Yi Zai turned around to look at the injured little lowly. However, he realized that she was looking at him with a fearful gaze. Are you here to hit Kanna too? Kanna is just hungry. I won't steal any more in the future. Please don't hit me. The little lowly's pitiful appearance made Yi Zai feel that he had let those guys off too easily just now. Look at the little girl. She was already traumatized by the beating. It's okay. I'm not a bad person. I won't hit you either. I just can't stand their behavior. Are you injured? Do you need to go to the hospital? Yi Zai tried to make his tone as gentle as possible, afraid that he would scare her. She looked like an orphan. Speaking of which, what the hell was wrong with this world? A normal person wouldn't punch and kick such a small child. 1. Yi Zai sized up the little lowly's appearance. Her tattered clothes and white hair were no longer beautiful because of the stains. But even so, it still couldn't stop the little lowly's delicate little face. No matter how one looked at it, she should be a pampered little princess at home. But now, she was beaten up because of a piece of bread. Yi Zai looked at the pitiful little lowly and also took out a gourmet tablecloth to make a sumptuous meal for the little lowly. Wow, big brother, are you a magician? Looking at the food that suddenly appeared on the ground, Kanna was instantly stunned. Even her fear of Yi Zai seemed to have lessened a lot because of this. 
After doing all this, Yi Zai planned to leave. He still didn't understand this world. Moreover, he couldn't stay in this world for long. This was all he could do for the little lowly. Touching Kana's white hair that had a tinge of purple, Yi Zai planned to report to school quickly because he was going to be late. But what surprised Yi Zai was that after Kana hugged the food in her arms, she trotted behind Yi Zai. At first, Yi Zai didn't notice it. It was only when the little tail kept following him and walked for a long distance that Yi Zai couldn't help but turn around and say, I can't adopt you because of all kinds of relationships. It wasn't that Yi Zai had a heart of stone, but he didn't know how long he could stay in this world. Rather than abandoning the little lowly who had feelings for him in the future, it was better to ruthlessly reject her now. Hearing Yi Zai's words, Kanna was on the verge of tears, but she still ran forward to take a drumstick and put it in Yi Zai's arms. Then, she walked away. Today was the first time Kanna met someone who was so good to her. After she was born, her mother abandoned her when she saw her red eyes because of the protoenteric virus. They clearly didn't do anything wrong, but the moment they were born as cursed children, they all became monsters that the world hated. Kanna was abandoned when she was a child, but she was adopted by a kind-hearted old grandfather. But a few years ago, the old man also passed away due to illness. Kanna had relied on picking up food that others didn't want to survive for the past few years with great difficulty. But today, she met the second person in her life who was good to her. That big brother had beautiful dark green hair and descended into her world like an angel. At this time, Kanna finally knew that she had seen what her grandfather said before he died. The person who could accept Kanna. But now, one of the only two people who treated her well wanted to chase her away. Kanna's current mood was imaginable, but she wouldn't cry out loud. Kanna is a good child. I can't trouble big brother. Besides, he has already given Kanna a lot of food. Kanna kept encouraging herself in her heart. Then, she turned around and planned to walk back to the sewer where she lived. Well, wait a moment. After I finish reporting, I'll bring you home first and then come back to school. It couldn't be helped. In the end, Yi Zai couldn't resist the condemnation of his conscience and decided to temporarily adopt the little lowly. This wasn't a matter of whether he was a saint or not, but he knew that if such a little girl continued to live like this, she might really die tragically on the streets one day. If he could remain indifferent despite knowing this, then what was the difference between Yi Zai and the so-called scum? At least before he left this world, it would be good if he could take care of this little lowly. Hearing Yi Zai's words, Kanna's face bloomed with an expression of disbelief. Then, it was instantly replaced by ecstasy. She was a child after all. Her emotions were completely shown on her face. Originally, Yi Zai wanted to drag Kanna into the school with him, but the latter refused. If she claimed that if she went in alone, not only would she be chased out, she might even be beaten up. Although Yi Zai didn't know how sick this world was, those people punching and kicking Kanna just now couldn't be faked. Yi Zai didn't force Kanna to follow him again. He knew too little about this world. He could only slowly understand it. The school Yi Zai transferred to was called Magata High School. It was considered a local high school that was passable. Yi Zai transferred here to study, second year of high school. Look at that boy. He's so handsome. Yeah, yeah. Why haven't I seen him in school before? Could he be a transfer student? Walking along the aisle, the number of heads turning was quite high. There was no other reason. Every world looked at one's face. Although Yi Zai's dark green hair was a little eye-catching, there were obviously no green hats in this world. Therefore, with such an idle level face, walking in the youthful and budding campus, the lethality was quite great. Yi Zai searched for a long time but still couldn't find the school administration office. Every time he asked the girls passing by, they would scream and run away, as if Yi Zai would do something to them. Helpless, after wandering around for a few more minutes, Yi Zai finally saw a boy who was also wearing a school uniform. Student, may I ask where the school affairs office is? Can I trouble you to bring me there? Because I'm a transfer student, so. A few minutes later, the two of them walked side by side in the hallway and started chatting. So you are a transfer student. My name is Rentaro Satomi. 
If there is anything you don't know in the future, you can ask me. My name is Yi Zai. I will be studying here in the second year of high school. Please guide me in the future. Yazai didn't know who Satomi Rentaro was, but judging from the way he walked, he seemed to be someone. Rentaro walked with a military gait, and there was something bulging around his waist. Was that a gun? Furthermore, Yazai could sense from Rentaro that he was not to be underestimated. Can guns be carried in school? Moreover, an ordinary high school student had such strength. Could it be that he had come to another unknown world of martial arts? The two of them arrived at the entrance of the school affairs office. Watching Rentaro's departing figure, Yazai seemed to be deep in thought. After reporting to school, Yazai took half a day off because he had to settle Kana down first. Because of Kana's red eyes, she was forbidden from entering any storefront. Therefore, Yazai was the one who bought her clothes and other daily necessities. He also bought her a pair of contact lenses so that she could move normally in the future. After he was done with all this, Yazai rushed back to school without stopping to rest. That was because he still needed to gather information, and a place with a high flow of people like the school was undoubtedly the best place to do so. However, Yazai didn't need to use any of the methods that he thought of for a long time to get information out of her. He already knew most of the information that he wanted to know. During the first period of the modern history class, Yazai casually flipped through the textbook and learned the general information about this world. There was a special kind of creature in this world called the Gastria creatures. They had different shapes and different abilities. Moreover, the Gastria creatures were divided into levels. There were a total of five levels. The weakest level was the first level. Humans could kill them with ordinary weapons. However, from the third level onwards, they could only be harmed with a special kind of metal, which was called Varanium. Moreover, the Gastria creatures had extremely tenacious regenerative abilities and vitality. The Gastria creatures of the third level were already classified as creatures that could only be destroyed by a team. As for the highest level, the fifth level, there were only twelve of them in this world. People even named them after the twelve zodiac constellations. These fifth level creatures all had the ability to destroy an area. It could be said that they were no different from natural disasters. The sudden appearance of the Gastria creatures caused humans to lose their homes and families. The group of people who lost everything in the Gastria War was known as the Age of Plunder. Moreover, this Gastria virus was quite strange. It would parasitize the little girls that were born. Although the little girls infected by the Gastria virus possessed extraordinary abilities, they would be gradually eroded by the Gastria virus in their bodies. Once the degree of erosion reached a critical point, they would become a new Gastria creature. These infected Lolas were collectively known as the Cursed Children. This was also the reason why Kana was beaten up. It was because she was a cursed child. Although these children did nothing wrong, the Age of Plunder, who had destroyed their homes, stubbornly grafted the hatred onto them. The suffering of these little girls reminded Yi Zai of a certain fox faced ninja who was the best at talking. It was better to say that these little girls were even more miserable because not only were they killed by each other, but they also did not live for long. Because humans lost the war with the Gastria creatures, humans could only live in a corner from now on. A tall giant stone monument was erected. Because the giant stone monument was made of veranium, the Gastria creatures would not approach it. Moreover, in this war, a new profession was also born, which was the so-called civil. People discovered that although the cursed children were infected, they possessed strength that far exceeded that of ordinary people. They began to use these cursed children to cooperate with the humans who supervised them to form a group to eliminate the Gastria creatures. The people who supervised them were known as promoters, while the cursed children were known as initiators. Seeing this, Yi Zai couldn't help but feel that it was a little ridiculous. Anyone with a discerning eye could see that the initiator, which was also the cursed child, was already the only way for humans to fight against the Gastria creatures. However, people's attitude towards them was so chilling. Was this the rhythm of wanting them to work for their lives and treating them like monsters? If it weren't for the fact that the cursed children were all young girls with immature minds, he wouldn't have been able to do it. Yi Zai dared to guarantee that the humans in this world would definitely suffer the consequences of their own actions. Yi Zai took another look at the introduction of the initiators. 
Just like the Gastria creatures, the initiators had varying levels of strength. In order to better distinguish the strength of the people in this world, a special organization was set up to rank the promoters and initiators under them. Even two of the twelve zodiac palaces, level five Gastria creatures, had been slain in the past. The people who killed them were the combination of the first and second IP of the people ranking. The ability of the initiator depended on what the Gastria animal factor in the body was. Not every cursed child had the qualifications to become an initiator. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many cursed children who lived so miserably. Some of the cursed children who were worth nurturing would be taken in and distributed to the promoters who would become the civil. For most promoters, they wouldn't treat these initiators as companions, but as consumables. Therefore, even some cursed children who became initiators didn't starve to death, but they lived quite miserably. Holding back his anger, Yizai finally finished reading the modern history content in the book. What a disgusting world. That's right, this world gave Yizai a disgusting feeling. As a world invaded by an unknown species, the One Punch world was simply heaven compared to this world. At least in the One Punch world, those heroes were quite popular. While the cursed children of this world were treated as weapons, they also had to suffer all kinds of killings from their own people. Yi Zai now began to rejoice that he was sent to such a world. This was also the first time since he obtained the system that he wanted to be a hero from the bottom of his heart. He wanted to save those children. Even if his ability was limited, he wanted to at least give them a home. Ding! Discovered Mission 1, taken the cursed children of the Tokyo district, give them an environment where they have nothing to worry about, and do what a hero should do. Reward, one designated draw, 300 hero points. Just as Yi Zai, the system's mission, the mission's mission. The reward this time was extraordinarily rich. Not only was there a designated draw, but there were also 300 hero points. It was obvious that the difficulty of the quest was quite high. However, Yi Zai didn't mind this time. Even if it was for nothing this time, he still planned to do it. After returning home, Yi Zai saw Kanna waiting at the door as soon as he opened the door. Seeing Kanna again, Yi Zai had a different idea. Brother Yi Zai, welcome back. But unlike Yi Zai, who was full of emotions, the little Loli was quite happy. Today could be said to be the happiest day of her life. There was delicious food and beautiful new clothes. Although Yi Zai let her play at home, the latter was still stubborn. She had been at the entrance, waiting for Yi Zai's return. Kanna, you're also a cursed child, right? When the words, cursed child, came out of Yi Zai's mouth, Yi Zai clearly saw that the originally cheerful little lowly instantly drooped down. Her hands went to the back of her new dress, afraid that Yi Zai would chase her away in the next second. Don't worry, I just want to know, in the Tokyo district, are there many homeless cursed children like you? Seeing the uneasy Kanna, Yi Zai hurriedly comforted her. Many. She had a friend who was killed by someone else. She just got a little closer to that person. She didn't do anything. At this point, Kanna began to choke up again. Sure enough, there were many cursed children like Kanna. It was a long way to go to adopt all of them. If it was food, there was no problem. Yi Zai had as many gourmet tablecloths as he wanted. But accommodation, which was needed by the little lowly, was a big problem. There was no doubt that although he had come to this plane, the identity that the system had arranged for him could not change the fact that he was still poor. Then, if Yi Zai wanted to have sufficient funds, he would have to think of a way himself. However, Yi Zai had also thought about this when he was in school. That was, if he registered as a promoters and went out to hunt for Gastria creatures, he would be able to get a high reward. This was no different from the hero association in the One Punch world. While taking on high risks, there would naturally be good returns. Moreover, Yi Zai already had a candidate for the initiator to form the civil group. That was the cute Kanna in front of him. Although Yi Zai still did not know what the animal factor in Kanna's body was, it did not matter. If it were not for the fact that he had to be a initiator to register as a civil group, Yi Zai would have planned to do it alone. He did not intend to let a child like Kanna take risks with him in the first place. Kanna, do you want more children like you to have a place to live and clothes to wear? 
A few days later, in a forest in the suburbs, two figures, one big and one small, were moving quickly among the trees. In the distance, a giant, gastria creature, in the form of a spider was dismembered by the galloping divine wind before it could run far. Big Brother Yi Zai is so awesome. He could kill that third level, gastria creature, from so far away. Kanna was wearing a cute little dress and a pair of red leather shoes. Because of the good food and drink recently, her pair of short legs had begun to grow fat. I forgot to mention that the animal factor in Kanna's body was lizard. Her skin was quite sensitive to factors such as humidity in the air, and her strength was also quite astonishing. It's impossible for there to be dragons in this world, so we can only choose resources that are most similar to dragons. P.S. Big love Kana's chubby little legs. I knew the author is a weirdo anyway for those who still don't know she looks like Kana Kamui from Kobayashi-san. And it seemed that because there were many types of lizards, Kana even had the ability to release voltage, although it needed to be charged. A few days ago, they had already registered as a civil group. In the past few days, they had been continuously hunting at a high intensity. Kana's strength was also beyond Yizai's expectations. It could be considered a miracle that a powerful cursed child like Kana was not captured to be the initiator. At first, Yizai and the others only used the level 1 Gastria creatures to practice. But after that, Yizai realized that the strength of these Gastria creatures seemed to be very ordinary. At most, they were at the level of the wolf level monsters in the One Punch world. Even the level 3 Gastria creatures that they were slaughtering now were at most at the upper middle level of the tiger level in the One Punch world. After weighing their strength, Yizai naturally chose to kill the level 3 Gastria creatures without hesitation. This was because the various limbs on the Gastria creatures of this level were the most valuable when sold to those scientists. On the one hand, they could sell the corpses of the Gastria creatures, and on the other hand, they could also receive the bounty for the mission reward. In fact, compared to the level 3 Gastria creatures, the level 4 ones were actually more valuable. However, because the level 4 Gastria creatures were fewer in number and extremely difficult to kill, it was more efficient to kill the level 3 ones. Originally, killing a level 3 Gastria creature would require an expensive haze metal weapon. However, Yi Zai's weapon was a little special. The demon blade Muramesa had the ability to stop the healing of wounds. Therefore, the Gastria creatures with extremely strong regenerative abilities were no different from ordinary wild monsters in front of Yi Zai. Due to Yizai and Kana slaughtering a large number of level 3 Gastria creatures in the past few days, their IP ranking had also risen rapidly. From being unknown when they had just registered, they were now ranked 7800 in the IP ranking. Don't look down on the 7800 IP ranking. There were more than a million registered, populous, groups in the world. They were quite valiant to be able to obtain such a ranking in a short time. One had to know that it had not been long since they had registered. Ranking 7800 was far from their limit. Big Brother Yi Zai, this spider looks delicious. Can we? No. Kanna had been staring at the Gastria creatures that had just been dismembered by Yi Zai. Yi Zai knew what she wanted to do. For some reason, Kanna seemed to want to eat everything. She was clearly not hungry now, but she still wanted to eat all kinds of strange things from time to time. Yizai skillfully took out the Hoi Poi capsule and dragged all the corpses of the Gastria creatures together before putting them inside. With today's events, the plan should be in motion. Yizai's plan was simple. He planned to save up money and buy some Vyth metals. Vi in here means Varanium. Then, they would build a gathering place far away from the town. As for why he didn't choose to stay in a city protected by the giant stone tablet, there were many reasons. First choice. Due to the invasion of the Gastria creature, there were very few places where humans could live. At the same time, a safe place to live naturally became extremely precious. This also caused the price of land to skyrocket. And if they were prepared to accept the cursed children, they would definitely be displeased by some people. Rather than waiting for the conflict to erupt in the future, it was better to leave as soon as possible. After selling off all the Thagastria creatures that they had hunted, Yazai continued to hunt as usual. Kanna went home to watch TV while he reported to school. What? 
You said you wanted to buy a lot of Vi metal and asked if I had any connections. When Rentaro heard Yazai's words, he could not help but exclaim in surprise. Even though they had been together for a period of time, Yazai had become familiar with Rentaro. He also knew that this guy was also a civil. Not all ordinary high school students were at his level. Moreover, Yazai had also met Rentaro's initiator. She was a cute little girl with red hair and a headband. Her name was Enju Ehara. Even though Enju's strength was not as strong as Kanna's, she was still quite strong. At the very least, she had no problem killing some level 2 Gastria creatures. However, with Yenju's strength and Rentaro's ability to make Yazai feel a sense of danger, their IP ranking was actually not in the mainstream. Because their IP ranking exceeded 5 digits, there was no need to register them. They were simply not in the mainstream. One had to know that Rentaro and the others had been civil for much longer than Yazai and the others. However, everyone had their secrets. Yazai would not be a busybody to get to the bottom of it. The reason why he had a good relationship with Rentaro was mainly because this guy was a good person. At the very least, he had no prejudice against Kanna and Yenju, the cursed child. Moreover, as a civil in the same school, this guy knew quite a lot of things. Just like now, Yazai did not know where to get the Vi medal, but Rintaro definitely knew. Tell me first. What do you want so much Vi medal for? These are all strategic resources. Rintaro did not say that he did not have it. He only said that he wanted to know what it was for. In other words, this guy did have some connections. One had to know that Yazai had already searched many places. Every time Yazai stated his intentions, the other party would either shake his head or chase him out. Of course I have my uses. Anyway, it's not for doing bad things. I'm just asking if you know. Although Rentaro did not discriminate against the cursed children, Yazai did not want to announce it out loud for the time being. To most people, the cursed children were so-called monsters. If they knew why he wanted the Vi medal, they might not sell it to him. Rentaro also hesitated for a moment before agreeing to Yazai's request. He decided to bring him to a place. This is the place you said you can get a large amount of Vi metal. Yazai looked at the huge building in front of him and asked Rentaro. That's right. If there's anyone in the Tokyo district who can provide a large amount of Vi metal, it's only Shiba Heavy Industries. Rentaro nodded. Actually, it was not just the Tokyo district. The Shiba family's weapons business was also used in other districts. As a strategic resource, Vi metal was naturally not lacking here, because a large number of their weapons were also made of this material. They're such a big company. Would they care about two rookies like us? Such a big company would indeed have a large amount of Vi metal. However, anyone would know that they would not care about two high school students. It's okay. I know the eldest daughter of the Shiba family. I've just informed her to come pick us up. When he mentioned the eldest daughter of the Shiba family, Yazai could clearly see that Rentaro's expression was a little strange. However, Yazai did not mind. He thought that this eldest daughter of the Shiba family might be Rentaro's lover. He looked at the huge building in front of him and then at Rentaro. Perhaps that Shiba family's eldest daughter looked like. As expected, Rentaro also had the potential to be a gigolo. Then, without giving Yizai much time to imagine what kind of dinosaur Miss Shiba was, a sweet voice that made one's hair stand on end sounded. Welcome to Shiba Heavy Industries. It's been a long time since Rentaro-chan last came here. A woman with long black hair holding a black paper fan walked out from the door. She was a little big and had a stroke. She was around the same age as Yazai and was extremely beautiful. Her figure was impeccably curvy. No matter how one looked at it, she was a high-class Miss Perfect. Then, what was Rentaro afraid of? Miss Shiba, didn't I tell you many times not to call me, Chan? Rentaro was quite dissatisfied with the way Miss Shiba addressed him. I told you many times too. Rentaro-chan, you can just call me Miori. In that case, why did you come to my place today? You should know that I kept asking you to come here, but you refused to come. Miori Shiba used the paper fan to cover her mouth and looked at Rentaro with a scrutinizing gaze. It's my friend Yazai. He wants to buy some veranium metal. 
Rentaro pointed at Yazai beside him, indicating that Yazai was the customer. Since you're Rentaro chan's friend, I can still make the decision to buy one or two Varanium weapons. I'll give them to you. Miori Shiba saw Yazai. As the student council president of Magata High School, she naturally knew Yazai, the famous transfer student. Miori Shiba had always wanted to rope Rentaro in and let him join Shiba Heavy Industries. Now, she could do him a favor and give him some weapons to his friend. I think you're mistaken, Miss Shiba. I don't need Varanium weapons. What I need is a large amount of Varanium metal. Yazai directly expressed his intentions. What did he need that bit of Vi metal for? What he wanted was a large amount of Vi metal that could at least be used to build a wall. Oh, how much Vi metal does this student Yazai need? When Miori Shiba heard Yazai's words, she retracted her smile and turned serious. It was only at this moment that she was the precious daughter of Shiba Heavy Industries and a qualified businesswoman. Let's start with a few tons. If it's not enough later, I'll add more. Yizai's words were so shocking that it scared Rentaro and Miori Shiba. As the young miss of the Shiba clan, Miori Shiba had seen a lot of things. It wasn't like she hadn't done business before, so she quickly calmed down. However, at the same time, she was curious as to why Yizai needed so much by metal. However, it was different for Rentaro. Previously, he had thought that Yazai only wanted a few hundred kilograms of Vi metal to create special protective equipment. But who knew that Yizai's appetite would be so big that he would ask for a few tons in one go? With all due respect, student Yizai might not know the price of Vi metal. As a strategic material, the price of Vi is not cheap. What Miori Shiba meant was that Yizai was just a high school student. Could he take out such a sum of money? Yizai did not waste his breath. He immediately took out the rewards from the various missions and the funds he had obtained from selling the Gastria creatures. Rentaro was dazzled by the large box full of banknotes. He pitifully realized that although they were both high school students, the difference between him and Yi Zai was huge. He and Enju could only eat bean sprouts every day, while Miss Tendo could not even eat her next meal. And from the looks of it, Yi Zai was now a young master at the level of a nouveau riche. Although I know that this money is far from enough to pay for the Vi metal, I can give you a deposit as a deposit. I can slowly make up for the rest of the money. Yi Zai had already expected that the Vi metal was expensive. After all, it was something that others used to make weapons. Just thinking about it made him feel like a nouveau riche. Originally, it was fine to use the Vi metal and mix it with other materials to build the wall. Although the rejection of the Gastria creatures would be weaker, the cost of building it would be much cheaper. However, Yi Zai did not want to be careless. After all, this was the stronghold of the family. Yi Zai wanted to work harder and make the best. After seeing the deposit that Yi Zai took out, Miori Shiba was also moved. Although their Shiba Heavy Industries had always been in the arms business, it was rare for them to see such a big deal. Especially for a large company like theirs, the big clans behind them were all entangled with various interests. If they could complete such a big deal, Miori Shiba's position in the clan would probably become more stable. As expected of Rentaro, providing him with free weapons was indeed a profit. It had only been a short while since they started advertising and they had already pulled in a big client. That's right, Rentaro and the others were so poor that they could only eat bean sprouts. They did not even need to think about Vi weapons. The reason why Rentaro could afford to use Vi weapons and bullets was because Miori Shiba provided it for free. As for why she provided free support to Rentaro, who was not famous, it was not because Miori Shiba had fallen in love with him. It was because this woman's eyesight was quite sharp. She had her eyes on Rentaro's future, which was the so called investment. One must know that Rentaro had never displayed his strength in front of others. In other words, Miori Shiba was completely relying on her intuition. Little Yi, can I trouble you to tell me who you are? Why do you need so much Vi metal? Miori Shiba instantly changed the way she addressed Yizai as she leaned closer to him. Feeling the soft touch on his arm, Yizai finally understood the reason why Rintaro avoided Miori Shiba. That. Miss Shiba, I don't want to reveal the use of Vi metal for the time being. 
but I can guarantee that it will not harm the interests of Shiba Heavy Industries. Ye's expression did not change as he distanced himself from Miyori Shiba. For a pure businessman like her, it was best to maintain some distance. Just call me Miyori. Then, little Yi, you should at least tell me what you do. How can I believe that you'll be able to complete the final payment after I provide you with enough goods? Miyori Shiba reluctantly approached Yi. She was very good at using her advantages. I am the same as Rentaro. I am a civil. The money in your hand is just my weekly earnings. How is it? Does this prove that I have the ability to repay the debt? He had no choice. In order to obtain a large amount of Vi metal, it was necessary to reveal it properly. Although it was Ye's idea to develop in a wretched manner. Then, can I ask what is your IP ranking? Earning such a large amount in a week was indeed shocking. But this was only Ye's one-sided statement. The main point was still the IP ranking. After all, it represented one's strength. My civil IP ranking is only 7,800, but I've only been a civil for a week. It was undeniable that it was unrealistic for a 7,800 IP to get so much money on credit. However, Yazai was confident that he could increase his IP ranking rapidly within a month. What? Yazai, your IP ranking is already 7,800? Is Kanachan that strong? Or is it that you're actually a hidden expert? Before Miyori Shiba could react, Rentaro was the first to shout excitedly. As a civil himself, he knew how difficult it was to increase the IP ranking. Just look at him and Enju. Even though they had completed many commissions, they were still in the unrated ranking. Of course, this had something to do with Rentaro deliberately hiding his strength. Even so, Enju's strength as a rabbit's animal genes was quite outstanding. Looking at Yazai and the rest, it had only been a week. Their ranking had already reached 7,800. This was not something that could be described as strong, all right. How did you guys get so many commissions? As far as I know, Yazai, you guys haven't even registered a company. He had thought that everyone was trash, but who knew that Yazai was a proper gold collar? He was the only one who couldn't eat. Due to the large number of civil jobs, there would naturally be a corresponding department. This department was a variety of guard companies. To put it simply, the company would accept commissions, and after the civil completed the commission, they would be given a certain amount of remuneration. Of course, this was only a method used by civil whose IP ranking wasn't high enough and wasn't famous enough to receive commissions. Those who were famous enough and had a high IP ranking would receive a large number of commissions even if they were sitting at home. Yazai and Kana had just formed the civil team not long ago, so they naturally weren't that famous. However, Yazai's commissions weren't few at all, so this made Rentaro feel quite strange. This was because the Tendo Guard Company that he joined sometimes couldn't even receive a single commission in a month. That was why he and Enju had been eating bean sprouts. His childhood sweetheart, who was also the boss of the Tendo Guard Company, Kazara Tendo, was even more so. She was often hungry. It's the girls in school who commissioned me, and the remuneration for the missions seems to be quite good, Yazai said with a puzzled expression. Yizai said with a confused look. He had always thought that it was easy to find a job. After all, he had only put up a small advertisement on the school's bulletin board and attached his and Kana's information. Then, there were constantly seniors and juniors who came to commission. But looking at Rentaro's expression, it didn't seem like that was the case. All right, this is indeed a world where looks are the most important. After hearing Yazai's commission source, Rentaro immediately understood. Yizai was quite famous in Magata High School, especially among the female students. Rentaro had even heard that some of the girls in the school had even set up a Yazai fan club and a school hunk research club. Actually, it was very easy to understand. Yazai had excellent learning ability, was extremely handsome, and was also quite strong. Such an impeccable person would be a national idol, no matter where he went. Moreover, there were many girls like Miyori Shiba in Gatian High School. Rentaro didn't find it strange that Yazai could get so many commissions. So, Miss Shiba, what do you think? What are my conditions for you to buy these pie medals on credit? Ignoring Rentaro's cursing expression, Yazai asked Miyori Shiba, who was beside him. 
Little Yazai, can you allow me to test your strength? It was indeed amazing to be able to raise the IP ranking to 7,800 in a week. Moreover, if she completed such a huge deal, her position in the Sheba family would become even more stable. But if she messed up this deal, her position would also plummet. Therefore, she had to be careful. No problem. Then, who is my test subject? Rentaro? Or Miss Sheba? Or all of you together? Yazai had no objections at all. It was such a huge batch of valuable goods. If the other party didn't even ask and just gave him credit, Yazai would be worried. Moreover, Yazai could tell that this Miss Sheba wasn't just a pretty face. Yazai could feel the aura of a martial artist from her. It was even stronger than Rentaro's. Although Rentaro also had the aura of a martial artist, it was something else that made him feel threatened. No, if you want to test little Yazai's true strength, there is something more suitable than Riki and me. Miori Shiba smiled mysteriously. Then, she turned around and walked towards the building of Shiba Heavy Industries. She gestured for Yazai and Rentaro to follow her. After entering Shiba Heavy Industries, Yazai finally understood how powerful they were. There were all kinds of I weapons that were produced in an assembly line. Among them, there was no lack of powerful guns. There were also all kinds of cold weapons. There were knives, spears, swords, and halberds. Little Yazai, do you have any that you like? If you do, you can take whatever you want. Just treat it as a gift from me. Miori Shiba looked at Yazai and said generously as she stared at the various weapons. Just like how she provided Rintaro with weapons for free, she also saw a business opportunity in Yazai. If one day, Yizai became an expert whose name spread throughout the world. Then, Shiba Heavy Industries could stand out and say that the weapons used by Yazai were produced by them. It was just a small investment in the beginning. If they won the gamble, it would definitely be a huge return in the future. Miori Shiba was very clear about this. Rentaro and Yazai were definitely not ordinary people. Miori Shiba, who had been in business for many years, intuitively knew that she would not be wrong. Yazai naturally knew what Miori Shiba was thinking, but he did not reject her. It would be a waste not to take something that was free. Furthermore, he was lacking in long-range attacks. Handguns of superior quality were placed in front of Yazai. Yazai picked up the Desert Eagle in front of him. After playing with it for a while, he put it down in disappointment. Why? Little Yazai, do you think that these weapons are not good enough? Miori Shiba asked doubtfully when she saw Yazai's expression. It's not that it's not good. It's just that it's not suitable. That's right, Yizai wasn't a professional. He couldn't handle guns at all. Whether it was reloading or shooting, Yazai could not even be considered a beginner. Yazai put down the handguns. Instead, he took a fancy to a set of small knives that were placed neatly on the other side. 1. The blade of the knife was very thin. If it was flying in the air, if one didn't pay attention to it, it would even be overlooked. Yizai held the knife in his hand and lightly sliced it. A line of blood instantly appeared on his finger. There were a total of eight knives in this set and they were also made by Havai. Because of such exquisite craftsmanship, the cost of production might be even more expensive. Little Yizai, have you taken a fancy to this set of shadowless? But this set of weapons is a failure. Miori Shiba saw Yizai pick up a knife and opened her mouth to explain. This set of shadowless was designed by our Shiba family's top blacksmith. Although it looks small, it's extremely powerful. But because it's difficult to make and difficult to recycle, it's too expensive. Therefore, it's not popular among the common people. Yi Zai looked at the knife in his hand that was faintly discernible due to the refraction of light. The name, Shadowless, was indeed extremely appropriate. Moreover, if such a weapon was thrown out. If it was left in the body of the, Gastria, or dropped on the ground, it would indeed be difficult to recycle. Compared to the much cheaper, Vi, bullets, this weapon was indeed considered useless. I'll take this set of, Shadowless. Thank you, Miss Sheba. Yizai picked up, Shadowless and couldn't put it down. This set of weapons could make up for his lack of long-range attacks. Little Yizai, have you really decided? 
If you only need long-range attacks, there are obviously better ones. Miori Shiba persuaded. However, Yizai obviously didn't intend to change to anything else. No need. Compared to guns, this set of shadowless suits me more. Indeed, for shadowless that couldn't be recycled, others might find it useless. However, it wasn't a problem for Yizai. Don't forget that he had superpowers. Controlling shadowless to fly was simply a piece of cake for him. Moreover, shadowless that had superpowers attached to it wasn't a consumable item at all to Yizai. If he wanted to recycle it, he could easily recycle it. Seeing Yizai's firm attitude, Miori Shiba didn't intend to continue persuading him. She just brought them to the test room. We're here. Next, I'll show you the latest research results of our Shiba family. Rentaro and Yazai were brought to a huge laboratory by Miori Shiba. In the middle of the laboratory, a special tempered glass was used to create an open space with a radius of nearly a kilometer. Outside, there were all kinds of computers and special instruments. Miori Shiba began her introduction when she saw Yazai and Rentaro's puzzled expression. This device is called, Combat Simulation Device. The machine will load the tester's physical data and let the tester enter an imaginary battle. Furthermore, the target of the battle, the environment, the number, and even the gravity can all be adjusted through the machine. Rentra was still in a daze, but Yazai had already understood everything. This thing was similar to a complete hypnosis device, which was an advanced application of VR technology. Kirito's grandpa and the others used the same principle as SAO, but they could analyze the parameters of the tester and simulate it. How is it? Rentaro-chan and Yazai-chan, do you want to give it a try? Yazai was determined to try it. After all, he was the tester. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to obtain a large amount of Vi metal. However, seeing that Rentaro was also eager to try it, Yazai gave him the opportunity to try it for the first time. To be honest, Yazai was still quite curious about Rentaro's strength. Under Miori Shiba's instructions, Rentaro put on the device and walked into the huge glass cover in the middle. Tester has entered. Commencing combat simulation. Please select your battle terrain. Desert, plain, forest, mountain. Please select your battle target. Gastria creatures and machine modified humans. If you want to select a specific opponent, please enter the relevant data. The number of opponents and the weight of the environment will increase according to the number of times you pass. Rentaro chose the plain terrain, and the opponent chose the Gastria creatures. When Rentaro finished everything, Yazai was surprised to see that the environment inside the glass cover had changed greatly. He originally thought that it was VR technology, and that only the tester would be able to see different scenes. Who knew that the Shiba family would be so awesome that they could actually visualize everything that Rentaro saw? It's not visualized. The current technology isn't that good. The only reason why we can see Rentaro's battle is because of this special glass cover. Miori Shiba stepped forward and explained. With human technology, it would take at least a few hundred years to visualize something. Rentaro, who was in the middle of the test, felt the strength in his body and breathed in the air that had the smell of earth. He couldn't believe that all of this was fake. However, before he could exclaim at the magic of this device, a small gastria creature appeared. From the looks of it, it should be a level 1 gastria creature. Rentaro pulled out the two guns on his back and fired accurately. This newly born gastria creature immediately fell into a pool of its own blood, sullen. A level 1 gastria creature could be killed even if it was an ordinary person with a large number of people. It wasn't strange that Rentaro, who had a weapon made of Vi, could kill it instantly. However, before Rentaro could relax, a few more loud roars were heard. This time, three level 1 Gastria creatures ran out from three different directions. This time, Rentaro displayed his physical fitness that far exceeded that of an ordinary person's as he dashed across the plain. From time to time, he would turn around and shoot, killing the three level 1 Gastria creatures. After the three level 1 Gastria creatures died, an even larger Gastria creature appeared this time. This time, it was a level 2 Gastria creature, and there was only one of them. Although the level 2 Gastria creature's resistance to Vi wasn't strong, it was much faster. Rentaro, 
who had been able to maintain his speed advantage before, could only barely dodge the enemy's attack this time. Tendo Battle Technique Form 2, 16 Forms, Invisible Cicada, Black Wind Just as the level 2 protogut Gastria was about to catch up to Rentaro, Rentaro used a powerful roundhouse kick to kick it back. Then, Rentaro charged forward and aimed his gun at the Gastria creature's eyes, killing it instantly. After killing this Gastria creature, Rentaro, who was panting slightly, suddenly felt his body become heavier. Difficulty increased. Current gravity is doubled. The alarm sounded, which meant that the gravity in the environment he was in was twice as strong as before. Rentaro had never experienced such a feeling before. Right now, he felt like he was being carried by a huge rock and was moving forward. Then, with a familiar roar, a level 2 Gastria organism attacked Rentaro once again. This time, Rentaro couldn't show off his skills even if he wanted to. That was because his footsteps were heavy. Just walking took a lot of effort, not to mention running and using the Tendo battle technique. Finally, Rentaro was defeated by the Gastria organism after both sides suffered heavy losses. However, he also got a free lunch. Because of Rentaro's departure, the surroundings returned to their original state. The test has ended. Your Excellency's test result is rank C. The combat simulation gave Rentaro a C rating. Yizai had just found out from Miyori Shiba that the grades of the test ranged from F to SSS. Rank F was equivalent to the standard of an ordinary person. Rentaro's rank C was already far above that of an ordinary person. At the very least, he wouldn't have any problems fighting against a hundred people. Of course, a hundred people was referring to the most ordinary of people who only had a combat power of five. When Rentaro walked out while shaking his head, he muttered, I didn't expect that the double gravity would affect me so much. Yazai walked up to Rentaro. Seeing that his body was fine, he also prepared to enter the device. Before leaving, Yazai turned around and glanced at Rentaro. If you had used all your strength, your rank shouldn't have been C, right? Yazai wasn't an idiot. From Rentaro's series of actions and hesitant eyes, Yazai could tell that Rentaro was still holding back. However, it was only because of some misgivings that he ended up dying together with the Gastria organism. Yazai, what nonsense are you talking about? I'm just an unknown, promoter. What I did just now was already my full strength. Rentaro waved his hand, indicating that he was just a rookie. He wasn't someone who pretended to be weak to eat a tiger. Yazai didn't comment on Rentaro's words, but he didn't pursue the matter. After all, everyone had their secrets. Rentaro didn't ask him why he wanted to make so much by metal. Yazai wasn't someone who didn't understand human relationships. He wouldn't pry into other people's secrets. Seriously, Oriki. Why are you always so secretive? Are you that afraid of us finding out? What's your true strength? When Rentaro walked to Miyori Shiba's side, the latter also mocked him. Miyori, how far do you think Yazai can go? Rentaro didn't plan to argue with Miyori Shiba because he wasn't her opponent. Thus, he used Yazai to successfully change the topic. Miyori Shiba already knew what kind of personality Rentaro had. At that moment, they started to talk about Yizai and stopped asking about the previous topic. He had to admit that this woman was impeccable, whether it was her looks or her EQ. If it's as little Yizai said, and he managed to rise to the 7800th place in the IP ranking in just a week's time. I think he should be able to deal with a level 3 protogut in an environment with double gravity. This was Miyori Shiba's estimation of Yizai's strength, but Rentaro clearly did not believe it. If it was before and Miyori Shiba said this, Rentaro might not have any objections and might even feel that she was underestimating Yazai. But when Rentaro himself stepped off the stage, he finally realized just how ridiculous the effects of gravity were. Just the double gravity was enough to make it difficult for him to walk. He believed that Yazai would be in the same situation as him. The sudden increase in gravity had a huge impact on people like them who were already used to the current gravity. If it wasn't for the double gravity, Rentaro felt that he would be able to deal with three level 2 Gastria creatures alone. While Rentaro and Miyori Shiba were discussing, Yazai began his test. Although he didn't plan to use all of his strength, he had to show most of it. 
Otherwise, it would be very difficult to get a bunch of Iranian metal from that troublesome young lady. Yazai chose the mountainous terrain, and his opponent chose the Gastria creature as well. Similarly, not long after Yizai chose all the options, a level 1 Gastria creature suddenly appeared behind him. It's time to show my true skills. Roar. The Gastria creature suddenly appeared in a good position. It was close to the little bug in front of him, and it was also behind him. It could easily swallow him whole. But Yazai seemed to have eyes on his back. A pitch black blade with a golden hilt appeared out of thin air. Yazai spun, leaving a black blade in the air. The Gastria creature's roar came to an abrupt stop. A breeze blew past, and the Gastria creature that was still standing was instantly cut in half. It fell to the ground and turned into a pile of data before shattering into pieces. Miori, did you see Yazai attack just now? Rentaro looked at Yazai in shock and asked Miori Shiba who was beside him. No, I didn't see it at all. My eyes could only catch his movement when he turned around. Miori Shiba was also shocked by Yazai's attack just now. She wasn't just a pretty face. Her strength and eyesight were both quite sharp. If she were to exclude her physique and only compare her martial arts foundation, Miori Shiba was even more outstanding than Rentaro. But even Miori Shiba couldn't see through Yazai's sword skills at all. Before the two of them could be surprised by Yazai's strength, three more level 1 Gastria creatures appeared in the mountainous terrain. But recently, Yazai had been treating the level 3 Gastria creatures as prey. He wasn't interested in the level 1 Gastria creatures at all. After a series of amazing maneuvers, the three level 1 Gastria creatures were all killed by Yazai in less than a minute. He's too strong. I'm no match for him at all. Rentaro compared the killing speed just now to Yazai. They were indeed not on the same level. Although he might be able to compete with Yazai if he took out his trump card. But who could prove that the strength Yazai displayed now was all he had? Looks like little Yazai was still a little conservative when he said that he could raise the IP ranking to 7,800 in a week. If it wasn't for the fact that he still has to go to school, his ranking should be even higher. Miori Shiba also looked at Yazai who was in the middle of the test and said. Killing level 1 Gastria creatures was nothing. The key was Yazai's killing speed and his leisurely attitude. It didn't feel like he was fighting but taking a stroll. Even a fool could tell that Yazai was fighting with ease. Even Miori Shiba now felt that her evaluation of Yazai's test was too low. After Yazai easily killed the three level 1 Gastria organisms, the level 2 Gastria organism appeared as expected. However, the level 2 Gastria organism that Rintaro had to use some tricks to kill was no different from a level 1 Gastria organism in front of Yazai. Scampering, unsheathing, and slashing. His actions were done in one go. The Gastria organism that had yet to leave its birthplace was instantly killed. Up until now, Yazai had already achieved the same level as Rentaro. Difficulty increased. Current gravity is doubled. As a series of electronic notifications rang out, Yizai suddenly felt his body become heavy. Even the weight of the Muramesa in his hand seemed to have increased by quite a bit. Previously, Rentaro had been defeated at this stage as well. In the end, he perished together with the level 2 Gastria organism and received a C evaluation. If Yazai only obtained a level C evaluation, Miori Shiba obviously wouldn't give him a large amount of I metal on credit. In other words, Yazai had to pass more stages to obtain a higher evaluation. A breeze suddenly blew in the mountains. Yazai's feet seemed to be wrapped in air currents. Under the doubled gravity, he crushed the stones on the ground and his body shot out rapidly. This is impossible. Yazai's speed is actually faster than before. Rentaro, who had been paying attention to Yazai, exclaimed in surprise when he saw Yazai shooting out like a bullet. He originally wanted to see Yazai lose, but now, Yazai had become even stronger. It seemed like he wasn't affected by the gravity at all. He must have used a special way of exerting his strength. Moreover, Yazai's kendo seems to be from a famous sect. Miori Shiba analyzed from the side. She was also quite surprised when she saw Yazai easily kill the level 2 Gastria organism under the doubled gravity like a gust of wind. 
What Yazai used was naturally the special movement technique of the wind swordsmanship, the stepping forward slash. Before the change in gravity, Yazai didn't even use the wind swordsmanship. He was only using the ordinary swordsmanship that he had learned in the One Punch World Dojo. It was only now that he began to show his strength. The centipede like level 2 Gastria creature fell to the ground as it screamed. Then, three more similar level 2 Gastria appeared. However, they didn't pose any trouble to Yi Zai who had used the wind swordsmanship. Yi Zai had only used a little more time than when he had killed the level 1 monsters, but he had already killed the three level 2 monsters one after another. Yi Zai stood on a rock and shook off the purple blood on his flying dagger, waiting for the next opponent to arrive. He didn't have to wait long before a spider-like level 3 monster appeared in front of him. Seeing this level 3 Gastria creature, Yazai came to a realization. His old friend, he and Kana had killed most of these level 3 monsters. There was no other reason other than the fact that this type of level 3 was the most common, and it was easy to kill and sell. Level 3 Gastria creatures usually had some intelligence, so they wouldn't be like those brainless level 1 and level 2 monsters from before, who were reckless when they saw people. This kind of level 3 Gastria creature was the same, but Yi Zai was very familiar with this kind of individual. Therefore, it didn't take much effort for him to kill it under his blade. Difficulty increased. Current gravity is three times. After killing the old face that had made him rich, the electronic voice sounded again. Following that, Yizai felt an even greater pressure weighing down on him. Three times the gravity. This time, even his feet began to sink into the soil. Three times the gravity didn't sound like a big deal, but it was completely different when one experienced it personally. How did it feel when one's body that weighed 100 pounds had now become 300 pounds? Yi Zai told you that it was the kind of thing that made one feel like they were carrying dozens of pounds just by lifting their hands. However, although this kind of gravity was a little troublesome for Yi Zai, it wasn't to the extent that he couldn't move. It was just that Yi Zai hadn't done similar training before, so he couldn't adapt for a while. Once he got used to it, it was only three times the gravity. Even if it affected him, it definitely wouldn't cause him any trouble. However, it was obvious that there was no time for him to adapt now, because once the gravity increased, three level 3 Gastria creatures were already rushing towards him. Yi Zai raised his feet with difficulty and began to move much slower than before to dodge the attacks of the three Gastria creatures. However, because his muscles couldn't adapt for the time being, it was quite difficult for Yi Zai to move in the current gravity environment. Dodging left and right, although he successfully avoided his vital points, he still had some injuries on his body. Originally, if Yi Zai used his superpower to resist the gravity, it would be much easier for him. However, he didn't want to expose too much. This world was a little twisted, and it was always good to keep some trump cards to protect himself. His muscles were trembling, and the veins under his skin were clearly visible due to the excessive force. However, as time passed, Yi Zai's body also began to adapt to the current gravity environment. His movements also became more agile, and the injuries on his body also became less and less. After spending a little more time, Yi Zai still managed to kill the three level 3 monsters. This virtual combat device is really good. It would be great if I could get one too. Yi Zai felt his body. Just now, his physical fitness seemed to have improved slightly. While Yi Zai was sighing with emotion, the Gastria creatures respawned again. He originally thought that there would be level 4 monsters that he had only heard of, but in the end, there were only 5 level 3 monsters. However, this time, the level 3 was much stronger than the previous one. Apart from the 4 that were running on the ground, there were no other creatures. Apart from the 4 monsters, there was also a beetle-like Gastria creature flying in the sky. One had to know that Gastria creatures with the ability to fly were much more difficult to deal with than Gastria creatures on land. What kind of attack methods did other people have against Gastria creatures that could fly? It was nothing more than guns. As for this beetle-like Gastria creature, no matter how one looked at it, it belonged to the category of monsters with excellent defense. Even if Vi's bullets wanted to penetrate its carapace, it would be impossible. At the very least, one would need a heavy firearm to penetrate its carapace. 
As the beetle-like Gastria creature hissed, the five Gastria creatures attacked Yi Zai in unison. Yi Zai, who had just begun to adapt to the current gravity environment, once again fell into a tough battle. The four Gastria creatures on the ground didn't pose much of a threat. The main thing was that there was a wingman on top of his head who was spitting out strong acid from time to time. Not only did Yi Zai have to deal with the attacks of the Gastria creatures on the ground, but he also had to pay attention to the sneak attacks from the sky. Because Yi Zai's situation was getting more and more dangerous, Gale Sword Hero, S ability, Way of the Ronin, was finally activated. Yi Zai's body suddenly propped up a transparent shield, and his movement suddenly became light. Yazai didn't waste any precious time and took advantage of the fact that Way of the Ronin was still active. Using the method of exchanging injury for injury, he directly finished off the two Gastria creatures on the ground. Wind Sword Technique, Gale Instant Slash. Then, using the corpses of the Gastria creatures on the ground as a foothold, he instantly slashed out several wind blades and directly shot down the beetle Gastria creatures in the air. Then, with an unbelievable speed, he suddenly rushed to the beetle Gastria creatures that had fallen. He didn't need to use the continuous and rapid slashes that Rentaro and Miyori Shiba couldn't catch with their eyes at all. The dazzling slashes instantly turned the beetle like Gastria creatures into sashimi, slicing them into nearly a hundred pieces. That was sword energy just now, right? Has Yazai's swordsmanship cultivation reached the level of don't know everything? No, it might be even above that. This is already at the level of a master, okay? Rentaro's mouth was wide open. From just now, he could tell that Yazai was a swordsmanship expert. But he didn't expect that he had reached such a level. The so-called don't know everything was already a high level of cultivation. It meant that one had mastered all the skills of a certain school and reached the peak of perfection. For example, Rentaro's tendo battle technique was only at the beginner level. However, Rentaro knew someone who also had such a level of swordsmanship. That was his childhood sweetheart, Kazara Tendo. Although she was a woman about the same age as Rentaro. Her Tendo swordsmanship had also reached the level of don't know everything. But even so, Rentaro had never seen Kazara Tendo able to slash out sword energy. In other words, Yazai's swordsmanship cultivation was far beyond the level of don't know everything. In the past, Rentaro had always thought that Kazara Tendo was the person with the strongest swordsmanship of his generation that he had ever seen. But after today, Rentaro's opinion was probably going to change. However, what also made him curious was that Kazara Tendo had relied on her willpower to cultivate such a level of swordsmanship because of her parents' hatred. What about Yizai? What was it that supported him to temper himself to such a standard in the sword Dao? After dealing with the trouble from the sky, the remaining two Gastria creatures on the ground no longer caused any trouble for Yazai. Since Yazai was already familiar with the environment of triple gravity, he only needed a little more time to kill it. Difficulty increased. Current gravity is quadrupled. After Yazai passed this wave, the difficulty increased once again. This time, it was four times the gravity, and there were ten kinds of level three Gastria creatures. Three of them were even flying Gastria creatures like the ones from before. He had just gotten used to moving under three times the gravity when it suddenly became four times the gravity. If he had used the wind-wielding swordsmanship without holding back, coupled with his superpower, he would have been able to kill the man. Regardless of whether it was four times or five times gravity, Yi Zai still had the strength to fight. However, he felt that it was enough. The strength that he displayed today should be enough to move Miyori Shiba. Therefore, after Yi Zai killed half of the Gastria creatures with difficulty, he exposed a flaw and ended the test directly. Your Excellency has died in battle. This test is over. Your Excellency's test grade is as. Dot. When Yi Zai exited the, the virtual combat device, Yi Zai's rating also came out. Don't think that this rating was high because the current upper limit of this device was only to kill 30 level 3 Gastria creatures under 5 times the gravity. After all, it was a device created with humans as the basis for the test. There were only a handful of humans with mortal bodies who could reach such a level. Of course, if it was a test subject for the initiator, Yi Zai's results were far from enough to be evaluated as S. Yi Zai, you really surprised me. 
I didn't expect that I would make such an amazing friend without saying anything. Rentaro walked over and patted Yi Zai's shoulder half jokingly. However, Yi Zai's strength really surprised him. He didn't expect that there would be someone as strong as Yi Zai among his peers. Little Yi Zai, I really didn't misjudge you. Compared to Rentaro, Miori Shiba's welcoming ceremony was much more enthusiastic. She actually jogged over and wanted to hug Yi Zai. However, Yi Zai moved behind Rentaro without batting an eyelid and avoided Miori Shiba's hug. For a pure merchant like Miori Shiba, although she was beautiful, it was better to keep a distance. Little Yi Zai, I'm just happy for you. Miori Shiba didn't care about Yi Zai's little actions at all. Miss Shiba, how is it? Will the results of my test allow you to give me Vi medal on credit first? Yi Zai looked at Miori Shiba and said seriously. Of course, I've already prepared the relevant contract. I believe in little Yizai's strength. It should be quite easy to repay the money. Miori Shiba teased as she took out the contract from her chest. Yizai looked at it and found that there were no problems, so he reached an agreement with Miori Shiba. Little Yizai shouldn't have joined any guard company yet, right? Do you want to join our, Shiba Heavy Industries? If little Yi Zai joins Shiba Heavy Industries, I can be your fiancé. Moreover, I can also provide these goods to you for free. Miori Shiba seemed to be joking but also seemed to be serious at the same time. I think it's better to forget about it. I don't have any plans to marry into your family for the time being. Yi Zai didn't have any thoughts about Miori Shiba's suggestion. Not to mention that he didn't have any feelings for Miori Shiba, he wasn't someone who could stay in this world for long. After receiving Miori Shiba's promise that the goods would be sent to the location that Yi Zai specified in a few days, Yi Zai and Rentaro bid farewell and left. As for Miori Shiba, she just stared at Yi Zai's back and revealed a mysterious smile. Yi Zai is really a mysterious person. I'm afraid that this rank just now wasn't his limit. He didn't even use the shadowless weapon. He should still be holding back. He's a rather cautious person. Of course, Miori Shiba didn't think that Yizai's shadowless was just for decoration. Of course, she couldn't rule out the possibility that he chose to give it to someone else. However, from the way Yizai looked at shadowless, Miori Shiba felt that this possibility was very small. Yizai, what do you plan to do next? Do you want to come to our company for a visit? On the way, Rentaro put his arm around Yizai's shoulder enthusiastically. His enthusiasm made Yazai feel a little uneasy. Miori Shiba's words just now reminded Rantaro of something. Yazai had not joined the guard company yet, so he could definitely rope him in. Ever since their Tendo guard company was established, it could be described as cold and cheerless. The bosses, Kizara Tendo, only had one meal a day, but not one meal a day. Not to mention paying Rantaro a salary. However, since they were childhood sweethearts and Rentaro had always been interested in her, he had never left. However, if he could rope Yazai into their company today, their current situation could completely change. Yazai's IP ranking aside, just the large number of female fans and the commissions they provided were enough to make them not have to worry about food and drink. Yazai obviously did not know about Rentaro's sinister intentions, but seeing how much Rentaro had helped him, Yazai felt embarrassed to reject him. When Rentaro pulled Yazai to a three-story building, Yazai looked at the signboard above and looked at Rentaro in disbelief. This is where you work. I didn't expect you to be, such a person. Yazai looked at Rentaro with a scrutinizing gaze, as if to see if he had the qualifications to be called a rich woman steel ball. It was because Yazai saw that the signboards on the upper and lower floors of the three-story building were for loan sharks and sex clubs. So, here came the question. Was Rentaro a lone shark or? What nonsense are you thinking, you bastard? Our company is on the second floor, but the signboard was blown away by the wind not long ago, so we don't have the funds to build a new one. Rentaro saw Yazai's gaze and instantly knew what he was thinking. He followed Rentaro all the way to the so called Tendo Guard Company. Yazai's first impression of this company was that it was rather shabby. The so-called company was actually a small cubicle with an office desk and a water dispenser. Furthermore, when Yazai and Rentaro entered the room, they clearly saw a person lying on the ground like a corpse. 
From the curves of the body, it wasn't hard to tell that this was a female, but why was she lying here? Could it be that the woman who lost her footing upstairs made a mistake and treated this place as the battlefield? As if sensing movement, the corpse on the ground suddenly moved. Rentaro, is that you? Is there anything to eat? I'm starving to death. A few minutes later, a beautiful girl who was about the same age as Rentaro and him, dressed in a sailor suit, was eating and drinking the food that Rentaro had just bought. As the young girl ate, she looked at Yazai with a scrutinizing gaze. Yazai was also looking at the girl. She was wearing a different school uniform from theirs. Obviously, they were not from the same school. Although it was a bit unsightly for her to be popular now, it was undeniable that she was an impeccable beauty. Furthermore, in terms of figure, she was even better than Miyori Shiba from before. She possessed a figure that was rather unscientific for her age. Rentaro, why did you come so late today? I almost starved to death. Because Rentaro had brought Yazai to Shiba Heavy Industries today, he was indeed a bit later than usual. Miss Kizara, you clearly didn't want to go to such an expensive aristocratic girls' school. Isn't your living expenses enough? It seemed like this wasn't the first time Rentaro had encountered such a situation. His expression was rather calm. However, because Kizara Tendo was eating his and Enju's living expenses for tonight, she would probably have to eat bean sprouts again tonight. That won't do. That's my last bit of dignity. Hearing the girl's righteous retort, Yazai was speechless. It was obvious that she had fainted from hunger. She had even less dignity. So, this gigolo is the person who wants to join our company, right? When it came to serious matters, Kizara Tendo's expression became even more serious as he began to scrutinize. No, I'm not. Yes, yes, yes. Miss Kizara, you don't know how powerful Yazai is. Moreover, he. Before Yazai could refuse, Rentaro had already nodded frantically. He jogged to Kizara Tendo's side and began to whisper in her ear. What, you're telling the truth? He has a lot of spendthrift fans, and a lot of commissions. His IP ranking is also very high. Even if the two of them were whispering to each other, it would be hard for Yazai not to hear them in this empty environment. Yazai, right? Congratulations, you've been hired. From now on, you'll be a member of the Tendo Guard Company. I'm the president. My name is Kizara Tendo. Nice to meet you. After the two finished whispering as if there was no one else around, Kizara Tendo looked at Yazai again. It could be described as, titanium alloy dog eyes. No, actually I don't plan to join the company. I was just invited and came up to take a look. It's time to go back. What kind of joke was this? He was obviously being treated like a pig by this bastard Rentaro. Only an idiot would join this kind of company with no future. He still owed Miyori Shiba a huge sum of money, okay? If he joined this kind of company, would there be any hope in the future? Didn't you see that the president was about to starve to death? This was definitely the most miserable boss Yazai had seen so far. But Yazai still underestimated the integrity of Rentaro and Kazara Tendo. Just as he was about to leave, the two actually hugged Yazai's thighs. Yazai, just join us. Otherwise, Enju and I won't even be able to eat bean sprouts. I won't even be able to eat bean sprouts. Yazai looked at the two speechlessly. Why did he feel that these two were as shameless as a certain baldy? And Kizara Tendo, where's the self-esteem you mentioned just now? The strength of hugging his thighs was obviously much greater than Rentaro's. How did Yazai know? Because his thighs could clearly feel the two lumps pressing against each other. Let go of me. We can discuss this. No, not unless you agree to our terms. This was simply shameless. Yazai was a little regretful that he followed Rentaro here. This was simply entering a den of thieves. In the end, Yazai helplessly reached an agreement with Kizara Tendo. Yazai's work would not be taken commission by the company, but he could be listed in the Tendo Guard Company. But Yazai had to provide the food for the members. Having a company was indeed more convenient because some large commissions could only be accepted in the name of the company. And to Kizara Tendo, Yazai's high IP ranking was like a star effect that could bring in many commissions. 
and Yazai also provided the food that they needed the most, so both sides were quite happy. Then, to celebrate Yazai joining us, let's go and have a big meal. Kizara made the decision even louder. Anyway, Yazai was in charge of the food. At this moment, she should bring out the aura of a president. Rentaro naturally agreed. Because even if he went home tonight, he had to eat bean sprouts with Enju. Kizara's thoughts were even simpler. Later, she would seize the opportunity to eat so that she wouldn't be hungry so quickly tomorrow. Yazai was convinced. These two shameless guys. However, he didn't refuse and prepared to invite them to his house. Rentaro went home first to bring Enju home, while Kazara followed Yazai home first. Yazai, who brought Kazara home, welcomed a cannonball-like impact as soon as he entered the house. As for the source of the impact, it was naturally Kanna who was waiting for Yazai's return. The little lowly wanted to act coquettishly to Yazai like before, but she realized that there was another person beside Yazai today. Black hair like a waterfall, about the same age as Yazai, and a beautiful face. Most importantly, there was a pair of lethal weapons on her chest. Kanna only used a short time to examine Kazara and concluded that this woman was a strong enemy. She looked at the other's long legs and then looked at her own fat legs. Then she looked at the other's chest, but her own was flat. The little Loli's happy mood instantly turned bad. Because she felt that her Yazai would no longer love her. Because of this shameful cow, Yazai might abandon her. Yazai naturally didn't know that the little Loli in his arms had so many thoughts. He just introduced them to each other. Since Yazai joined Tendo's company, then Kanna would definitely have a lot of contact with him in the future. Actually, there was another important reason why Yazai felt that he joined the Tendo Guard Company. That was, through a period of contact, he realized that Rintaro, or Kazara whom he just met today, were all people worth entrusting. When he was in this world, he might have a way to take care of those, cursed children. But what would he do after he left? A large number of, cursed children, were simply a bunch of strategic weapons in the eyes of some scheming people. On the other hand, these cute little mushrooms were all ignorant. They might be deceived by others. At that time, Yizai's actions would not be helping them, but harming them instead. And the backup plan that Yizai had chosen was Kazara Tendo and the others. Judging from their short interaction, the two of them didn't have any prejudice against the cursed child, so they were probably the most suitable candidates. Is this your, initiator, Yizai? Little Mushroom should be very strong. Kazara Tendo turned a blind eye to Kana's hostility and gently touched Kana's head with his hand. She knew what the little Loli was thinking because Enju, who was following behind Rentaro, had the same expression when she looked at her. However, regardless of whether it was Yazai or Rentaro, Kizara Tendo would not be interested in them. It should be said that Kizara Tendo wasn't interested in any man at the moment. Her only purpose in life was to seek revenge. As for the rest, it was completely out of her consideration. That's right. She's my initiator. Her name is Kanna, and the animal DNA in her is Lizard. She's hostile to strangers, so don't mind her attitude. Just interact more with her. Yizai didn't know why Kanna's face was tense when facing him, so he could only explain it this way. Looks like Yizai, who has countless female fans, doesn't understand a girl's heart at all. I think Kanna's bad attitude towards me isn't because I'm a stranger, but... Kizara Tendo found it funny. She had heard Rentaro say that Yizai was a fake. She had thought that Yizai was a womanizer, but now it seemed that Yizai's EQ was quite low. However, Kizara Tendo was even more surprised. Just as she was about to explain to Yizai why Kana was hostile to her, the doorbell rang. Needless to say, it was Rentaro and Enju who had come with him. As soon as the door opened, the red-haired little mushroom immediately bounced into the room. Kanna, I'm here to see you. Let's see the heavenly punishment together. That's right, Enjinu Kanna. After all, Rentaro and Yizai were friends. As their initiators, it was impossible for Enju and Kanna not to know each other. Because Enju didn't have friends of the same age, the moment she met Kanna, the two became quite good friends. Enju, you do it. I'm watching the new CD that brother bought for me. Little Mushroom's troubles went away quickly. 
As soon as Enju came, they were instantly washed away. The depression that Kizara Tendo had brought to Kanna previously was even more. Is it the latest heavenly punishment? Hearing that there was something good to watch, Enju became even more excited and quickly squeezed to Kanna's side. No, it's a beautiful female warrior. It's super good looking. Kanna gestured exaggeratedly with her hands to show how powerful the beautiful girl was. Enju listened and made a fuss. In the end, she was completely attracted by the plot on TV. That's right, Yizai took out the CD set and gave it to Kanna. Anyway, it was useless to him. However, Kanna liked it very much. She didn't know how many times she had watched it, but she still enjoyed it. Yizai is so nice. He even bought the latest CD for Kanna. Unlike Rentaro. I'm clearly his future bride, but he didn't even buy me a CD. After watching the beautiful female warrior for a while, Enju was obviously envious. However, with their financial situation, not to mention buying a CD, they couldn't even afford to eat bean sprouts. Enju, you can stay here tonight. We can watch the perfect female warrior together. Kanna looked at her pitiful friend and suggested. It was impossible for her to want her CD because it was her lifeblood. Because Yizai said that this CD couldn't be sold outside, Kanna treasured it very much. Hearing Kanna's words, Enju's eyes immediately lit up and she turned to look at Rentaro. This. Won't it cause trouble for Yizai? Rentaro also had a headache. Obviously, it was fine to freeload on food and drinks, but it wasn't good to freeload on a place to stay. It's okay. There are many rooms. I'll stay alone. Yizai didn't mind at all. He would probably take care of more Lolas in the future. There were only two of them now, so it wasn't a big deal. Yay, long live Yizai and I. The two Lolas cheered. Yizai, are there many rooms here? Then I'll move in too. Hearing Yizai's words, Kizara immediately expressed that she wanted to stay here for a long time. Don't misunderstand, Kizara wasn't interested in Yizai. The main thing was that if she stayed for a long time, not only would she be able to freeload in the company, she could also do it at other times. Kanna, who was cheering, instantly drooped her little face again. Because Enju already had Rentaro, he was an ally. But this cow. Not only Kanna, but Rentaro and Yazai also looked at Kazara Tendo in surprise. Why, is there a problem? Didn't you say there are many rooms? But the latter didn't seem to feel that there was anything wrong with her words. Since she was already freeloading, it didn't seem like a big deal to freeload. But Miss Kizara, don't you have your own house? Why do you want to stay at Yazai's place? Rentaro had some thoughts about Kizara. How could he not care that his goddess wanted to stay in someone else's house? Yeah, although I don't have to pay rent, I can't afford some of my daily expenses. Rentaro really wanted to say, then stay with us. But thinking about his living situation. How about it, Yazai? Can I move in? I can do some housework to make up for the rent. Kizara Tendo asked again. She was determined to cling on to Yazai's thigh. That's not a problem. You can move in if you want. Yazai didn't have any objections. He had a lot on his mind. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. On one hand, he wanted to know more about Kazara Tendo and see if she was worth entrusting the cursed child to. On the other hand, he wanted to do her a favor. When they left this plane in the future, Kazara Tendo would work harder to take care of the children. No, I don't agree. I don't want this woman to move in. Seeing that Yazai and Kazara Tendo had reached a consensus, the last bit of hope in Kana's heart was shattered. She cried out anxiously. Seeing Kana's anxious expression, Enju and Kazara Tendo were even more confused. Only Yazai and Rentaro were confused. Kana, has that cow finally extended her evil claws to Yazai? Enju also felt a lot of pressure towards Kazara Tendo. It couldn't be helped. After all, she did have sufficient capital. Kazara Tendo looked at the little lowly whose face was as tense as a bun. She walked over and whispered a few words in her ear. After Kanna's face became redder and redder, the little mushroom instantly agreed to let Kazara Tendo move in. 
In the next few days, because of Yazai's addition, even though the location of the Tendo Guard Company was really awkward, there were still some commissions. Rentaro, who had been so bored that his balls hurt, now had some commissions to do. Furthermore, as Yizai became more active, his and Kana's IP ranking continued to rise. Now, they were close to the top 2,500. After such days continued for a while, Miori Shiba's call came. Yizai had gathered all the things he needed and asked him where he wanted to put them. Yizai immediately gave him an address and rushed there first. Miori Shiba was also rather surprised at the location that Yizai gave her. That was because that place was actually outside the giant stone tablet. One had to know that such a place was quite dangerous. Without the protection of the giant stone monument, the Gastria creatures ran amok everywhere. But when Miori Shiba thought about what Yizai wanted and combined it with the address he gave her, a thought suddenly appeared in her mind. Little Yi, don't tell me you're thinking of building another shelter all by yourself. What Miori Shiba did not know was that her thoughts were actually quite close. Yazai was indeed building a shelter. However, it was not like the Tokyo district and the Kanto district, which were large sanctuaries that protected humans. Instead, it was a small sanctuary that protected the cursed children. The location that Yizai chose was a place that was relatively far away from the other sanctuaries. Moreover, he chose a place that was relatively close to a water source. As for the Gastria creatures there, he had already cleared them all. Originally, he thought that he would need to spend a lot of money to buy the land. But the result was that the land that was ravaged by the Gastria creatures was basically an ownerless land. That was because the address that Yizai gave was no longer a safe zone. Therefore, the company that delivered the goods, Shiba Heavy Industries, even specially equipped a certain number of guards that were personally led by Miori Shiba. When a large amount of Vi metal was unloaded, Miori Shiba also walked over. Little Yi, I didn't expect your ambition to be so great. Are you thinking of becoming a ruler yourself? Obviously, Miori Shiba thought that Yizai was an ambitious person. If I say no, would you believe me? Yizai said in amusement. If he said that he only wanted to do good, probably no one would believe him. Still the same words. As long as you marry into our Shiba family, we will fully support all your actions. How about that? Miori Shiba obviously didn't quite believe Yizai's words. However, Yizai's great generosity indeed made her want to rope him in even more. No need. I don't want to be an ambitious person. Your Shiba family's philosophy doesn't match with mine. Of course, Yizai refused. What did the Shiba family do? They sold weapons. Even if Miori Shiba was a decent person, what about the other people in her family? If the Shiba family were to get involved, it would only make those children unavoidably involved in the flames of war again. Then, with your strength alone, how are you going to build this shelter? It was undeniable that Yizai's ability was very strong. He killed the Gastria creatures day and night, allowing Yizai to accumulate a large amount of wealth in a short period of time. However, to build a shelter, not only did it require a large amount of wealth, it also required a large amount of manpower. Obviously, Yi Zai, who was all alone, didn't have this advantage. You'll know after a while. When the time comes, I will invite you over as a friend. Don't refuse. Yi Zai smiled mysteriously and kept Miori Shiba in suspense. That's really something to look forward to. If you need help, you can give me a call. Miori Shiba left. Before she left, she even said this to Yi Zai. Even if she couldn't pull Yizai onto the Shiba family's war chariot, it was still necessary to maintain a good relationship with him. Miori Shiba could see very clearly that no matter what, Yizai would be an amazing person in the future. If she chose to give him a little favor now, who knew when she would have to rely on him to help her out? Seeing the mighty convoy leaving, Yizai also picked up his phone and called Kanna. Who said that Yizai was alone? Some time ago, when Yizai was ready, he had already gathered a large number of cursed children. Most of these little lolas lived in places like the sewers. Some were even driven to the edge of Tokyo district and would face the attacks of the Gastria creatures at any time. Every time he found a cursed child, Yizai would feel unhappy. Just how much of a bastard did he have to be to do such things to these immature little lolas? 
She still remembered that when Yizai first appeared, these little Lolas were so scared that they ran around and cried. In the end, it was because of Kana's existence that the little Lola's wariness towards Yizai was eased. In the following days, Yizai also made the little Lola's acknowledge him as the best brother Yizai in the world through various actions. In terms of physique, how many people could be stronger than these cursed children? Although the Gastria virus had eroded their bodies, it had also given them extraordinary physiques. Although they were all delicious little Lolas, each of them carried hundreds of kilograms of things like plastic toys. In fact, it was also because these children were kind-hearted. Otherwise, with their physiques. No matter what, they wouldn't be bullied by those ordinary people or even beaten up. Although the Gastria virus had given them super recovery abilities, every time Yizai thought of the little Lolas being beaten up, he would feel a burst of anger. Some parents even poured lead into their children's eyes because they hated their children's red eyes. They were simply insane. Fortunately, Yizai wasn't present. Otherwise, he would have definitely killed such parents on the spot. On the other side, Kanna rushed over with a mighty team of little Lolas. She looked like a big sister. When they arrived, Yizai had already cleaned up the Gastria creatures along the way. Even if there were a few left, with the combat strength of these cursed children, it would definitely not be a problem. Moreover, because she had followed Yizai to hunt a large number of Gastria creatures, Kanna had now adapted to battle and was quite strong. When the team of little Lolas saw Yizai, they all ran over, completely ignoring the order that Kanna had been maintaining for a long time. Not long after, Yizai was already covered with Lolas of all sizes. One must know that since some time ago, these Lolas were still quite vigilant against Yizai. But after a short period of contact, they completely fell in love with this kind-hearted big brother in front of them. Big brother Yizai, we miss you so much. Is this where we are going to live in the future? Big brother Yizai, are you going to build a big house for me? The little Lolas chattered one after another, all of them appearing quite excited. To them, Yizai was simply an angel. Like the beautiful warrior, he was a beautiful and strong hero. Everyone hated them, bullied them, and even beat them up. But only big brother Yi Zai loved them, took care of them, and treated them equally. Such a comparison made the little Lolas regard Yi Zai as their most important existence. How can you do this? Big brother Yi Zai is Kanna's. You can't snatch him away. Kanna, who was holding the small flag and leading the team here, felt quite accomplished. But when she saw Yi Ya being surrounded by so many Lolas, Kanna instantly became anxious. Yazai and Ii belongs to everyone, not Kanna Chan alone. Seeing that the little mushrooms were about to start quarreling, Yi Zai also felt pained. Because he had seen such a scene many times. Have you ever experienced sleeping alone at night, only to wake up in the morning with a bed full of Lolas beside you? Had he ever experienced being coquettishly coaxed by so many Lolas to wear the clothes of a beautiful warrior? All right, we're going to build our own homes, but no one will help us. We can only rely on our own efforts. Do you understand? Yi Zai clapped his hands and interrupted the little Lolas who were about to enter the Yi Zai competition. It was not a small project to create a shelter that could accommodate a large number of cursed children. At the very least, Yi Zai couldn't do it alone. He needed the help of these little Lolas. However, although the little Lolas had strength and energy, they had energy. But after all, they were all children. It was easy to make them build a house. Yi Zai had drawn the design, but the little Lolas also needed someone to guide them in their work. Therefore, Kizara Tendo and Rentaro were inevitably dragged into the labor by Yi Zai. Yi Zai had always been very secretive about building a shelter, but Rentaro and Kizara Tendo were obviously not within the scope of concealment. After all, the house was full of Lolas. Even if Yizai wanted to hide it, he couldn't. After a call, the helpless Rentaro came over with the rather excited Enju. I always thought that you were doing it on a whim. I didn't expect you to really do it. You have to know that the higher-ups of the Tokyo district will definitely not tolerate you doing this. Rentaro looked at the little Lolas who were already busy moving all kinds of stone materials and said to Yizai. That's why I've been doing it secretly. By the time they react, they won't have the ability to stop me. If they want to destroy this shelter that I built, 
do you think I'll just stand by and do nothing? Yi Zai said with a ferocious expression. They couldn't tolerate these pitiful children. Yi Zai didn't blame them, and he couldn't change it. But if these children were to be wiped out, the only way to survive, then Yi Zai would definitely retaliate. Rentaro didn't doubt Yi Zai's words too much. After spending some time together, Rentaro knew that Yi Zai was the type of person who would do what he said. If the higher ups really did reach out to the shelter, then Rentaro felt that Yi Zai would very likely sneak into their residence and kill them one by one. Rentaro is really useless. I think Yi Zai is doing a great job. If those bad people want to hurt my friends, I won't let them off. Enju was also looking forward to this shelter. She was a cursed child herself. No one knew better than her what kind of life she had lived in the past. As a cursed child, Enju naturally felt the same way. She was lucky to meet Rintaro and Kana met Yizai. Then what about those children? They could only die silently in some corner of the city. However, although Rintaro was stubborn, he wasn't careless when it came to helping. In fact, he was also a cursed child. At first, he also hated the cursed child. That was until the numb Rintaro met Enju. That same hateful gaze changed his entire life. In fact, Rentaro admired Yizai because he did what he always wanted to do. But he didn't have the courage or the ability to do it. Later, Kizara also came. She didn't object to Yizai's plan at all. Rather, she agreed. Her enemies were the higher-ups of the Tokyo district. If they could cause trouble, then Kizara was more than willing. Therefore, she worked very hard. Although most of the time, she was giving orders. The little Lolas were very supportive. Because the Gastria virus gave them superhuman physiques, and because they were building their own home, they were all full of motivation and seemed to have unlimited energy. When it was close to evening, the outermost wall made of Vi was almost finished. Man this is harder than I thought, anyway hopes y'all been good now, this is the last chaps for today. Peace. Considering that the cursed children here were only a small part of the Tokyo area, they didn't dare to do anything. Therefore, when Yazai was building, he specially expanded the area to prevent the awkward situation of not having enough space in the future. It was only at night that the little Loli stopped building due to the lack of light. They had been busy the whole day, but there was no sign of fatigue on their faces. For the cursed children, whose physiques were far stronger than ordinary people, this amount of work was no different from building blocks. Because it was too dangerous to go back at this time, everyone could only stay here for the night. Although it was said that they had to sleep in the open, this was nothing to the little Loli who had lived in a worse environment in the past. After telling the little Loli stories and coaxing them to sleep, Yazai still had to keep watch. The walls of the Varanium were only half-built and were not fully used to defend against the Gastria creatures. Therefore, the ones who were forced to do the hard work of keeping watch tonight were him and Rentaro. As for Kazara Tendo, the president said that she had done tiring, commanding work today and needed a good rest. Holding two bottles of beer, he jumped on the half-built Hokkaido wall and handed one of the bottles to Rentaro, who was sitting next to him. I'm not an adult yet. I can't drink yet. Come on, you and Kazara drank too much at my house last time. With the scandal exposed, Rentaro took the beer with a bitter smile. Indeed, every time Kazara complained, he would suffer. Yazai, can you tell me the reason why you are doing this? Rentaro drank the beer in his hand and asked the question that had been on his mind for a long time. The entire world hated the cursed children. Those who still had some conscience were just not prejudiced against them. However, no one would go as far as Yazai, giving everything he had just to give these cursed children a place to live. If Yazai was a schemer and had ulterior motives for taking in the cursed children, Rentaro would not believe it. After a long period of contact, not only did Yazai understand Rentaro, but Rentaro also understood Yazai quite well. In essence, Yazai was a person who was afraid of trouble. If he could do something lying down, he would definitely not stand. In fact, Rentaro even suspected that if it weren't for the large amount of funds Yazai needed, he wouldn't even want to work as a civil servant. However, it was precisely because he understood Yizai that he was curious about the reason for Yizai's actions. If I say that I want to be the hero in those children's hearts, would you believe me? Indeed, 
Part of the reason why Yi Zai was working so hard was because of the system's mission. However, he really wanted to be the hero of those children. He was not from this world, so he did not understand the way the people of this world thought. What did those kids do wrong? Just because they might become monsters, they had to be treated this way. Then why did he want to use them as weapons? He already hated them and despised them, yet he still wanted to use them. Was this really something a human could do? Although the system wanted Yi Zai to be a hero and wanted him to be the savior of the world, unfortunately, his abilities were limited. He could only be the hero of those children. In his opinion, the so-called people of this world were not worth saving. Compared to being the savior of this world, Yi Zai wanted to be the destroyer more. Just like the man with steel nails who always wanted the world to carry rice in a certain movie. It what reference is this, can someone tell me? Perhaps the people of this world should feel the pain of those children. Only then would they be able to understand each other. Rentaro, you will never know what these children have experienced. Those from the plundered era lost their homes and families. Then, aren't these cursed children the same? They were also abandoned by their parents. They were even hated by everyone. They were sent to the battlefield to die. What did they do wrong? Yi Zai's words left Rentaro speechless. That's right. Those children had also lost their families and homes. They had suffered far more than those from the plundered era. Then, what right did people like them have to hate them? Just as Yi Zai said, those children had always been innocent. However, no one had ever stood up for them. Until now, when Yi Zai, the so called hero, appeared, Rentaro fell silent. He kept thinking about Yi Zai's words. However, at this moment, Yi Zai noticed something strange in the distance. In the darkness, many scarlet eyes could be seen. It was obvious that uninvited guests had arrived. The aura of a large number of living people gathered together. As expected, it was inevitable that the Gastria creatures would be attracted. Although there weren't many Gastria creatures because of the large number of Vi here, it was enough to cause trouble for Yi Zai and the others. Behind them were the sleeping Lolas. Once they were allowed to go around, it would be unavoidable for a massacre. Although the Lolas had superhuman physiques, they didn't have any combat experience. Once the Gastria creatures went past them, the consequences would be unimaginable. Rentaro, stop daydreaming. We should get to work. There are many guests this time. You can't hide your strength anymore. Yi Zai smiled casually. Accompanied by a gust of wind, he merged into the darkness. As he approached, Rentaro could hear the screams of monsters in the darkness. There were also broken limbs of the Gastria creatures flying out. Rentaro looked behind him and suddenly smiled. He jumped down the wall and killed his way into the darkness. All right, I'll be a hero tonight too. There weren't many Gastria creatures here, but they were all level 2 and above. This was because the level 1 Gastria creatures instinctively avoided the discomfort brought by so much Vi metal. Yi Zai merged into the darkness. Every gust of wind would reap a large number of lives. In just a short while, his body was splattered with blood of various colors. Hearing the sounds coming from the other side of the darkness, as well as the occasional sparks, Yi Zai couldn't help but smile. Rentaro, is this guy finally willing to use his strength? Due to the darkness, Yi Zai could see Rentaro's fighting posture. However, he could sense a dangerous aura coming from the other side. Don't doubt the intuition of a sword master. Rentaro had indeed used his strength. This was because the Gastria creatures here were at least level 2. Most of them were even level 3. If he continued to slack off like before, he might die. If there was light now, Yi Zai would discover that Rentaro looked more like a modified human like Genos than a human. The left half of Rentaro's body was almost entirely made of metal. Judging from the reflection of the metal on his arms and legs, it wasn't hard to tell that these were the Gastria creature's nemesis, the Vi metal prosthetic limbs. Apart from the limbs prosthetic, Rentaro's left eye did not look like a normal eyeball at all. Instead, it was the 21st style obsidian prosthetic eye, which could help Rentaro calculate his battle plans and speed up his thinking. The Kurosawa prosthetic arms and thighs could not only be used for punching and kicking. 
Instead, it was a special prosthetic arm that could be loaded with cannonballs. Ten cannonballs for the wrist and fifteen cannonballs for the leg. Being able to generate a huge propulsive force through the explosion allowed Rentaro's Tendo-style combat arts to be increased explosively. Tendo-style combat arts third form, fifteenth form, Yunling Bihu Carp. Rentaro threw an uppercut, and a canister popped out of his arm at the same time. The huge propulsive force caused Rentaro's arm to not only penetrate a level 3 Gastria creature, but it also sent it flying. If Rentaro had used his current strength during the test of Shiba Heavy Industries, the result would have been a level 3. The result of the C rank test was definitely a joke. Such strength was at least close to S rank, or even S plus rank. However, Compared to Yazai, Rentaro's strength was limited for a certain period of time. As mentioned before, Rentaro used the cannonballs stored in his arms and legs to increase his propulsive force, which greatly increased the power of his moves. However, there was a limit to the amount of cannonballs that Rentaro could load, such as the current situation. Encountering a huge number of Gastria creatures would consume a huge amount of Rentaro's cannonballs. If he lost the cannonballs, although Rentaro could still preserve his strength to protect himself, it would be impossible for him to kill a level 3 Gastria creature. A Kurosawa fist that lost its propulsive force was actually not much stronger than his two small pistols. Therefore, Rentaro's current situation was a little awkward because he realized that these Gastria creatures did not seem to have any intention of retreating. Moreover, it seemed that the more he killed, the more of them there were. This did not make sense at all. One must know that level 3 Gastria creatures had already developed some intelligence. Normally, they would not fight to the death even though they knew that they were no match for the enemy. It was just like how Yazai and Kanda had hunted down the Gastria creatures before. These intelligent creatures would run away when they knew that they were no match for the enemy. Yazai, something is wrong. Why do these Gastria creatures seem to be organized? Because it was pitch black, Rentaro could not see Yazai's figure and could only shout loudly. Actually, even without Rentaro's reminder, Yazai had already realized that something was amiss. One had to know that because he needed a large amount of money, he had been hunting Gastria creatures for a long time, but he had never seen such a situation. Furthermore, from the very beginning, apart from Rentaro's position, Yazai had been sensing a similarly dangerous aura from another direction. Yizai had been trying to advance in this direction since the beginning. Now, he was about to see the other party's true face. Ding, 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 ding. When Yizai had walked a certain distance, something that looked like a javelin suddenly pierced out of the darkness in front of him. Alarm bells rang in Yizai's heart. In an instant, he used the Muramesa to draw a wind barrier in front of him. The air current surged. The ferocious horn spikes were not knocked away after being blocked. Instead, they retracted back into the darkness. However, before Yi Zai could relax, even more spikes suddenly shot out from the darkness. This time, due to the density of the spikes and the fact that the wind barrier was running out of energy, it was directly pierced through. In the face of such a dense attack, Yi Zai could only use his sword to block it. However, Yi Zai seemed to have underestimated the strength of the spikes. Although he avoided being pierced, his entire body was sent flying by the impact. Then, as he was sent flying, he crashed into a big tree. His chest was almost hit to the point of suffocation. This is definitely not AF Asterisk King level 3 Gastria creature. It should be a level 4 or the legendary level 5 Gastria creature that only has 12 of them in this world. Don't ask Yizai how he knew. It was because Yizai had already lost count of how many level 3 noobs he had killed. There was definitely no such species with such strength. Moreover, if it was a level 4 or level 5 Gastria creature, the current actions of these Gastria creatures were understandable. It was because they were being commanded that they went against their original habits and kept attacking them fiercely. Rentaro, we seem to have encountered a formidable fellow. Can you still hold on? Yizai shouted loudly. He was afraid that Rentaro would die under the continuous barrage of attacks. I won't die for the time being, but if this continues, we'll all die here. One of the reasons was the large number of Gastria creatures. Another reason was that they could not identify each other's location at night. After that, it would be quite disadvantageous for them. 
The gastria creatures could clearly sense a human's location through their aura, but they could only feel the elephant like a blind man. It's all right. I've already found the culprit. Once I finish him off, these gastria creatures should retreat. Judging from the force that hit Yi Zai just now, Yi Zai judged that he should have the ability to kill this unknown gastria creature. This time, he did not hold back. He directly used the sky dance technique to soar into the air and flew past most of the other gastria creatures on the ground. When he returned to his previous position, the numerous spikes were indeed stabbing at him again. However, unlike before, those ferocious spikes weren't able to hit Yi Zai this time. Instead, when they were about to touch him, they seemed to have encountered a repulsive force and instantly stopped in the air. That's right, Yi Zai directly used his superpower and used his telekinesis to block the spike's attack. This time, he also saw the true face of these spikes. These spikes were all four limbs on the ground, similar to the back of the Gastria creatures of the Gastria Ankylosaurus. These spikes could only stretch and change their angle. Moreover, judging from the body characteristics of this Gastria creature, it should be a type with excellent defense but slow movement. The moment he saw this Gastria creature, Yi Zai had already determined that this was only a level 4 and not the legendary 12 zodiac seats. This was because Yi Zai had learned that every 12 zodiac seats was huge in size. Moreover, he had also seen the relevant pictures, and it was not the one in front of him. However, this level 4 Gastria creature was obviously not an ordinary creature. This was because although level 4 was rare and had all kinds of strange abilities, it was extremely rare to be able to command and control other Gastria creatures. Although this level 4 was not necessarily very powerful, this ability alone was enough to attract the attention of humans. One had to know that even the level 512 Zodiac bases did not have the ability to command other Gastria creatures. To a certain extent, this type of Gastria creature was more dangerous than those level 5 Gastria creatures. This was because they could easily set off a beast tide. If there were enough of them, it was not impossible for them to destroy an area. It seemed to have noticed that its attack was blocked and that Yazai was already quite close to it. The Gastria creature in the shape of an Ankylosaurus roared loudly. The other Gastria creatures in the surroundings immediately seemed to have received an order and rushed to the Gastria creature's side to protect it. Tisk, troublesome. Can't the small fries just stay aside? Looking at the well-protected Ankylosaurus Gastria lifeform, Yazai was a little annoyed. What's the big deal about calling your little brother? If you're a man, let's fight one-on-one. -on -one. If you lose, call me daddy. Although he knew that the other party did not understand, Yazai still cursed. With such a densely packed number, it would take forever to kill them. Even if he could kill them all, Rentaro's corpse might have already turned cold. Don't forget that the two of them were now deep in the midst of the Gastria creatures. Unlike Yazai who could fly, the pressure Rentaro was facing might be even greater than his. There's no other way. I'll just let these small fries be your sacrifices. Yazai pulled out a row of small knives from his belt. It was the set of shadowless that he had chosen at Sheba Heavy Industries. Ever since he had obtained this set of shadowless, Yazai had not used it to kill an enemy. Although he had secretly practiced a lot, he had never found a suitable target. But now that he was facing a large number of Gastria creatures, this was undoubtedly the most suitable weapon. Eight small knives as thin as Cicada's wings cut through the darkness like a stream of light. Under the control of Yazai's superpower, they were like eight sides of the Grim Reaper, crazily harvesting the lives of the Gastria creatures. Yazai controlled Shadowless to accurately attack the Gastria creatures' vital points every time. The efficiency of the eight throwing knives attacking together was naturally indescribable. The large group of Gastria creatures fell like wheat. With the death of the small fry's Gastria creatures, Yazai finally saw the level 4 Gastria creature hiding at the back again. As soon as the flames on his body burst forth, Yazai's body shot out like a jet and instantly arrived beside the Gastria Ankylosaurus. Yazai's blade landed on the trash that already didn't have a shield. Clang! However, what Yizai didn't expect was that when the Muramesa slashed at the other party's body, there was a sound of metal clashing. As the Demon Blade Muramesa of the 21 Quick Swords, he was actually unable to break through the opponent's defense. How hard is this tortoise shell? 
one had to know that even if it was a dragon grade Azura Kabuto, Yi Zai could still leave a scar on it. But this level 4 was, at most, a demon level. Just as Yi Zai was stunned, the armored dragon's tail hammer instantly sent him flying, causing him, who had just been dazed, to slide on the ground for a distance. This is a little troublesome. This is AF asterisk King Steel Tortoise. Yi Zai was a little worried. The Muramesa was already his strongest weapon. If even it couldn't cause any damage to the Ankylosaurus. Even if he added the Imperial Wind Sword technique, it would still be useless. What was the weakness of the Ankylosaurus? It was nothing more than its soft abdomen. Everyone who had seen dinosaurs knew this. Although the other party was in the form of a Gastria creature, its weakness didn't seem to have changed. However, looking at the Ankylosaurus that was at least measured in tonnage, Yizai didn't think that he could send this big guy flying, expose its abdomen, and obediently stab it a few times. Shadowless cleaned up a large number of Gastria creatures and flew back to his side. Yizai looked at the Ankylosaurus's abdomen and estimated that the possibility of him climbing down was not high. But if Shadowless flew down, it shouldn't be a problem. Although Shadowless was quite sharp, the damage it caused was limited. It was unrealistic to want to kill the Ankylosaurus with this. But now, Yi Zai had no other choice. He could only give it a try. Eight streams of light that were as thin as Cicada's wings once again flew out under the control of Yi Zai's superpower and rushed into the bottom of the Ankylosaurus. A moment later, the sound of sharp weapons piercing into flesh and the Ankylosaurus's scream echoed in the air at the same time. Yi Zai expressed that he could understand the Ankylosaurus's painful cry. Because of his bad intentions, the eight, Shadowless, just now had attacked the Ankylosaurus's vital points. Therefore, Yi Zai also helped the Ankylosaurus to clear its liver and intestines. Being stabbed in the anus naturally didn't feel good. The Ankylosaurus that was rolling on the ground in pain was proof. Because its vital points were attacked, the Ankylosaurus rolled around in all kinds of ways. Naturally, its vital points were also exposed. Yi Zai naturally didn't waste any more time. He drew his sword and went straight up. With the profound meaning of the Imperial Wind Swordsmanship, he instantly killed it. Looking at the Ankylosaurus that actually had a relieved expression before it died, Yi Zai couldn't help but touch his nose. Did this brother get stabbed in the anus or cut in the balls? In the end, it actually hurt so much that it wanted to be relieved as soon as possible. He touched the shadowless that flew back to his hand. This time, these eight small knives could be said to have done a great job. No, these knives just now, which knife stabbed the anus and cut the balls. Yi Zai's hand that was touching the knife suddenly stopped. He instantly felt as disgusted as if he had touched XX. Looks like I'll have to wash it a few more times when I go back. Otherwise, using this weapon will leave a psychological scar. Because the level 4 commanding and controlling the Ankylosaurus had died, the other Gastria creatures also retreated like the tide. Yi Zai also found Rentaro in another direction. The latter was lying on the ground. His clothes were tattered, and he looked a little miserable as he lay on the ground. You're not dead yet, right? If you're dead, you should make a sound. Yi Zai landed beside Rentaro and said half jokingly, I won't die for the time being. Has the problem been solved? Rentaro asked in annoyance. How can I make a sound if I'm dead? This bastard just likes to make fun of me. Of course it's solved. If I knew that you weren't dead yet, I would have dragged it out a little longer. That way, I can take care of Miss Kazara and Enju. Don't worry, I'll take good care of them. Yizai's brother, don't worry, I'll take care of your wife and daughter, look made Rentaro so angry that he almost suffocated. He had never won against Yi Zai in a verbal battle. If he continued to lie down, he might not be beaten to death by the Gastria creatures, but by Yi Zai's words. What's the reason? Why didn't those Gastria creatures retreat just now? Why are they all running away now? Although he knew that Yi Zai had solved the problem, Rentaro was still rather curious. It's a special, level 4, that has the ability to command other Gastria creatures. Then, after I dealt with it, the other Gastria creatures naturally retreated. When Yazai supported the heavily injured Rentaro back to the shelter they built, 
he realized that there were many corpses of Gastria creatures lying nearby. Seeing Yazai and Rentaro return, Kizara sheathed her blade. Kanna and Enju jogged to their side. Needless to say, these Gastria creatures lying on the ground were their masterpiece. Previously, Yazai also expected that there might be fish that escaped the net, but when he thought of Kanna and the rest's strength, he was relieved. Why are you in such a sorry state? Were you gang raped by a large number of Gastria creatures? Kizara's face was valiant, and her words were as straightforward as ever. However, although it was a joke, his and Rentaro's encounter was not much different from being gang raped by Gastria creatures. Compared to the few scattered Gastria creatures that ran here, Yazai and Rentaro were crushed by an army of Gastria creatures. Don't mention it. Fortunately, the crisis has been resolved. Are the other children okay? Yazai did not expect that they would be so unlucky. They had only slept out for a night and almost caused a big mistake. If he had known this would happen, he would have taken the risk and rushed back to the Tokyo district. We have all taken action, so the other children are naturally fine. But Yazai, how do you plan to calculate this fee? Look, Rentaro and Enju have worked hard. It's not too much to give them a commission fee, right? Kizara Tendo looked at Yazai and rubbed her hands. Although the situation of their Tendo guard company had improved because of Yazai's participation. But Kizara Tendo's financial situation did not improve much. Not to mention other things, Kizara Tendo's kidney was not good. Every time she went to the hospital, she had to spend a lot of money. Don't misunderstand. Kizara's kidney was not bad because she did it too often. It was because she had suffered a serious injury when she was young. It was also at that time that she lost her parents. She could have solved the problem once and for all through a kidney transplant. However, this woman kept saying that she wanted to use this pain to remind herself not to forget revenge. In short, this was a woman who would not even let herself go when she was ruthless. Moreover, Kizara's ambition was also very big. The company had been in such an awkward position, which was obviously damaging to their company's image. That was why she had always wanted to move the land. However, even if she squeezed all of Rintaro's salary out of him, it was still far from her goal. Although Yi Zai was her employee, the mission reward had nothing to do with her. So many Gastria creatures have died here. We should be able to sell them for some money. The corpses of Gastria organisms were highly sought after goods for those scientists. Yi Zai had also made a fortune by selling them. Most of the civilian commissions were actually for other things. Commissions like hunting down Gastria creatures were very rare. After all, the civilians were also human beings. Although they were doing work that risked their lives, who would want to risk their lives if they could not leave the shelter? When the sun had just risen, the little Lolas woke up and started to play again. But they definitely didn't know how dangerous it was last night. Yi Zai called Miyori Shiba and asked her to collect the corpses of these Gastria creatures. Yi Zai remembered that Shiba Heavy Industries was also interested in these things. Just like the virtual combat device that Miyori Shiba asked Rintaro and Yazai to test. How did the data of the Gastria creatures come from? Wasn't it analyzed through these corpses and loaded into the computer? When Yazai tested it previously, the reason why there were no level 4 Gastria creatures was because they didn't have the data. Although level 4 was not as rare as the 12 zodiac bases in the world, it was still quite rare. Moreover, the strength of each level 4 was quite strong. Even if the average person encountered it, escaping would be a problem, let alone killing it. When Yizai told her over the phone that he had obtained a level 4 Gastria creature, Miori Shiba rushed over without stopping to rest. There, Shiba Heavy Industries did indeed buy all kinds of Gastria creatures. Research was one aspect. Another aspect was that parts of the Gastria creature's bodies could also be used to make weapons. Little Yi Zai, I knew I didn't misjudge you. We've only known each other for a short while, and you've already given me such a big surprise. For those who still confuse, the little here is almost the same as Chan in Japanese. Miori Shiba got off the car and trotted over, wanting to hug Yi Zai. But this time, before Yi Zai could dodge, a figure appeared in front of him and blocked Miori Shiba. You shameless vixen. What are you doing here? Kizara looked at Miori Shiba in displeasure. 
the person she hated the most, other than her enemies, was Miyori Shiba. Ha, so it's Kizara. You poor Missy, you haven't starved to death yet. Miyori Shiba looked at Kizara in front of her and used her fan to cover her mouth, mocking her mercilessly. Looks like you want to die. Kizara placed her hand on the hilt of the knife at her waist, as if she was considering how many pieces she should slice Miyori Shiba into. Rentaro, who was far away, helplessly covered his face when he saw the two of them confronting each other. It's starting again. These two can't even breathe the same air. Kizara Tendo was from the Tendo family, while Miyori Shiba was from the Shiba family. The relationship between the two families was normal. Although strictly speaking, Kizara Tendo wasn't considered a member of the Tendo family, the rivalry between the two of them since they were young didn't weaken at all. I'm different now. My Tendo Guard Company has so many commissions that I can't finish them all. I'm going to be a rich person soon. The two of them had similar backgrounds, similar looks, and similar martial strength. Therefore, the one who was mocked every time was Kazara Tendo who almost starved to death. However, the situation was different now. Today, Kazara Tendo could even puff out her chest and say that she wouldn't starve anymore. Humph, it's all because of my little Yazai's charity. Otherwise, a poor missy like you would have starved to death on the streets. Ha! What do you mean by your Yazai? It's my Yazai. He's my company's employee now. He has nothing to do with you. Miyori Shiba was actually quite unhappy when she mentioned this point. She knew Yazai first. The strength of Shiba Heavy Industries wasn't something that the Tendo Guard Company that was about to close down could compare to. However, Yazai rejected her olive branch and joined the shabby Tendo Guard Company in a blink of an eye. Was this a side reaction? She, Miyori Shiba, wasn't as outstanding as Kazara Tendo, so she couldn't attract Yazai. Thinking of this, Miyori Shiba was inexplicably upset. Losing to anyone was fine, but she couldn't lose to Kazara Tendo. Actually, what Miyori Shiba didn't know was that Yazai didn't intend to join any faction at first. Kazara Tendo and Rentaro's pestering skills were too strong, and he had no other choice. Moreover, Compared to a huge faction like Shiba Heavy Industries, Tendo Guard Company was considered a small faction. Yazai didn't want to be a tool of a large corporation so it was impossible for him to join Shiba Heavy Industries. Humph, Kazara, you can only be proud for a while longer. Little Yazai is already my fiancé. He will leave your lousy company sooner or later. Hearing Miyori Shiba's words, Yazai was stunned for a moment. When did he become Miyori Shiba's fiancé? However, seeing the former continuously winking at him, Yazai understood. Miyori Shiba didn't want to admit that she lost to Kazara so she started to talk nonsense. Nonsense, how can Yazai be your fiancé? He even said that he would entrust everything to me. Kazara was even more hostile. The current situation had nothing to do with Yazai's ownership but he couldn't lose to this woman in front of him. Hearing Kazara's words, Yazai was stunned again. He did say that he would entrust something to Kazara in the future but that was referring to these, cursed children. Why did the situation seem completely different when it came from Kazara's mouth? Yazai, do you like Miss Kazara? Brother Yazai, are you that Miss Sheba's fiancé? And there were people who actually believed the nonsense of these two women. Rentaro thought that Yazai liked Kazara too so should he choose friendship? Or love? On the other hand, Kanna looked at Yazai with tears in her eyes. She had always hoped that when she grew up, she could be Brother Yazai's bride. But from the looks of it now, it was obvious that she was robbed. Facing their questions, Yazai had a headache. What the f asterisk ck was going on? Why did they make him seem like a scumbag? Stealing his brother's goddess and even abandoning the little Lolita. Was he such a person? Before the situation got worse, Yazai stepped forward to stop Kazara Tendo and Miyori Shiba who were about to start a fight. After packing up all the corpses of the Gastria organism, they hurriedly told Miyori Shiba to scram. What kind of fiancé was that? If the group of little Lolas inside heard this, wouldn't that be terrible? Yizai would probably be buried alive by their tears in the next second. The price that Miyori Shiba paid for the level 4 Gastria creature was surprisingly kind. It directly offset Yizai's debt. 
the remaining Gastria creatures were also exchanged for money by Yi Zai. Once again, he bought a large amount of building materials and daily necessities from Miyori Shiba. Just like that, a few more months passed. In a barren land not far from the Tokyo area, there was such a small building complex. From time to time, the sound of the little lolis' laughter could be heard coming from the buildings. After a few months of hard work, Yi Zai and the others had already begun to build this shelter. In order to keep the little loli from being bored, Yi Zai even spent a lot of effort to build a small amusement park in the sanctuary. In the shelter, Yi Zai had also spent a lot of money to purchase power generation equipment from Shiba Heavy Industries. In terms of water sources, he had also completed the excavation of underground water. All in all, the shelter was now completely self-sufficient and could be considered a small town. And among the cursed children, such a rumor was also constantly circulating. Not far from the southeast of the Tokyo area, there was such an ideal town. The cursed children there were not discriminated against. They had beautiful clothes to wear and delicious food to eat. And not only was there an amusement park that did not require money, but there was also a gentle brother Yi Zai who told them stories every day. Compared to the large shelter that starved and froze every day and was beaten up at the slightest provocation, such a place was undoubtedly a paradise for the cursed children. Therefore, a large number of cursed children did not care about their own safety and resolutely stepped out of the protection of the giant stone tablet and walked into the outside world. As for the residents of Tokyo, they were quite happy about the movement of the cursed children. They had long wished that these cursed children would die as soon as possible so that they would not threaten their safety. Moreover, the ruler of Tokyo was also crazy. He actually wanted to enact a law to protect the cursed children. Did those monsters need protection? They were not humans at all. It was better for them to die as soon as possible. Was there a need to protect them? Now that the village of the cursed appeared at the right time, their lives would not be in danger in the future if those monsters were taken away. That's right, the shelter built by Yi Zai was an ideal town for the cursed children, but for the ordinary people, it was the village of the cursed. Because the people who lived there were all cursed children, and they also regarded it as their hometown. The name, Village of the Cursed, was really appropriate. Moreover, Yi Zai, who built the Village of the Cursed, was also described as a demon who raised monsters. Yi Zai did not care about the attitude of the residents of Tokyo. As long as they did not cause trouble, Yi Zai could not be bothered to argue with a group of idiots. Because the construction of the Village of the Cursed was completed, there were new members joining every day. The number of little Lolas living there also showed an explosive growth. The little Lolas' favorite thing was to watch the Sailor Moon together and listen to Brother Yi Zai tell stories. Because of the sharp increase in the number of people, Yi Zai also began to teach the little Lolas farming and raising livestock. The little Lolas' physical fitness was superhuman, and some of them had animal genes that were suitable for farming. When it came to work, they were even better than some adults. And because Yi Zai was repeatedly warned by the World Starter Association to disband the village of the cursed, but Yi Zai did not care about them at all. In the end, even his IP ranking was stripped. When Yi Zai's ranking was finally stripped, his IP ranking had already reached 83rd place. Because he killed a level 4 Gastria creature and subsequently hunted a large number of Gastria creatures, he obtained this ranking. However, although his IP ranking was stripped, Yi Zai's identity as a civilian was still retained, although he rarely went out to work now. The village of the cursed had already passed the difficult stage and was now beginning to be self sufficient. He also did not have to be as tired as a dead dog and go around killing Gastria creatures to earn money like before. So, in the end, that person called Tang Sanzang coveted the beauty of the Queen of Womanland and decided to spread his seeds over the entire country. Yi Zai was talking about the magically modified version of Journey to the West with little Lolas crawling all over him when his phone suddenly rang. Yi Zai, come to the company quickly. There's a large scale commission. This time, the matter seems to be quite serious. As soon as Yi Zai picked up the phone, he heard Kazara Tendo's anxious voice. It had been a while since Yi Zai went out to work. If it wasn't a difficult task, Kazara Tendo wouldn't bother Yi Zai. What is it? Even Rentaro can't solve it. Logically speaking, with Rentaro's strength, even if it was a level 3 Gastria creature, it shouldn't be a problem. 
It's different this time. The person who commissioned it is the highest person in charge of the Tokyo district. The target of the commission is also all the guard companies in the district. I just received a message. Be it the president or the citizens, they will all be present this time, so you have to come too. Kizara Tendo told him the message she just received. It was almost time, so she was in a hurry. It was fine if she mistook it as an ordinary client, but the other party was the boss of the Tokyo district. It wouldn't be good if her license was revoked if she was negligent. Understood. I'll be there right away. Yazai planned to make a trip. Moreover, he had heard of the Saitenshi for a long time. Although the other party was the highest person in charge of the Tokyo district, she surprisingly didn't discriminate against the cursed child compared to those ignorant Tokyo residents. Just from this point alone, Yazai had a good impression of her. Since it was her request this time, the other party would most likely appear. Yazai was also quite curious about what kind of mission it was that made the Tokyo district's top person helpless and could only ask for help from other citizens. Yazai wanted to call Kanna, but seeing that she was having fun with her friends, he left with a smile. When Yazai arrived at the designated destination, Kizara Tendo and Rentaro were already pacing around anxiously at the door. Yazai, you're finally here. If you didn't come, we would have to go in ourselves. Kizara Tendo scolded Yazai when she saw him arrive. This was a commission from the Saitenshi. She wanted to make their company the strongest, and this was the best opportunity. As the strongest face of their Tendo guard company and the strongest person in charge, Yazai naturally had to be present. I'm not late yet, am I? And it doesn't matter if I don't get the commission. I'm just more interested in the Saitenshi. Yizai expressed that he no longer lacked money and did not need to work so hard to complete commissions. As for reputation, Yizai cared even less about it. He didn't even want the 83rd place in the IP rankings. Why would he care about anything else? Since you don't care about that little bit of money, then all the rewards for completing the commission will be handed over to the company. Although it was called a company, it was actually Kazara Tendo's pocket. Yizai didn't care about Kazara Tendo's idea of taking advantage of her because Yizai was almost in a retired state. Coupled with the fact that his IP ranking had been taken away, the performance of the Tendo Guard Company was deteriorating day by day. Originally, with Rintaro's strength, there was no way he wouldn't have asked for a small commission. But this guy always hides his head and shows his tail. He always uses third-rate strength to deal with others. How could business be good? Even though Kizara Tendo was a girl, her strength was unquestionable. However, because of her weak kidneys, she couldn't do too much strenuous exercise, so she could only sit on the bench in the company. The three of them walked into the designated meeting room, which was already filled with people waiting for their turn. They were also the presidents and employees of the various guard companies in the Tokyo district. Of course, the presidents were definitely present but that employees who followed were all the backbone of the various companies without exception. Not all guard companies were as shabby as Kazara Tendo's company. They only had two employees. Hey hey hey, what's going on with the employees recently? Since when did the job of licking blood on the edge of the blade become a game of house? When Yizai and the other two were about to reach their seats, a muscular man suddenly blocked their path. Moreover, he was cursing and scolding, and his attitude was quite condescending. The other party's intention was very simple. It was nothing more than seeing that Yizai and the other two were young and in a bad mood, so he suddenly felt unhappy. Indeed, the three of them were at the age of high school students. Compared to the majority of the people here, they did indeed look like newbies. When the surrounding people saw this scene, they also didn't want to be nosy and just watch the show. After all, everyone sitting here was a competitor. It was good to be able to eliminate a few of them. Perhaps the reason why this old man dared to suddenly jump out at this time was because the president behind him had secretly instructed him to do so. Moreover, this muscular bro who made a move was not some unknown rookie, but a ruthless person who was ranked around the top thousand in the IP rankings. Mr. Ikuma, please calm down. This is the conference room. If you make a move here, we will be chased out. A little golden-haired lowly suddenly ran up and persuaded the muscular bro. Get out of my way. Do I need you to teach me how to do things? 
However, this person called Akuma ignored the good intentions of his initiator and intended to send her flying with a slap. But at this time, a figure moved faster than Akuma. Yi's eyes suddenly appeared in front of the little lowly. A long knife appeared out of thin air and was placed on the muscular bro's neck. The threat of death instantly filled Akuma's brain, causing his originally manic heart to instantly drop to the freezing point. Originally, when this muscular bro blocked their path, Yi Zai didn't intend to bother with him. After all, this idiot would appear on every occasion and usually wouldn't live past three episodes. But when the other party intended to slap the little lowly in front of him, Yi Zai couldn't tolerate it. It seems that you must have made a mistake if you think that age is equivalent to experience. Yi Zai looked at Akuma expressionlessly and said. The latter broke out in cold sweat and didn't dare to say anything else. Because he felt that the blade on his neck was getting closer and closer to him. This man really dared to kill him and wasn't just talking about it. Please forgive Mr. Akuma. He was just being impulsive. At this time, the golden-haired lowly who was about to be beaten suddenly bowed and pleaded with Yi Zai. He wanted to hit you just now. Even so, don't you hate him? Yi Zai looked at the golden-haired lowly. It had to be said that these cursed children easily aroused Yi Zai's good feelings. Not a lolicon. I doubt it, Author San. Mr. Akuma isn't usually like this. Moreover, if Mr. Akuma dies, Ko will become homeless again. Although this Akuma was obviously the impulsive type, and from his action of wanting to hit the initiator, it could be seen that the little lowly must have suffered a lot usually. But since the other party had said so, Yi Zai decided to give the other party some face. Consider yourself lucky. I'll give your initiator some face. As Yi Zai said this, he pulled the Muramesa back from the supervisor's neck. The latter immediately sat on the ground as if he had lost all his strength. In that instant, he experienced a fear that he had never felt when he fought with the Gastria creature in the past. The expressions of the others around them weren't any better because the people present were all old foxes. The civilians who could sit here were also the best of the various guard companies. But just now, no one saw how this young man moved and how he placed the knife on the supervisor's neck. There was no doubt that if the other party had attacked him just now, no one present would have been able to react. It wasn't just the civilians. Even the children of the initiator who were brought here with them couldn't see his eye move just now. In other words, even the initiator with an extraordinary physique was probably powerless in front of the other party. When did such a fierce person appear in the Tokyo district? And how is he so young? Some of the civilians who had been wandering outside all year round looked at Yi's eyes face and said in disbelief. They thought it was a group of lambs, but they didn't expect the other party to be a ferocious tiger. One had to know that the IP ranking of the supervisor was in the thousands. This was on a global scale, but they didn't have the power to fight back. Then what was the other party's IP ranking? Could it be a monster on the level of a hundred? I know who he is. That green hair and that knife, he's the founder of the village of the cursed. Finally, someone seemed to have thought of something and suddenly looked at Yi Zai and said loudly. Although the way the other party recognized him made him quite dissatisfied, it had to be said that his hair was indeed quite recognizable. So he's the demon of the village of the cursed. Someone wanted to mock Yi Zai, but after thinking of the supervisor's encounter, he instantly followed his heart and cowered. Compared to the fearful and uneasy eyes of the civilians, the gazes of the initiators looking at Yi Zai became quite friendly. To the initiators, Yi Zai was simply an idol because in this world, there were only a few people who would care about their lives. What's the IP ranking of the Lord of Curses? If his strength is already so strong, then wouldn't his initiator be even stronger? Due to Akuma's crushing defeat, the others became curious about Yi Zai's strength and began to discuss in low voices. I remember that his IP ranking was around 83rd when he was stripped. That means that the other party is at least a monster within the top 100. Someone who knew the inside story whispered. That is to say, if he is alone, his strength is at least at the level of a thousand. Because the IP ranking was a combination of the promoters and the initiator, the individual strength would generally be lower than the IP ranking. Moreover, in the IP rankings, the one with a higher percentage of strength was usually the initiator. 
After all, no matter how strong the weak humans were, it was impossible for them to compete with the cursed child. They were only there to assist. Of course, the promoters within the top 100 were different. At their level, even the promoters had the strength to defeat the weaker initiators. The strength that Yi Zai had just displayed was the best proof. However, these people still underestimated Yi Zai's strength. It was true that his IP ranking was 83rd, but that wasn't his ranking together with Kanna. It was only Yi Zai's ranking alone. From a certain period of time, Yi Zai had been acting alone. On the one hand, Yi Zai felt that at Kanna's age, the mission should be to have fun and not fight everywhere. On the other hand, if she continued fighting, it would only speed up the erosion of the Gastria virus in Kanna's body. Of course, the problem of the erosion of the Gastria virus had already been resolved by the system's reward some time ago after Yi Zai completed the construction of the village of curses. It will be explained later what the reward was. In other words, Yi Zai's ranking of 83rd was completely based on his own strength. Kanna wasn't included in it at all. Moreover, this ranking of 83rd was still quite exaggerated. If he had displayed his full strength, this ranking would only be higher. It was indeed the right choice to bring Yi Zai along. Otherwise, if it was just the two of us, we might have been defeated. Kizara Tendo's words made Rentaro touch his nose with an apologetic expression. Indeed, in such a situation, Rentaro's attitude was more likely to be to settle things peacefully. Kizara Tendo's body wasn't suitable for battle. The biggest possibility was that the two of them would be embarrassed together. But because of Yi Zai's behavior just now, no one here dared to underestimate them. At this moment, the big screen in the middle of the conference room suddenly lit up, interrupting the stifling situation. After a series of snow patterns on the big screen, two faces suddenly appeared on the screen. One was an old man who looked to be in his fifties or sixties. There wasn't much to see. The other was a silver-haired beauty with short hair. She was the Saitenshi who had only heard of her name before Yi Zai. Thank you all for accepting the invitation to come here despite your busy schedule. The Saitenshi was quite polite. She was clearly a person of high status, but her attitude was very humble. She didn't have the bad habits of other big shots. This time, I've troubled everyone to come here because I want to issue a commission to everyone here. Please help me find such an item. As the Saitenshi spoke, a photo appeared at the bottom of the screen. On top of it was a box, and below it was a long list of mission rewards that made people click their tongues. It was undeniable that when they saw the long list of numbers, most of the people present were moved. Why did they do such a dangerous, civilian, job? It was nothing more than for, profit. Otherwise, who would like to lick blood on the edge of a blade and be a hero of justice? Who would have such a ridiculous dream? There were people who were blinded by money, and naturally there were people who were rational. For example, Kizara Tendo. Rentaro didn't know if Kizara was really rational, or if she was just rebuking the old man beside Saitenshi. I'm also confused here, she clearly doesn't talk or ask about anything maybe our author San is high at that time. But it had to be said that Kizara Tendo asked the question that most of the people here had in their hearts. That was, what was this box for? What was its use? Because it was just finding a box, it was impossible to have such a rich reward. Moreover, it required all the th civilians in the Tokyo district to be dispatched together. In other words, this seemingly ordinary mission might be quite dangerous. And this box was definitely not something simple. You don't need to know what this box is for. You just need to complete your commission. Before the Saitenshi could say anything, the old man beside her, Kikunaju Tendo, spoke with dissatisfaction. Then please allow me to reject this commission. I can't let my people take risks because of some baffling commission. Kizara Tendo was not afraid Kikunaju Tendo at all as she retorted directly. And because of her involvement, there were many people who had the same idea as her. This was because this matter was too bizarre. They had found an ordinary box, but they were rewarded with such a generous reward. Could it be that as the ruler of the Tokyo district, they would lack such manpower? Yi Zai also felt that the matter was strange. Let's not talk about the importance of the box first. How did the gastria organism that took the box resist the giant stone tablet and enter the residential area? 
then, how did it snatch this seemingly important box from the heavily guarded environment? If the protective measures of the Tokyo district were to this extent, then wouldn't the Saitenshi, who stayed in the sacred residence, be assassinated at any time? If it wasn't that the guards were too stupid, then there must be a mole. If it was the first situation, then it would be fine. But if it was the second situation, they were obviously being set up by others when they went to look for the box. Seeing that more than half of the people were beginning to retreat, the Saitenshi panicked a little and began to hesitate whether to tell the truth of the matter. But without her saying anything, an uninvited guest answered everyone's questions on her behalf. A man in a black tuxedo with a smiling mask on his face suddenly appeared at the conference table with a little girl holding two knives. The people at the scene reacted quickly to the sudden appearance of the intruders. They all took out their pistols and aimed at the two people. Dad, can I kill all those people who are pointing their guns at us? Facing the aim of several guns, the man did not panic at all. The little girl beside him looked unhappily at the people with guns raised. Her crazy eyes seemed to really not take human lives seriously. There was also such a cursed child. It seemed that there was indeed a difference in everything. Yi Ji also turned his gaze to the father and daughter at the table. In fact, from the beginning, Yi Zai had already noticed the two people hiding in the shadows. However, Yi Zai did not care too much. He thought that the other party was a civilian who did not want to show his face. After all, there were all kinds of people in the profession of civilian. Even if there were some mystics, it would not be strange. Little Hina, you can't kill these people. We still have to play games with them. The man in the tuxedo said to his daughter beside him. He didn't care about the fact that he was surrounded at all. Arrogant bastard, you actually came uninvited and didn't state your intentions. Then, go to hell. The arrogant behavior of the two men instantly angered the people present. There was no shortage of impulsive people everywhere. After one of the people took the lead to open fire, it was like a signal. One by one, the people present started to shoot at the two people at the table. But in the next second, to the disbelief of everyone present, was that. The bullets that they shot at each other all stopped in the air. There seemed to be a transparent barrier in front of the man in a black tuxedo, which suspended all the bullets in the air. Seeing this scene, Yazai turned his head to look at Rintaro. The latter nodded his head as if he was certain. After coming to this world, Yazai had asked Rintaro about it. He learned from Rintaro that there was no mysterious power in this world. There was no such thing as magic or superpowers. This was a world that emphasized science. But the scene in front of him was so magical. The only explanation was that this intruder should be the same kind of person as Rintaro. They were the so-called modified soldiers. When science advanced to a certain level, it could also discover things that humans could not imagine. Looking at the man in the tuxedo, Yazai was quite curious about this ability that was similar to his superpowers. How many people like this man and Rentaro were there in this world? If there were enough of them, perhaps one day, they could really replace the role of the cursed children on the battlefield. And if the last value of the cursed children was gone, would the dirty senior leaders issue the order to kill the cursed children? In fact, Yazai's worries were completely unnecessary. Indeed, when the new human modification project facilities were being built, the higher-ups did have such an idea. They wanted to use modified soldiers to replace the cursed children. But when the plan was implemented, they realized how unrealistic this idea was. First of all, the difficulty of modified soldiers was quite high. So far, only four scientists in the world were able to do it. It was almost impossible to mass-produce them. Secondly, the mortality rate of modified soldiers was also very high. Not everyone could survive. The Vi metal was not harmful to the human body, but if the human body could not adapt to it, it would not survive. Because of this, the candidates for the modified soldiers were those who had been seriously injured on the battlefield and could barely survive. Finally, it was expensive. No matter what, scientific research was burning money. This was an unchanging law in that world. In summary, other than Rentaro, there were also modified soldiers that the man thought of, but there were definitely not many of them. After the man in a tuxedo bounced all the bullets that were suspended in the air back, 
he bowed and introduced himself. The man took off his top hat and introduced himself like a gentleman. My name is Kajitain Hiriko. This is my daughter and initiator, Koina Hiriko. Our goal this time is to snatch seven stars' inheritance. I am willing to compete fairly with everyone here. If you win, you will naturally receive a lot of chips. But if I win. At this point, Kajitain Hiriko suddenly stretched out his voice and began to examine everyone present. If I win, then I will use Seven Stars Inheritance to attract a level 5 and destroy the entire Tokyo district. Kajitain Hiriko said with a voice that was almost flat. Everyone present was quite horrified. Why do you want to destroy Tokyo district? What good will it do you? Rentaro looked at Kajitain Hiriko, who was also a modified soldier, but had completely different beliefs, and questioned him. There's no benefit. Don't you think this world is too boring? Hearing Kajitain Hiriko's answer, Yazai secretly clicked his tongue. Another lunatic who was tired of living and came out to find some excitement. At the same time, he also wanted to drag the world to hell with him. Originally, this had nothing to do with Yazai, so he could be unconcerned. But at this time, the system gave him another mission. Ding! Discovered Mission 2, Capture Kajitain Hiriko and Koina Hiriko Alive. Reward draw two cards at random. Originally, even if Kajitain Hiriko wanted to use the Seven Stars Legacy to destroy the entire Tokyo district, it had nothing to do with Yizai. Anyway, he didn't live here, and he didn't have a good impression of the people in the Tokyo district, so he didn't want to get involved in this matter. But now that the system had issued a mission, the nature was different. Even if it had nothing to do with him, Yizai felt that he had to get involved just because of the reward. Kajitain Hiriko disrupted the meeting and brought his daughter here to show off his presence. He planned to run away after showing off, but someone obviously didn't want him to do as he wished. Yizai shot out like a bolt of lightning and rushed behind Kajitain Hiriko in the blink of an eye. He held the Muramesa's hand behind his back and slashed at Kajitain Hiriko's neck. The mission required him to capture him alive, so Yizai didn't dare to use a blade. If he accidentally killed him, then his mission would fail. Faced with the sudden danger, Kajitain Hiriko, who was planning to retreat, suddenly froze. His body didn't have time to react. Clang! But Yi Zai's slash was inevitably blocked. Although Kajitain Hiriko didn't react, as the initiator, Koina Hiriko's reaction was quite fast. Koina Hiriko used two Kodachi to cross and strenuously block the slash that Yazai had originally intended to slash down on Kajitain Hiriko. As the initiator of the Tamantis animal genes, Koina Hiriko had a unique advantage when using dual blades. The two Odachi were like his own arms when he used them. It could be said that he was a natural swordsman. You actually want to hurt daddy, Koina will chop you into pieces. Koina Hiriko's little face was very angry, and the gaze she looked at Yizai was quite aggressive. Little girl, you actually want to chop people at the drop of a hat. Didn't your daddy teach you that children should be more polite? Yizai's slash was blocked by Koina Hiriko, but as he exploded with an even stronger force, Koina Hiriko was sent flying along with her blades. Looking at his daughter who was sent flying into the wall, Kajitain Hiriko also reacted abruptly. As soon as the illusion device was activated, Ye's body was pushed away by an irresistible force. I thought there were only trash. I didn't expect there to be a powerhouse. Your Excellency should also be a soldier. What unit were you in the past? Maybe we know each other. Kajitain Hiriko didn't expect that there was actually a shark hiding among the commoners that he thought were all rookies. Kajitain Hiriko had no doubts about Yazai's identity. He was definitely a modified soldier. Koina Hiriko's strength, even among the many initiators, could be considered top notch. But just now, he was at a disadvantage because of the device. The other party was definitely not an ordinary human. It was more likely that he was a modified soldier like himself. I'm not a lump of metal like you. I'm a real human. Your vision has limited your imagination. The limits of the human body are definitely beyond your imagination. Yi Zai was bounced away by the repulsive force, but he didn't fly far. He only used the ceiling as an excuse to reduce the distance between the two of them. 
Hina-chan is going to chop you into many pieces. But Hina-chan, who had been sent flying by Yi Zai, attacked Yi Zai again. The little lowly seemed to have gone crazy. Her expression was bloodthirsty. Her eyes were red as she launched a fierce attack on Yi Zai. Moreover, her fighting style was quite reckless. It was a fighting style of exchanging injuries for injuries. Yi Zai frowned again when he saw the sickly Hina-chan. It could be seen that this child had been completely raised astray. Looking at her attitude of not taking human life seriously, he knew that this little brat had killed many people. Yi Zai was no longer soft-hearted. He wasn't a saint. So what if she was a little lowly? His tolerance was only for his companions and friends. A strong wind suddenly blew in the small meeting room. Yi Zai's figure also began to become erratic. His figure moved along with the airflow, and the blade was as sharp as the divine wind. Yi Zai had been using the Imperial Wind Swordsmanship for some time, especially in this world. Slaughtering a large number of Gastria creatures made him more proficient with the Imperial Wind Swordsmanship. Therefore, as he used the Imperial Wind Swordsmanship, Koina Hiroko was suppressed by him. As the initiator, Koina Hiroko couldn't keep up with Yi Zai's speed at all. She had extraordinary swordsmanship, but she could only defend passively. Seeing Koina Hiroko in a bitter battle, Kajitane Hiroko also began to frown. If it was a moment of carelessness before, it would be fine if Koina Hiroko was sent flying while defending passively. But now, Koina Hiroko had used all her strength, but she was still suppressed. The enemy was stronger than he had imagined. Kajitane Hiroko didn't plan to watch the battle anymore. Originally, he was watching from the side because there were other civilians around. But now, he had no choice but to take action. As for the other rookies, he just needed to be on guard. As long as he could defeat the man in front of him, the other rookies would be nothing. Koina Hiroko and his father didn't care about them. The strongest pain slash pain threshold. Kajitane Hiroko endured the pain caused by the pressure on his nerves and blood vessels and expanded the repulsion field further. Letting the repulsion force press down from top to bottom simply meant changing the direction of the repulsion force and making the repulsion force follow the direction of gravity. This formed an environment similar to the gravity field. The sudden heavy pressure caused everyone present to bend their backs. It was as if their bodies were carrying a heavy object on their backs. Not to mention moving, even standing up now was quite difficult. But everyone here didn't include Yi Zai, Rentaro, or Kajitane Hiroko and Koina Hiroko who weren't affected. Rentaro's body had been modified before. He had faced a similar environment in the Shiba Heavy Industries before, so he still had a certain level of resistance. As for Yi Zai, even Rentaro could withstand it. Yi Zai, who had withstood more gravity than him, was naturally more relaxed. Yi Zai, who was moving at extreme speed, only paused for a moment before maintaining his high speed and moving again. In this repulsion field, although Yi Zai's speed had decreased, it definitely didn't affect him much. It could be said that Kajitane Hiroko had made a bad move. If he hadn't experienced the virtual combat device of Shiba Heavy Industries, this ability might have caused trouble for Yi Zai. But now, for Yi Zai, the effect could only be said to be barely satisfactory. Did my illusion device malfunction? Kajitane Hiroko could only think of this when he saw that Yazai was completely unaffected. However, judging from the reactions of the others around him, there was nothing wrong with his repulsion domain at all. Then there was only one possibility. This man had used his own body to withstand the pressure. The pressure that made others unable to move had no effect on this person. Kajitane Hiroko was also helpless. It was different from Rintaro. The ability he had obtained after being modified, which was this illusion device, mainly gave him the ability of propulsion. It wasn't like Rentaro's ability to strengthen fighting and increase movement in close combat. If the propulsion didn't have much effect on Yazai, then he was just an ordinary person with relatively strong strength. However, since the propulsion was useless, Kajitane Hiroko didn't plan on giving up. Instead, he pulled out two pistols and started the bullet screen. Kajitane Hiroko didn't hope that the pistols could hurt Yazai. He only hoped that they could make Yazai hesitate and create an opening for Koina Hiroko to attack. Dad, 
I can't win against this person. Koina Hiroko didn't look good either. She had always been the one attacking her prey. But now, she was the meat on the chopping block. Koina Hiroko's beautiful dress was already stained red with blood. If not for the fact that she was a cursed child and had a strong recovery ability, she wouldn't have been able to get up long ago. Yazai was very measured every time he attacked. Because he needed to capture her alive, he didn't kill her. Seeing his daughter's miserable state, Kajitane Hiroko also panicked. Enduring the risk of his nerves and blood vessels exploding, Kajitane Hiroko used the maximum repulsion power on Yazai. Yazai didn't expect the sudden increase in pressure, and his footsteps suddenly slowed down. Then, his entire body was pushed to the wall by the repulsion force. Kajitane Hiroko wasn't in a good condition either. At this moment, his entire body looked like it had been fished out of a pool of blood. It wasn't that he didn't have to pay a price to use the repulsion power, but he had to endure the pain from his nerves and blood vessels every time. The repulsion impact power just now had even made him lose consciousness from the pain. Dad, how are you? Koina Hiroko anxiously supported Kajitane Hiroko with a panicked expression. After all, Kajitane Hiroko had always been her pillar of support. Let's leave quickly. The repulsive force won't be able to stop him for long. Kajitane Hiroko clearly hadn't expected that he would fail miserably at such an easy task. Originally, his commission only required him to obtain seven stars inheritance, and that was enough. However, he insisted on showing off his presence and declaring war on these citizens. Now that he had failed to act tough, he had been tricked instead. Even if he wanted to leave now, it would be a problem. Koina Hiroko also knew that it was time to run. She lifted Kajitane Hiroko, who had difficulty moving, and planned to leave this place. The other policemen were still unable to move due to the repulsive environment just now, so they were unable to stop them for the time being. But Koina Hiroko was carrying Kajitane Hiroko. She had only taken a few steps when he suddenly froze on the spot, unable to move. Kajitane Hiroko looked at little Hina, who had suddenly stopped moving. He didn't know what had happened and could only ask, Little Hina, what's wrong? Dad, my body suddenly can't move. I've clearly tried my best to move, but my body seems to be out of my control. Kajitane Hiroko was shocked when he heard his daughter's words. Could it be that there were other experts here besides the sword-wielding expert just now? Is it him? He didn't seem to be affected much by the repulsive force just now. Kajitane Hiroko looked at Rentaro but this question was quickly answered. I've already worked so hard. Do you think I'll let you leave just like that? Yazai's voice came from the direction of the pile of rubble. It wasn't hard to tell from his words. Kajitane Hiroko's sudden inability to move definitely had something to do with him. This was indeed the case. When Yazai was sent flying, he had directly used his superpower to hold little Koina Hiroko in place. Unless her strength far exceeded Yazai's, there was no way she could break free from his control. Your Excellency, you still say that you're not a modified soldier. Is this mysterious power something that humans can possess? Kajitane Hiroko also knew that he couldn't escape and couldn't help but mock Yazai. He was implying that Yazai was bragging about how the limits of the human body were beyond imagination. However, the result was the same as him. They both possessed such abilities because of the modified soldier. This is indeed one of my abilities. You probably wouldn't believe that I'm not a modified soldier. However, this has nothing to do with me. Yazai didn't intend to argue with the other party. He interfered just now just to complete his mission. Soon, the people from the holy abode arrived. They were the Saitenchi's guards. The leader was someone called Takuto Yasuwaki. They were here to take Kajitane Hiroko and Koina Hiroko away. After all, the other party's origins were unknown. Moreover, they actually knew about the Seven Stars' inheritance. Therefore, the Saitenshi was quite concerned about them. Hand them over to us. This is the Saitenshi's order. Originally, handing them over to the Saitenshi wasn't a big deal to Yazai. After all, his mission was already completed. However, this so-called Takuto Yasuwaki's attitude made Yazai quite dissatisfied. It was fine if he didn't even say, thank you. What was with his high and mighty attitude? 
It was as if capturing Kajitane Hiroko was his duty. Four-eyed bastard, you better get this straight. I'm the one who captured them. They are my spoils of war. I want to give the Saitenshi a favor. If you don't want to, you can't do anything to me. If you continue to speak with your nose in the air, I'll make you lie here. Yizai's words caused the handsome face of Takuto Yasuwaki to distort. He graduated from a famous university. After graduating, he joined the self-defense forces. Now, he was the Saitenshi's guard captain. No matter where he went, he belonged to the category of favored by the heavens. When had he ever been treated like this? He was immediately exposed. He adjusted his glasses and wanted to order his subordinates to attack Yazai. However, at this moment, the Saitenshi on the big screen suddenly spoke when he saw this scene. Takuto Yasuwaki, please apologize to Mr. Yazai. He was right just now. Capturing Kajitane Hiroko wasn't his responsibility. Therefore, we should say thank you. The Saitenshi's voice made Takuto Yasuwaki, who was about to explode and hurt them, calm down instantly. He had a rather displeased expression on his face as he gritted his teeth and thanked Yizai before taking the father and daughter pair away. Can you tell me your name? I'll come back for you. We haven't lost this game yet. When Kajitane Hiroko was about to be taken away by the bodyguard, he suddenly asked Yizai. My name is Yizai. I don't intend to participate in the game you mentioned, nor am I interested. However, Kajitane Hiroko didn't care about Yazai's words and only replied, I'll come back for you. Then, he was taken away by Takuto Yasuwaki. Takuto Yasuwaki sneered at Kajitane Hiroko's words. Want to come back? What a joke. Once they found out the other party's origin and the person who ordered him, they wouldn't be able to live at all. Regardless, Takuto Yasuwaki remembered the name Yazai. Since he dared to make him lose face in front of the Saitenshi, he had to find a chance to take revenge. Takuto Yasuwaki sneered at Kajitane Hiroko's words, but Yazai didn't think it was strange. After escaping from Yazai's superpower, suppression, Kajitane Hiroko had actually recovered his ability to move. He didn't go berserk just now because Yazai was here. As long as they left Yazai's sight, it would be hard to say what would happen. However, if the Saitenshi's guards were all trash like Takuto Yasuwaki, there was no doubt that the success rate of Kajitane Hiroko's escape was almost 100. However, this had nothing to do with him. His mission had just been completed. Next, even if the father and daughter ran away, what did it have to do with Yazai? Because Kajitane Hiroko and the others were taken away, the meeting room was restored to order. The Saitenshi continued the topic. Although Kajitane Hiroko was captured, the box called Seven Stars Legacy still had to be found. Now, there was no need for the Saitenshi to explain. Everyone knew that the lost box was extraordinary. It might even attract the Level 5 and destroy the entire Tokyo district. However, the Level 5 hadn't appeared yet. Just by finding such a box in the wild, they could obtain such a rich reward. The guard companies present were quite tempted. Even Kazara Tendo was planning to join in. Whether it was for the reward of the mission or for the safety of the Tokyo district, Kazara Tendo and Rentaro felt that they had to participate. But just as the Saitenshi was about to announce the type of Gastria creature that took away the Big Dipper's inheritance and the direction of its escape, Yazai decided to turn around and leave. Previously, he had made it very clear that only those who intended to participate in the commission could hear this information. Since Yizai did not intend to get involved, he naturally planned to leave. What did the life and death of the residents of the Tokyo Sanctuary have to do with Yizai? If he had the time, he might as well go home and play with the little Lolas. Mr. Yizai, can I trouble you with this matter? However, Yizai's actions did not escape the eyes of the Saitenshi. Or rather, the Saitenshi's gaze had been fixed on Yizai from the very beginning. Now that he wanted to leave, he naturally attracted the attention of the Saitenshi. Once Saitenshi spoke, the surrounding people all looked at Yaizai who was about to leave. Just now, they were only attracted by the pie painted by the Saitenshi. Otherwise, who would have ignored Yaizai's existence? This ferocious man had just used his own strength to easily suppress the criminal that all of them were helpless against. Now that the Saitenshi had spoken, everyone's attention was on Yaizai again. 
Yes, there was such a ferocious man. Although the mission reward was rich, could they compete with him? Seeing that Yi Zai did not speak, the Saitenshi continued, we have found the information of the duo just now. They were originally civilians, and their IP ranking was as high as 134. Yet, Mr. Yazai was able to easily subdue them alone. Please be sure to lend your strength to the residents of the Tokyo district so that they can be protected from the invasion of the Gastria creature. The Saitenshi's attitude was quite humble, but Yizai really did not have a good impression of the residents of the Tokyo district. I'm sorry, the battle just now has exhausted me. Please entrust the next mission to others. Moreover, it's just recovering a box. I believe that everyone here is competent enough. Yi Zai refused, but he did not say anything wrong. Now, they just needed to recover the Seven Stars Legacy. It was still unknown whether the Level 5 Gastria creature would appear. And if it was just recovering a box, it would not make a difference whether he was there or not. It would not affect the overall situation at all. Then, if there is an unpredictable outcome, can Mr. Yazai agree to help? The Saitenshi did not let Yizai off, but continued to ask. Maybe, we'll see when the time comes. Yizai did not completely refuse, but left the venue without looking back, not giving the Saitenshi a chance to continue. As for why he did not completely refuse, it was because the Saitenshi had always been on the side of the cursed child, so Yizai felt that he should give the other party some face. Yizai's departure caused a ripple in the conference room. Just now, they heard two pieces of information from the Saitenshi's words. The first was that Kajitane Hiroko was actually a ruthless person whose IP ranking was as high as 134. It was no wonder that they could not win. And the combination that was ranked 134 could not win against Yizai alone. Were the powerhouses in the top 100 all such monsters? The second thing that made them happy was that Yizai did not intend to participate in this mission. In other words, they would not become competitors. No matter how huge the reward was, it was completely possible for them to keep it in their pockets. Yi Zai, that bastard, clearly said that he would take the reward from me, but now he actually ran away by himself. Kizara Tendo was also quite angry. What was the use of catching two guys who did not have money? They did not want to take the big prize and actually chose to give it to others. Miss Kizara you also know that Yi Zai does not have a good impression of the people of Tokyo. Rentaro comforted her. It could be said that he was more concerned about the safety of Tokyo than anyone else. After all, Rentaro was the so-called Holy Son that Yi Zai spoke of. He had also just called Enju and asked her and Kanna to persuade Yi Zai together. After all, with Yi Zai, the little Loli's words were far more useful than theirs. Following that, the Saitenshi announced the last location of the Gastria organism, as well as the picture of the Seven Stars Legacy. Then, everyone present left in a grandiose manner, deeply afraid that if they were late, the box would be taken by someone else. They were all citizens, and no one wanted to do a job that licked blood from the edge of the blade for the rest of their lives. And as long as they could earn this sum of money, they would be able to retire with glory and live a rich life from then on. While the citizens were on the move, Yi Zai had already returned to the land of the cursed. As soon as he returned, Yi Zai was warmly welcomed by the little Lolas. They even chattered and asked if he had beaten the bad guys away like the androgynous warrior. Although Yi Zai was quite helpless about being treated as the androgynous warrior. But as long as the Lolas were happy, Yi Zai expressed that even if he was a crossdresser, it was not unacceptable. So he began to tell the Lolas how he defeated the strange man in black. That's right, your big brother Yi Zai used the invincible thunderclap whirlwind super punch, and then that scum called Kajitane Hiroko instantly fell to the ground. Although Yi Zai was bragging to the heavens, the Lolas were all for it. All of them were clamoring as they listened, wishing that they were there to beat big brother Yi Zai up. After dealing with the little Lolas, Yi Zai returned to his room. He planned to draw the reward for this mission as well. Now that the situation was unclear and the level 5 Gastria creature might descend, Yi Zai needed to have more tricks up his sleeve. Yi Zai had already drawn the reward for the first mission, after establishing the land of the cursed. That time, Yi Zai chose the most useless, item card, in the hope that he could find a way to alleviate the Gastria virus's invasion of their body. 
After the selection, Yi Zai chose the item card among the weapon type, defensive type, and item type. After that, he spent another 100 precious hero points to conduct another selection. The selection condition that Yi Zai chose was resistance to negative attributes. In the end, the item that Yi Zai needed really came out. Item card, ceiling bracelet design, from the God Eater. Effect, using the method of creating divine armaments to create a ceiling bracelet that can contain the mutated virus in the body. P.S., young man, I think you're missing an antivirus software. When Yi Zai obtained this item, he was even happier than if he had won the lottery. Because as long as he had this, the cursed children would no longer have to worry about their body being invaded by the Gastria virus and eventually becoming an ugly Gastria creature. Moreover, the heavens seemed to favor him. The item given this time was not just the finished product of a bracelet. Instead, it was the design of the ceiling bracelet. In other words, as long as Yi Zai understood the principle behind it, he would be able to mass produce it. This caused Yi Zai to heave a huge sigh of relief. If he had only been given a ceiling bracelet, then what the hell was this? He had a large number of cursed children here. It was useless to give them to only one. Due to the fact that the ceiling bracelet could possibly arouse the greed of those ambitious people in this world, Yi Zai did not make it public. Even the materials that he needed, Yi Zai had always entrusted Miori Shiba to deliver them to him. As for what these things were for, even Miori Shiba was kept in the dark by Yizai. Of course, this was all in the past. Now, Yizai was about to draw two random draws from the mission of capturing the Kajitain Hiroko. He didn't know when the third mission would appear, but looking at the current situation, level 5 might even appear. Yizai had to make more preparations. Yizai was already quite familiar with drawing cards. But every time, the feeling of wanting to leave Africa and enter Europe was as strong as ever. Yazai was extremely calm, but in fact, he was rather uneasy as he lifted the first card. The card that flashed on the card made Yizai extremely excited. Because the card on the card was an old acquaintance of Yizai. It was a shiny bald head and an old-fashioned yellow leather jacket. This was the coquettish baldy, Saitama. Did I just draw AF asterisk King Miracle and directly become a golden legend? Yi Zai simply couldn't calm his excited little heart. There was no way he could not be excited. This was Saitama. In theory, he was almost an invincible existence. If Yi Zai had the strength, let alone a level 5, even if the 12 zodiac thrones came together, so what? However, when Yi Zai reached out his hand towards the card with excitement in his heart, Yi Zai's expression changed. The information on the card made Yi Zai's originally excited mood fall to the bottom in an instant. Because this card was Saitama's card. It was not a character summon card, as Yi Zai had thought, but a skill card. And this skill card was something that Yi Zai had never drawn before. It was a skill card. Skill card. Saitama's serious punch, skill card. Effect, have a punch with the same power as Saitama's for a short period of time. This card can be used three times. After using it, this card will disappear. P.S. If you can still stand after my serious punch, I'll call you daddy. MF gain 3F asterisk king nuclear and still feel disappointed. Although the result disappointed Yizai a little, it was not enough to make him break down. Thinking about it, it made sense. How could the system be so kind as to let him reach the top in one go? Even if Saitama's, character summon card, was available, the probability was probably so low that it made one's hair stand on end. Yi Zai did not think that he had that kind of character. But this, Saitama's serious punch, card made Yi Zai quite satisfied. At least in Yi Zai's opinion, there were only a few people in this world who could withstand Saitama's serious punch no, in all the heavens. Even if that old guy was a level 5, and he really couldn't beat him, as long as he used this card, he was guaranteed to blast him into smithereens. He put away the card like it was a treasure. This was already a weapon with great destructive power. Next, Yi Zai began the second random draw according to the usual pattern of drawing cards. Every time he drew a card, it was easier to get something later. The card he had just drawn was Saitama's Serious Punch, 
so the next one wouldn't be Sun Goku's universe-level spirit bomb, right? Although it was a dream, Yizai knew that it was unrealistic. But he still had to have dreams. Yizai nervously opened the second card. The girl that flashed on the card gave Yizai a bad feeling. He didn't know why, but every time he drew a card, the probability of drawing a girl was higher than expected. Although beautiful girls were a basic configuration in the 2D world, this was 2F asterisk King Bazaar. His account might have been poisoned by the cross-dressing boss. The results were out. It was indeed something for girls, and it was the kind that was not soft at all. Item card, Magical Girl Mini Disc Series. Effect, none. P.S., young man, sign a contract with me and become a magical girl. F asterisk CK your magical girl, I'm a straight man. Yi Zai cursed. Last time it was a beautiful warrior, and now it was a magical girl. One time it was a warrior, and the next time it was a magical girl. Did they want him to cultivate both magic and martial arts? Moreover, Yazai was too tired to complain. It didn't matter if it was a girl or not, as long as it could be used by him. For the sake of strength, it was acceptable to sacrifice a bit of beauty. But what kind of situation was this now? They kept giving him useless things like discs. He didn't even have access to video points, so what was the use of giving him these discs? They might as well give him some discs that all men would understand. 2. But no matter how he complained, the truth was already as such. Yazai couldn't change anything. After he finished drawing the cards, he was about to slump down and doubt his life when the phone in his pocket suddenly rang again. Yazai looked at the caller ID. It was still Kazara Tendo. He wondered how their commission was going. Yazai pressed the answer button. As soon as the phone was close to his ear, he heard Kazara Tendo's excited voice. Yazai, what are you doing now? Come over quickly. Something big happened here. Do you only have this line every time? Can't you change it to something new? Yazai said unhappily. Kazara Tendo's so-called something big was nothing more than those few things. Now, the seven stars inheritance was probably snatched away by other citizens, so her retirement fund was gone. Miss Tendo, let me talk to Mr. Yizai. Just as Kazara Tendo was about to explain, Yizai heard another gentle female voice from the microphone. Is this Mr. Yizai? I'm Saitenshi. You are listening to this audiobook on web novel audiobooks Tkthigud. President Kazara Tendo didn't spout nonsense. Something big did happen, so I sincerely request Mr. Yaizai's help again. The person who took the phone from Kazara Tendo was Saitenshi. Even if she didn't say it, Yaizai could tell. What's the matter? As far as I know, almost all the citizens in Tokyo District have been mobilized. Yaizai's attitude wasn't very enthusiastic, but he didn't reject people. In fact, he really didn't want to be involved in this maelstrom. Anyone with a discerning eye could tell. From the loss of the heavily protected Seven Stars Inheritance to the appearance of Kajitane Hiroko, even a fool could tell that it was all a man-made conspiracy. Don't tell Yaizai that it was the work of the Gastria organisms. If those Gastria organisms had such brains, humans would have been killed long ago. They had numbers, and in terms of strength, the Gastria organisms were much stronger than humans. If the Gastria creatures had such intelligence, then humans would have been long dead. Yazai guessed that this was most likely a dispute between the upper echelons, so Yazai didn't want to get involved. However, after this short interaction and Yazai's understanding of the Saitenshi, he felt that the Saitenshi was a decent person. At the very least, the way the Saitenshi treated the cursed child was completely different from the way the rulers of the other regions treated him. It was also because of this that Yazai didn't completely reject the Saitenshi's request. The Saitenshi was an excellent ruler, if she died. Then if another schemer took over, it would be another question whether the schemer would be able to live in peace with the land of curses. Tell me, what happened? It shouldn't be difficult for so many people to find a box, right? Yizai sighed and asked helplessly in the end. He wanted to know what kind of trouble these people had come up with. Yes, the matter of retrieving seven stars inheritance was going very smoothly, but an accident happened. He found seven stars inheritance in a city and on the way back, he encountered Kajitane Hiroko. 
At this point, the Saitenshi was a little embarrassed. After all, it was their fault. Kajitane Hiroko ran away. How long has it been? To be honest, Yi Zai had already expected Kajitane Hiroko to run away. After all, he was strong and capable. Just by looking at the Saitenshi's guards and their indifferent attitude, Yi Zai knew that this day would come. However, Yi Zai didn't expect the Saitenshi's guards to be so useless. It hadn't been long, and they had successfully escaped. Then, the box that attracted the level 5 was snatched away by Kajitane Hiroko and the others. Yi Zai asked with a headache. At this moment, he was extremely disgusted with those so called guards. Kajitane Hiroko had a conflict with Yi Zai previously. If he opened Seven Stars Inheritance near the Land of Curses, then it would attract the Level 5's inheritance. Therefore, it attracted the Twelve Zodiac Thrones of the Fifth Level. Then, wouldn't all the little Lolas here be threatened? I can help you if you want. As long as you get rid of those guards, I'll help you. In Yi Zai's opinion, it was definitely the fault of those arrogant guards that things had turned out this way. If they could keep an eye on Kajitane Hiroko, there wouldn't be so much trouble now. The little Lolas wouldn't be threatened because of this, and Yi Zai wouldn't have to waste the usage of the Saitama Serious Punch card. Yi Zai, please forgive them. Although they failed in their duty, they paid the price for it. After Kajitane Hiroko escaped, they were all killed. Other than Captain Takuto Yasuwaki, who was no match for Kajitane Hiroko and successfully retreated, everyone else died. The Saitenshi originally wanted to blame the guards, but when she saw that only the captain who returned alone was left, the Saitenshi couldn't bear to do so. Hearing the Saitenshi's words, Yi Zai's first reaction was to be stunned. Then, he snorted. That captain, who was called Captain, escaped from Kajitane Hiroko's hands. It was most likely that as soon as Kajitane Hiroko escaped, this guy immediately sold out his teammates and ran away. However, if he were to ask the Saitenshi to kill Captain now, the Saitenshi would obviously not agree. Then I'll change my condition. If I successfully solve this problem, I want to bring all the cursed children of Tokyo here, and you have to provide assistance. Yi Zai said another condition. This was also something that had been troubling him before. Because the Tokyo district was just too big, some of the cursed children couldn't be found at all. Moreover, because Yi Zai took in a large number of cursed children, it attracted the attention of some people who began to obstruct Yi Zai's actions. So this time, Yi Zai straightforwardly made such a request to the Saitenshi. Since all of you are against the cursed children, why don't you give those children to me? Moreover, the Saitenshi had been obstructed by the higher-ups and the public because she issued a law to protect the cursed children. Now, there was no need to worry. If the cursed children were given to Yi Zai, there was no need to issue any protection law. Yi Zai was the best protection law for those cursed children. After hesitating for a while, the Saitenshi could only agree in the end. If those cursed children were willing, they would assist them to go to the village of curses. Yi Zai had no objections to Saitenshi's answer. If the cursed children themselves were willing to do so, would there be a cursed child who would be unwilling to make such a choice? On one hand, it was the Tokyo district that was starving and bullied from time to time. On the other hand, it was a paradise where one could eat their fill and have a bunch of friends. Even children should know how to choose. After this incident, all the cursed children in the Tokyo district, except for the little Lolas who became the initiators, would probably come to Yazai's side. After discussing the conditions, it was time to work. Yazai asked Saitenshi to return the phone to Kazara Tendo and asked him about Rentaro's location. Yazai moved in that direction without hesitation. Others might not be a match for Kajitane Hiroko. But Yazai felt that Rentaro was definitely not one of them. After spending so much time together, even a fool could tell that even though he had never watched the movie. If there was a protagonist in this world, then this person would definitely be Rentaro. And if he wanted to find the villain, following the child of the world was undoubtedly the fastest way. In order to rush over before Kajitane Hiroko opened the Seven Stars Legacy, Yaizai didn't even bother to hide along the way and directly used the Sky Dance technique to rush over. Compared to the possible level 5 that required Yaizai to use Saitama's serious punch, this little ability he hid was no longer a big deal. 
Because Rintaro had been in contact with the Kizara Tendo all this time, Yazai quickly arrived at the place the Kizara Tendo had mentioned earlier. But unfortunately, although there were traces of battle, he couldn't see Rintaro, Kajitane Hiriko, and the others. Clearly, they had left. However, Yaizai did meet a lowly that he saw in the meeting room earlier. Her short blonde hair was tied into beautiful braids on both sides of her face. Beside her drooping hand was a shotgun. Yaizai was still beside her and saw the civilian who had stirred up trouble earlier. He should be called something like Saitama. Sorry, Yaizai couldn't remember the name of the NPC. But looking at the wounds on his body, he was most likely dead. His body was covered with crisscrossing knife wounds. It was obvious that he wasn't killed by the Gastria creature. It looked more like someone did it. Yazai felt that it was most likely done by Koina Hiriko. Can I trouble you to kill me? Keo does not want to become an ugly monster. Just as Yazai was about to leave, he did not expect the little lowly who was leaning against the rock to speak weakly. So you're not dead yet. Why don't you want me to save you? Why do you want me to kill you? When Yazai heard the little lowly's words, he was also stunned. Could it be that this little lowly had special feelings for her promoters, so she wanted to commit suicide for him? Mr. Yizai is looking for your companions, right? They just went in that direction. I was saved in time because of your companions. But because of the battle just now, the invasion rate of the Gastria virus in my body is about to break through the critical point. Ko doesn't want to die as a monster. Yizai, please kill me now so that I can preserve my last bit of beauty. The little Loli said weakly. It was in her nature to love beauty, and even Lolas were no exception. Although he was going to die, Ko Senju still hoped to die a beautiful death. Yi Zai walked into Ko with his saber. The other party also revealed a look of relief as he closed his eyes and prepared to receive Yi Zai's blade. However, after waiting for a while, the little Loli did not feel the sharp pain of the blade piercing into her body. Instead, she felt another kind of warmth. Soon after, she heard a gentle voice again. Your name is Ko Senju, right? It's a name that will allow you to live for a long time. Why do you want to die? But Ko has already been. Ko Senju wanted to refute, but she was interrupted by Yi Zai. Can you feel it now? Has the erosion rate of the Gastria virus in your body stopped? Yi Zai's words left Ko Senju dumbfounded. She knew her own situation best. Just now, she even felt the Gastria virus in her body start to riot. How could it? But now, she realized that the Gastria virus in her body seemed to have fallen into a deathly stillness. Moreover, she did not know when a beautiful bracelet appeared on her hand. The origin and function of the bracelet will be explained later. This is a gift for you. Remember to carry it with you. Don't take it off casually. Ko Senju looked at the beautiful bracelet on her wrist and then looked at Yi Zai who had a gentle smile on his face. Unknowingly, the little Loli's face showed a hint of pink. Yi Zai carried Ko Senju in a princess carry, planning to take her away from here first. The warmth that Ko Senju felt at the beginning was from Yi Zai's embrace. Although the little Loli was very reluctant to part with Yi Zai's actions, she still sensibly refused. She also said that catching Kajitane Hiriko was more important. She was fine now and could return to the Tokyo area by herself. The recovery ability of the cursed child was different from ordinary people. Moreover, they had a certain level of combat power. After confirming that Keo had the ability to return by herself, Yi Zai continued to chase after Kajitane Hiriko and Rentaro. By the way, since your promoter is dead, if you have nowhere to go, you can come to my territory. I'll take care of you. Yi Zai smiled in a relaxed manner. Then, he swept up a gust of wind and left. Anyway, there were already so many Lolas at home. One more wouldn't make a difference. Yes, I'll definitely pay you a visit. Kao murmured resolutely. However, Yi Zai clearly couldn't hear her. After bidding farewell to Kao, Yi Zai flew in the direction that Kao had pointed at. When he arrived at the place where Kajitane Hiriko and Rentaro were fighting, Rentaro and Enju had already been defeated. The surrounding area was filled with broken trees and rubble. It was obvious that the battle had been tragic. 
Although they were both modified soldiers, Kajitane Hiroko's repulsive ability was clearly better than Rentaro's. After all, Kajitane Hiroko had been modified more thoroughly. Moreover, Enju was no match for Koina Hiroko. In the end, Kajitane Hiroko was a fierce person who was ranked 134th in IP. It was still too much for Rentaro and the others. After checking on Enju's condition, Yizai found that Enju was only unconscious. He couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Then, he went to Rentaro's side. Rentaro's injuries this time were much worse than when they encountered the Gastria creatures. Rentaro's clothes were tattered, revealing his metallic arms and thighs. Moreover, one of his arms, which was made of vi, was missing. Fortunately, this guy was a modified human. Otherwise, he would have died from excessive bleeding. Fortunately Enju, and Rentaro's lives weren't in danger. He didn't understand why Kajitane Hiroko didn't kill Rentaro and the others. However, with the protagonist's halo, even if they didn't die, it didn't seem incomprehensible. Yazai, quickly chase after them. They shouldn't have gone far. We can't let him summon level 5. Otherwise, the entire Tokyo district will be in danger. As if sensing Yazai's arrival, Rentaro struggled to get up and asked Yazai to bring him to chase after Kajitane Hiroko. Forget it. You'll just be a burden if I bring you along. I'll go back on my own. After confirming that Rentaro was fine, Yazai chased after Kajitane Hiroko. This time, he didn't chase for long before he saw Kajitane Hiroko and his daughter. Kajitane Hiroko looked at Yazai who was flying over and was momentarily stunned. Then, he gave Yazai a gentlemanly bow. Koina Hiroko stood in front of Kajitane Hiroko. Her eyes were fixed on Yazai, and she was rather wary of him. The box named Seven Stars Inheritance would be placed in front of them. Yazai san, as per our agreement, we meet again. Kajitane Hiroko's voice came from behind the smiling mask. Give me the box and I'll let you leave. The mission to capture Kajitane Hiroko alive had been completed. Therefore, Yaizai didn't have the obligation to help the people of Tokyo District capture Kajitane Hiroko again. By the same logic, without the mission's restriction, Yazai could kill Kajitane Hiroko and the others. Yazai san, don't you think this world is very boring? If there's no war, then what's the point of people like us existing? Kajitane Hiroko didn't answer Yazai's question. Instead, he asked Yaizai a question. You built the village of the cursed and took in a large number of cursed children. It's obvious that you don't have a good impression of those ordinary humans. Then, why are you helping them? That's right. Yazai built the village of the curse to adjust the authority of those big shots. No matter how one looked at it, Yazai shouldn't be a law-abiding person. In other words, Kajitane Hiroko felt that he and Yazai should be the same kind of people who wanted to stir up the world. They shouldn't be enemies, but allies. What I'm doing is what I want to do. I'm different from someone like you who doesn't know his place. I don't like those residents. It's just that I don't like their attitude towards the cursed children. Yazai didn't comment on Kajitane Hiroko's words. His values were very upright, different from a crazy lunatic like Kajitane Hiroko. Since you hate them so much, why don't you just let level 5 destroy them? Why are you meddling in other people's business? Previously, he had tried to rope Rentaro in on account of the fact that they were both modified soldiers, but he had failed. Now, he was trying to rope in Yazai, who was suspected to be a modified soldier, but judging from Yazai's attitude, it was obvious that he was done for. Kajitane Hiroko didn't understand. What was the point of the existence of these modified soldiers? Wasn't it just for war? But where was the war coming from? He needed to rely on level 5 to break this balance. I don't have the patience to bicker with you. Either you hand over the box, or I'll kill you and take the box back myself. Yazai didn't intend to talk nonsense with Kajitane Hiroko anymore. In his opinion, such neurotic villains needed to rely on the child of the world to talk their way out. His ability to talk was average. Compared to talking, Yazai clearly felt that his ability to fight was stronger. Did the residents of the Tokyo district need to rely on level 5 Gastria creatures to be deal with? Sooner or later, they would bring about their own destruction because of their stupidity. 
some people who did not even know who was protecting them would pay for their stupidity sooner or later. Moreover, once the level 5 was attracted, it would not only be the civilians of Tokyo who would suffer. The cursed children would also be victims. When Kajitane Hiroko saw that Yizai was about to snatch the box himself, he also stepped forward and planned to open the Seven Stars legacy first. Obviously, he knew that even if he and his daughter attacked together, they would not be a match for Yizai. However, the box was very close to him. It would not be a problem for him to open the Seven Stars legacy before Yizai snatched the box. Seeing Kajitane Hiroko's actions, Yizai hurriedly used his superpower to control Kajitane Hiroko's body. However, the other party seemed to have expected that Yizai would do something. He hurriedly used his imaginary device at full power and used the repulsion force to resist Yizai's superpower. Koaina go and open the box. Kajitane Hiroko struggled to use the repulsion force to resist Yizai's superpower and let Koaina go forward to open the box. Okay, Dad. Koaina naturally didn't refuse her father's order. Then, the box named Seven Stars Inheritance was opened right in front of Yazai and Kajitane Hiroko's eyes. What surprised Yazai and Kajitane Hiroko even more was that the true appearance of this Seven Stars Inheritance was actually a broken down three lane vehicle. Seven Stars Inheritance was such a grand name, but its true appearance was actually a broken down three lane vehicle. Even Yazai and Kajitane Hiroko began to doubt whether this broken down three lane vehicle could really attract the level 5 that only had 12 in the world. Unfortunately, Yazai didn't know much about this world, let alone those secrets. However, when Yazai saw the true appearance of the Seven Stars Inheritance and was stunned, Kajitane Hiroko also took advantage of this time to retreat with Koaina Hiroko. Kajitane Hiroko no longer cared whether the Seven Stars Inheritance was real or not. In any case, they had already opened the Seven Stars Inheritance. If they didn't run now, they would end up dying in Yazai's hands together. Yazai hesitated for a moment as he watched Kajitane Hiroko flee, but in the end, he didn't chase after them. Chase after and kill Kajitane Hiroko. He didn't promise the Saitenshi anything, and he didn't want to do any extra work. He closed the box containing the Seven Stars Inheritance once again. Next, he just had to return this broken down three lane vehicle, no, Seven Stars Inheritance to the Saitenshi, and his mission would be completed. However, what Yazai didn't expect was that in a forest not far from the Tokyo district, a gigantic, gastria organism seemed to have sensed something and began to move in the direction of the Tokyo district. This gastria organism could no longer be described as gigantic, it was super gigantic. Even the surrounding trees looked like potted plants when set off by this gastria organism. In addition to its gigantic body, this gigantic gastria organism had countless tentacles on its lower half, and its upper half was covered with large red eyes. It looked extremely terrifying. If someone knowledgeable was here, they would definitely realize that this huge gastria organism was the Scorpio constellation of the twelve zodiac constellations. Moreover, the Scorpio constellation's movement trajectory was very obvious. It was completely moving in the direction that Yi Zai had left in. In other words, that broken three-wheeled. Tui, that Seven Stars legacy was actually the real deal. Moreover, if Yi Zai had not closed the isolation box early and was attracted over, it was very likely that it would not only be the Scorpio constellation that was nearby. Although he did not know what kind of attraction this broken three-wheeled vehicle had to these stage 5 gastria organisms. Now that the stage 5 had appeared, it was a foregone conclusion. However, Yi Zai was still unaware of all this. He was still secretly delighted, thinking that the broken three-wheeled vehicle was a smokescreen. Yi Zai did not know the origin of the gastria organisms. Even if he was beaten to death, he would never think that a broken three-wheeled vehicle could attract the stage 5. Yi Zai was naturally happy that he did not have to use Saitama's serious punch. After all, this thing could only be used three times. Each time it was used, it would be reduced by one. However, until the Saitenshi called and informed Yi Zai. Just now, the satellite had captured the Scorpio constellation's movements. It had begun to move towards the Tokyo area. After that, she asked Yi Zai if the mission had failed. If the Scorpio constellation was just doing its daily activities, it would be fine. 
However, if it was heading straight for the Tokyo area, then they would be facing a disaster. Without a doubt, the gigantic, by, stone tablet was no different from paper in front of a, stage 5, gastria creature. It was no different from a piece of paper. Only when the Saitenshi's voice fell did Yi Zai look at the big box on his shoulder in hindsight. It can't be. This broken three-wheeled vehicle can really attract the stage 5. As the leader of the twelve zodiac constellations and the gastria organisms, why would you want a broken three-wheeled vehicle for no reason? Yi Zai's heart was filled with all kinds of curses. This stage 5 actually had a soft spot for broken three-wheeled vehicles. Did it want to change careers and ride three-wheeled vehicles? But it can't have asterisk king ride it. However, no matter how hard Yi Zai complained, the fact that the Scorpio constellation was moving towards the Tokyo area could not be changed. In other words, his mission had changed. Now was not the time to bring the Seven Stars legacy back, but to stop Scorpio from moving to Tokyo. The situation had become serious. Saitenshi and the other higher-ups of the Holy Residence were in a state of panic. If one took a closer look, they would find that in addition to being anxious, there was also a bit of unnaturalness on his face. That's right, he was the one who hired Kajitane Hiroko. However, his original intention was to scare the Saitenshi and make her withdraw the bill to protect the cursed child. But who would have thought that this Kajitane Hiroko that he had hired had a hole in his head? He actually used the Seven Stars Inheritance to lure the Scorpio constellation over. He was also in the Tokyo district, and his family's business was also here. Even if he was dissatisfied with the decision of the Saitenshi, was he going to dig his own grave? What should we do now? The number of planes that can escape to other areas is limited. It is obviously impossible to evacuate all the residents quickly. Moreover, if we release the evacuation notice now, it will only cause panic among the residents of the Tokyo district. At that time, we will not be able to control the situation. The Saitenshi glanced at the group of old men who participated in the decision making, hoping that they would have some good suggestions. How about we send the self defense force to meet Scorpio? This is our only military force. Kikunaju suggested. It was obvious that he wanted to leave the Tokyo district. Although with his status, it was not a problem to get a place to leave here, and even help his family get a place to leave. But he was an ambitious person. Their Tendo family were all big shots in various fields in the Tokyo district. But if they were to go to other areas, it was obvious that they would not be able to maintain their current status. The other people's opinions were similar to the Kikunaju Tendo. It was better to say that they were all following the Kikunaju Tendo's cue. Soon, the self-defense force was sent out. The target was naturally to meet the Scorpio constellation that was coming to the Tokyo district. The ordinary residents of the Tokyo district, seeing the fleet of planes flying over their heads, were still wondering what was going on. Only a few people who participated in the mission knew the inside story and were already preparing to run away. They were not fools. Since the self-defense force was sent out, it was obvious that the mission had failed. The Seven Stars legacy was very likely to have been opened. Which meant that soon, the fifth stage was likely to attack this area. The self-defense force that carried the hope of the entire village attacked. Soon, they found the Scorpio constellation through the satellite positioning. When the self-defense force encountered the Scorpio constellation, the two sides had nothing to say and directly started fighting. As long as they killed the Scorpio constellation and saved the Tokyo district, then they would be heroes. Not only would the Saitenshi award the medals, but a large sum of money and glory would also be waiting for them. A large number of heavy weapons were bombarded on the Scorpio constellation. But the various heavy weapons that used to be invincible could not even scratch the skin of the Scorpio constellation. Even the strongest weapons on the fighter jets could only cause a small wound on the huge Scorpio constellation. And the regenerative ability of the Gastria organism was extremely strong, not to mention that a stage 5 that was at the top of them. Often, when the self-defense force's first round of attack caused a trace of damage to the Scorpio constellation, and when the second wave of attack was formed, the damage suffered by the Scorpio constellation in the first wave had already been recovered. And although the Scorpio constellation was huge in size and was a living target, it would not passively take a beating. 
Countless tentacles were like tornadoes rising into the sky, sweeping in all directions in the sky. Because the Scorpio constellation had too many tentacles, when they were waved together, it even became a net-like attack density. Although the fighter jet pilots of the self-defense force were skilled, they could avoid the first attack, but they could not avoid the second attack. The Scorpio had only launched one attack, but they had already lost more than half of their forces. The difference in strength was simply too great. After the Scorpio wreaked havoc a few times, the originally majestic fleet of fighter jets in the sky was instantly reduced to a few sporadic ones. Then, these few fighter jets also retreated with their tails between their legs. There was no other way. It was not a bad idea to build a career and win over a fair, rich, and beautiful woman. But now, they were obviously not a match for the Scorpio constellation. It was meaningless to die for no reason, so they chose to retreat. The Saitenshi and the others in the Holy Residence saw the image sent back by the self-defense forces, and their faces darkened. The self-defense forces that carried the hopes of the entire city were defeated by Scorpio in an instant. Then, did they have anything else that could defeat Scorpio? No. There might have been weapons that could defeat Stage 5 in the past, but they no longer existed now. In the past, humans had super weapons similar to the Heaven Ladder, but in the long battle with the Gastria creatures, they had lost all their skills. The technology was either lost or the energy used to power such weapons was used up. Now, the main method that humans used to fight against the Gastria creatures was the Initiator, which was the Cursed Child. Even the world's only two records of defeating Stage 5 were done by the Initiators who were ranked first and second in the IP rankings. Lord Saitenshi, let's retreat. Seeing the self-defense forces being defeated in an instant, the group of bosses who were previously calm began to panic and began to persuade the Saitenshi to give up the Tokyo district. Previously, they did not panic at all because they thought that even if the self-defense forces could not defeat Scorpio, they could at least severely injure it. However, the current situation was completely out of their expectations. The self-defense forces that they had high hopes for were no match for Scorpio at all. What about the other residents of the Tokyo district? Do you want me to abandon them? The Saitenshi looked at Scorpio that had begun to move again and could not help but clench her teeth. The loss of Seven Stars' inheritance is my responsibility. I have decided to stay and face Scorpio with the people of the Tokyo district. If you want to leave, I won't blame you, but the quota to leave here must be publicly drawn with the other civilians. The Saitenshi did not intend to stop the group of higher-ups who wanted to leave. After all, they had no way to fight against Scorpio now. Staying behind would only mean waiting for death. However, the Saitenshi was worried that the higher-ups would take all the quotas to leave and not care about the lives of the civilians. Hearing the Saitenshi's words, the other higher-ups' faces darkened. After all, that was their original plan. Eh, why did Scorpio stop? Originally, a group of higher-ups was arguing with the Saitenshi, saying that they had worked hard and should be given a few more quotas. However, someone suddenly noticed that the Scorpio sign on the screen had stopped moving. Hearing that person's shout, everyone's eyes also turned to the screen. The Scorpio on the screen didn't move, but it wasn't that it didn't move. Instead, it was waving its tentacles crazily, as if it was slapping something. Scorpio constellation seems to be fighting with someone. Suddenly, someone saw the little black dot on the tentacle of Scorpio constellation and exclaimed in disbelief. Zoom in on the satellite image and see who is stopping Scorpio. Saitenshi suddenly ordered. Even if there was a glimmer of hope, she didn't want to give up. The screen gradually zoomed in until the distinctive green hair and the confident smile appeared on the screen. The Saitenshi and Kikunaju Tendo were both shocked. It's actually Mr. Yazai, he actually blocked Scorpio constellation alone. That's right, the one who stopped the Scorpio constellation and started a battle with it was naturally the handsome Yazai. Seeing Yazai on the screen, who seemed to be doing parkour on the huge tentacle of Scorpio constellation, Saitenshi was also surprised. She didn't forget Yazai's existence, but from the beginning, she felt that Yazai couldn't possibly be the opponent of Scorpio constellation. Her mission to Yazai was to snatch back the seven stars inheritance that Kajitane Hiroko took. After all, Kajitane Hiroko's IP ranking was 134. Among the many people in the Tokyo district, only Yazai, who was ranked 83, 
could suppress them. But even if it was Yazai, who was ranked 83, Saitenshi didn't have much hope that he could stop Scorpio Constellation. Because in the entire world, only the first and second ranked initiators could defeat the existence of Stage 5. And it was said that to be able to successfully defeat Stage 5, it was under various coincidences and preparations. And Yazai's rank 83, no matter how you look at it, was still too far away from the first and second ranked. And Yazai didn't bring along the initiators. According to the usual practice, the initiators were stronger than the promoters. This was common knowledge. The ranking obtained by IP was usually more based on the strength of the initiators. But what was happening in front of them now? What was going on? A uh, promoters with an IP ranking of 83 was actually fighting with Scorpio Constellation. And the time it lasted was actually longer than the self-defense forces that they had high hopes for. Not long after the self-defense forces were defeated, Yazai did indeed find Scorpio Constellation and fought with it. How should it be said, the strength of Stage 5 was a little beyond Yazai's expectations. It wasn't too strong, but weaker than Yazai expected. Originally, he thought that Stage 5 was estimated to have the strength of Peak Dragon Tier, but now it seemed that it was only Mid-Lower Dragon Tier. Even if it was Mid-Lower Dragon Tier, it was still not something that Yazai, who only had the strength of Mid-Lower Demon Tier, could deal with. But this Scorpio constellation happened to be the type that Yazai liked the most. It belonged to the kind of guy who had a large body and powerful strength, but was not agile. So after discovering this point, Yazai decisively gave up the original idea of using Saitama's serious punch to kill Scorpio constellation. Instead, he planned to try it himself first. If he could kill Scorpio constellation, then everyone would be happy. If it didn't work, then it wouldn't be too late to use the Saitama serious punch card. So, there was the scene in front of Saitenshi and the others. Yazai relied on his superior speed and the sky dance technique to move freely between Scorpio Constellation's tentacles. And every time Yazai waved his blade, it would cause a terrible wound on Scorpio Constellation's body. Originally, Scorpio Constellation didn't want to care about the little bug on its body, but the pain caused by this little bug made it instantly furious. Originally, as a stage 5, even if it was attacked by Scorpio weapons, the wound would be able to heal quickly. But the attributes of Demon Blade, Muramesa made the wound on Scorpio Constellation's body slow down. Although this kind of small wound was nothing compared to the huge body of Scorpio Constellation, it couldn't withstand the large number of injuries. Because the furious Scorpio Constellation's body was in pain from time to time, the attack speed of its tentacles also became faster. Facing the increased attack frequency, Yazai's way of dealing with it was to take out a bunch of bandages with a conflicted expression. Needless to say, this bandage was the one that Yi Zai had previously drawn, Urza's chest wrap. Although Yi Zai refused in his heart, after all, he was a pure man. To actually make him wear a chest wrap, this was really. But in the face of Scorpio's fierce technique, Yi Zai followed his heart and wrapped a heavy bandage around his chest under the dumbfounded gaze of the Saitenshi and the rest. Although, women's clothing was not Yi Zai's original intention, this chest wrap attribute was still quite powerful. It increased Yi Zai's overall movement speed and attack speed by 5. One must know that this was a percentage increase. In other words, the greater the base of Yi Zai's body, the greater the effect would be for him. Feeling that his feet were much lighter, Yi Zai only wanted to say that it was really fragrant. If that set of Nami's swimsuit also had such a heaven defying attribute, Yi Zai might. No, no, no. If it was a swimsuit, it was really. Yi Zai expressed that he would not do it even if he was beaten to death. Back to the topic, Yi Zai, whose speed had increased again, constantly dodged between the tentacles of Scorpio. Then, from time to time, he would take the time to stab at the big eyeballs that covered the upper body of Scorpio. Every time the Scorpio constellation was hurt, it would let out a strange roar. Its huge body also gave it an astonishing lung capacity. The roar of the Scorpio constellation caused ripples to form on the surface of the sea. Yi Zai, who was the closest, even felt that his eardrums were about to burst from the shock. Imperial Wind Sword Technique, Instant Gale Slash Due to the roar of the Scorpio constellation, Yi Zai was temporarily deafened. 
the tentacles of the Scorpio constellation whipped towards Yazai who was stunned. The sense of death approached, causing Yazai to instantly wake up. A silver light flashed in his hand, and the strongest profound of the imperial wind sword technique was slashed out. The blade tore the surrounding air and wrapped the surrounding airflow with an indomitable will, and with the flow of the surrounding wind, the slash became bigger and bigger. Finally, the slash of the wind and Scorpio's tentacles were about to collide in the air. Scorpio's tentacles were not like ordinary octopuses, which were soft and easy to cut off. On the contrary, the Scorpio constellation's tentacles were covered with hard keratinous material. Other than being able to stretch out flexibly, it also possessed a relatively high degree of hardness. One had to know that this tentacle was the whip of death that had previously swatted away fighter jets like flies. Yi's eyes, Gale Blink Slash, had just clashed with the Scorpio constellation's tentacles, and a large amount of sparks flew out. But this situation didn't last long. Along with another painful cry from the Scorpio, its tentacles were cut off. Green blood splattered all over the sky. But after severing the tentacle, Yi's eyes slash also dissipated. Seeing the tentacles of the Scorpio constellation being cut off, the Saitenshi and the others watching the battle could not help but let out a cheer. Yazai's strength simply exceeded their imaginations. The Scorpio constellation that even the self-defense forces couldn't hurt at all was actually heavily injured by Yazai alone. They suddenly felt that Yizai had a high chance of defeating the Scorpio constellation. That's right, after the self-defense forces, Yizai had become the hope of the entire village. However, compared to the optimism of Saitenshi and the others, Yizai had a bitter expression on his face. Heavily injured the Scorpio constellation. They really thought highly of him. Gale Blink Slash was already a profound technique that belonged to Yizai. Even with the addition of his superpower, it could be a little stronger, but there was a limit to how strong it could be. But this kind of attack was only able to cut off one of the Scorpio constellation's tentacles. How many tentacles did the Scorpio constellation have? At least Yazai couldn't count them. And how many times could Yazai use, Gale Blink Slash? At full strength, it could only be used five times at most. In this case, did he really, heavily injure, the Scorpio constellation? I'm afraid he only caused the other party to lose a fingernail. Originally, Yazai thought that he could save the Saitama serious punch, but now it seemed that he was thinking too much. Although he could contend with the Scorpio constellation, he was completely unable to kill the other party. Let's not talk about other things, just the Scorpio constellation's huge body, the knife wounds that Yazai left on its body were basically no different from toothpicks. Just like a nail, although it could cause pain to the Scorpio constellation, it was definitely unable to kill it. Especially when the Scorpio constellation was at the fifth stage, to kill the other party, one had to use a method to eliminate the other party in one breath, or else with the other party's vitality, it would recover sooner or later. Lord Saitenshi, I feel that there is a need to gather the remaining citizens of Tokyo District to assist Yazai in a crusade against the Scorpio constellation. Yazai's appearance gave Saitenshi and the others hope. Kikunaju Tendo even suggested to let the other citizens form an army to fight against the Scorpio constellation. To be honest, Kikunaju Tendo didn't like Yazai, whether it was his actions of taking in the cursed child, or Yazai being closer to Kazara Tendo. But he didn't have a choice, as mentioned before, the foundation of the Tendo family was in the Tokyo district. If the Tokyo district was destroyed by the Scorpio constellation, it wouldn't benefit him at all. And they didn't expect that the citizens that they had always neglected would actually be so strong. And the most important part of the citizens, which was the initiator of the cursed child, was now mostly in the hands of Yazai. Thinking about the problem that he had always neglected, Kikunaju Tendo couldn't help but feel apprehensive. He had even decided that after the Scorpio constellation's matter ended, he had to deal with Yazai and the cursed village. The Scorpio constellation's matter made him realize that the power of the citizens could not be ignored, and a large number of cursed child was in the hands of a certain person, which was something that even the big boss did not want to see. But no matter how he dealt with Yazai, the current Kikunaju Tendo did not have any thoughts of touching him. Because the crisis of the Scorpio constellation had not been resolved, and the only person who could deal with the Scorpio constellation was Yazai. Yazai's side did not know what Kikunaju Tendo was thinking, 
he had already planned to use, saw Tama's serious punch. Wasting time like this was meaningless, it was not realistic to want to wear down the Scorpio constellation. And even if the other citizens came to support, it would be meaningless, and would only be delivering their heads. Not everyone had the speed like Yazai, who could toy with the Scorpio constellation. Saitenshi issued an order to gather and began to call for the citizens of the Tokyo district to stand up and form an alliance army. And on Yazai's side, without anyone noticing, he took out a card and slapped it on his body. Skill cards with dimensional properties would not occupy the card slot position. They could even be given to others to use like the tattoo stickers from before. As soon as the card entered his body, Yazai had a feeling that he could shatter the world with just one punch. Does Saitama always have this feeling? No wonder he can't find the joy of fighting. Only by experiencing it personally did Yazai know how ridiculously strong Saitama was. Previously, in his eyes, the seemingly invincible Scorpio seemed to be just as so to Yazai. Scorpio seemed to have realized that this insect in front of him was actually looking down on him. It was, stage 5, one of only 12, 12 zodiacs, in the world, the boss of the Gastria creatures. The dignity of a boss could not be challenged, otherwise, how could he survive in the future? Scorpio looked at Yazai, who was suspended in mid-air, and controlled all of his tentacles to swing down at Yazai with great force. Yazai had no intention of wasting time. Facing the attack that would have killed him if he had been hit, Yazai calmly threw out a punch. This punch pierced through the air and directly created a vacuum in the space in front of Yazai. Then, the air pressure was compressed by the wind of the punch, and a terrifying shockwave pierced through all of Scorpio's tentacles and then penetrated the Scorpio behind it. In the end, without losing momentum, it split the earth in the middle. Yes, at the same time that the wind of the punch smashed the Scorpio into pieces, the place where the wind of the punch passed through, whether it was the ground or the forest, became a vacuum. Even the clouds in the sky were blown into two halves by the pressure of this punch. The power of Saitama's serious punch was terrifying. The staff who had been in charge of watching the battle between Yazai and Scorpio were instantly stunned when they saw this scene. After a period of days, they took out their phones and informed the Saitenshi. The Saitenshi had just personally gone to Tokyo. At this time, a large number of people had gathered in front of her, and she was preparing to give an impassioned speech. Saitenshi, there's a call from the Holy Residence. Saitenshi could not help but feel a little scared when she heard the call from the Holy Residence. She was afraid that in the next second, she would hear the news that Mr. Yaizai was defeated by Scorpio Constellation. Because in the following battles, Yizai would be the main force. Just now, when she was persuading the citizens, she also explained that there were people from the Scorpio Constellation who were in charge of dealing with them. They were only in charge of assisting, and the degree of danger was not very high. Did something happen to Mr. Yazai? Saitenshi asked anxiously as soon as she picked up the phone. Uh, no. That Lord Yazai just killed Scorpio Constellation. The operator did not know what to say. What could have happened to that monster? Scorpio Constellation was beaten into a small octopus ball. Furthermore, because of the terrifying strength that Yi Zai had just displayed, the operator had unknowingly started to speak respectfully to him. Is that so? As expected, Mr. Yi Zai isn't Scorpio. No, wait, what did you just say? Mr. Yi Zai killed Scorpio. Saitenshi originally thought that Yi Zai had also been defeated, but after a while, she realized that it was Yi Zai who had defeated the Scorpio. What's going on? How did Mr. Yi defeat Scorpio? Saitenshi was really surprised. They had been watching the battle before. Although Yi Zai could cause damage to the Scorpio constellation, the effect was really limited. The decision that Saitenshi and the rest discussed later was to let Yi Zai, together with the help of the other citizens, lead the Scorpio constellation in other directions. As for killing the Scorpio constellation, they did not even dare to think about it from the beginning. But now, this operator was telling them that one of the twelve zodiac constellations in the world, the Scorpio constellation, had been killed by Yi Zai. That Lord Yi Zai threw a punch with all his strength, and the Scorpio constellation was blasted into pieces. The operator's description was a little weak. He also wanted to describe the battle as exciting. But the truth was as such. 
Yi Zai did throw a punch, and then the Scorpio constellation was gone. Kikunaju Tendo, who was informing his family members and planning to evacuate, also received the call. Similarly, he did not think that Yi Zai and the other citizens could defeat the Scorpio constellation. He proposed to let the citizens form a coalition army to fight the Scorpio constellation. He just wanted them to delay for more time so that they could successfully retreat. But now, someone was telling him that there was no need to run. The Scorpio constellation had been killed. When Kikunaju Tendo asked how the Scorpio constellation died, the operator also said that it was killed by Yi Zai with a punch. The moment Kikunaju Tendo heard this news, his face darkened. Did they think that he was a fool? He even killed him with a single punch. Then what was he doing before this? It was not like they did not see how hard Yi Zai fought. Not to mention a single punch, who knew how many times he had slashed the other party, but the other party was still fine. Kikunaju Tendo then realized that this might be a trap set by Saitenchi. The goal was naturally not to let him leave the Tokyo district. Although Saitenchi was just a small mushroom, no one who could become the ruler of a district was simple. Now, Kikunaju Tendo was already considering whether to mobilize all the power of the Kikunaju Tendo to overthrow Saitenchi at this time. After hesitating for a moment, he took a phone beside him and dialed. Hikaru, how is the transfer of the family's property? We need to leave the Tokyo district as soon as possible. Saitenchi has already begun to make his move. She actually lied that the Scorpio constellation has been killed and the crisis in the Tokyo district has been resolved. Tendo Hikaru on the other side heard the Kikunaju Tendo's words and said, Father, I just received news that the Scorpio constellation has indeed been destroyed. The Scorpio constellation has been destroyed. Saitenshi did not lie to me. It was killed by that citizen named Jizai. What method did he use? After hearing Tendo Hikaru's words, Kikunaju Tendo was dumbfounded again. Stage 5 was actually killed. And by a promoter. This is still under investigation, but according to the people who have been observing the battle, the Scorpio constellation seems to have been killed with a single punch. When Tendo Hikaru said this, his tone was obviously subtle. Humph, do you think that's possible? Saitenshi is treating everyone like fools. I think that Yi Zai must have a special super weapon. He used the weapon to destroy the Scorpio constellation. And Saitenshi clearly wants to block the information to prevent the information of the weapon from leaking out. Obviously, Kikunaju Tendo's thought that Saitenshi wanted to take this weapon for herself. But Saitenshi was too much of a scapegoat, because she was still confused. Moreover, there was a large group of rowdy citizens below. The people here were really worried about the safety of the Tokyo district. After all, to fight against Scorpio of stage 5, even if they didn't stand at the front, they still had to take a considerable risk. Even among them, most of them already had the idea that they might die on the battlefield this time. I don't know what call Saitenshi received, but she was so surprised. Saitenshi's rich expression activities were clearly seen by the people below. They were also afraid that in the next moment, they would be told that Scorpio had arrived in Tokyo. Phew. Saitenshi took a deep breath, then put on a smile and walked in front of all the people. Thank you for being willing to face the huge risk of fighting Scorpio and gather here. But I just received good news, Scorpio has been confirmed to be destroyed, the crisis of Tokyo has been resolved. Originally, the people gathered below were worried that they would hear bad news from Saitenshi. But now, as Saitenshi's voice fell, although the people were stunned for a moment, they instantly burst into loud cheers. Scorpio was killed, the crisis of Tokyo was resolved, and they didn't have to risk their lives. Was there anything more exciting than this? Saitenshi, can you tell us who defeated Scorpio? Is it the initiator of the foreign IP ranking first and second? After the cheers, the people were curious about who defeated Scorpio. Inevitably, everyone thought of the foreign initiator. After all, there were only two cases of stage 5 being defeated. But unexpectedly, Saitenshi shook her head with a smile. The hero who saved Tokyo this time, his name is Yizai. Yizai. The creator of the cursed village. The so called demon. No wonder he dared to take in the cursed child. Upon hearing Yizai's name, everyone became noisy again. 
Speaking of which, Yazai was quite famous in the Tokyo district, whether it was his IP ranking or his actions. This time, he defeated the Scorpio constellation and pushed his reputation to another peak. As for the residents of the Tokyo district, only now did they realize that they had been living in such a crisis. That was stage 5, an existence that could easily destroy an entire district, yet they were completely unaware of it. One could imagine what would have happened if Yizai had not successfully killed the Scorpio constellation. Regardless, the residents of the Tokyo area were quite dissatisfied with the higher-ups who concealed the information. However, as the ruler of Saitenshi, she did not leave Tokyo until the last moment, so they could not blame her. Yizai, who was still unaware that he had become the hero of the Tokyo district, returned to the Tokyo district with the seven stars inheritance. He was still distressed because he had used up one use of the Saitama serious punch. However, when he thought about the terms that Saitenshi had agreed to, he felt that everything was worth it. When Yizai came to Saitenshi and handed the seven stars inheritance to Saitenshi, Saitenshi was quite excited. Yazai san, thank you for bringing back the seven stars inheritance, and thank you even more for killing the Scorpio constellation and saving the entire Tokyo district. Now, the residents of the entire Tokyo district are thanking you, and they plan to hold an award ceremony for you in the square tomorrow. May I ask if you have time? Saitenshi was really happy. She was grateful to Yizai from the bottom of her heart for saving the entire Tokyo district. No need, I will kill the Scorpio constellation because of the terms that I promised you before. It will solve this trouble. You just have to abide by the previous agreement and help me send the cursed children who want to go to the cursed village. As for the medal, I have no interest in it at all. Yizai didn't kill the Scorpio constellation out of his own intentions. He just had a good impression of Saitenshi, and he had already promised her. However, to say that he killed the Scorpio constellation to save the residents of the Tokyo district would be a little dishonest. At least, he felt that the actions of the residents of the Tokyo district were not worth Yizai risking his life to save them. After rejecting Saitenshi's kindness, Yizai planned to leave Saitenshi without looking back. However, another person called out to him. You are Yizai, right? I would like to know what weapon you used to defeat the Scorpio constellation. And as a resident of the Tokyo district, do you have the obligation to hand this weapon over to the relevant forces so that we can fight against a primitive creature like the Scorpio constellation next time? Kikunaju Tendo, who had been standing beside Saitenshi, asked Yizai for the mysterious weapon that killed the Scorpio constellation. Did they treat the Saitama serious punch as a super weapon? However, this was easy to understand. Saitama's fist could indeed level the world. However, even if there was a super weapon, why would Yizai give it to Kikunaju Tendo? Yizai didn't even have the intention to respond to Kikunaju Tendo's words as he walked out. Yizai, did you hear what I said? Seeing that the other party was ignoring him, Kikunaju Tendo couldn't help but raise his voice. I don't talk to idiots. Before you speak, please bring your brain with you. Even if I killed the Scorpio constellation with a super weapon, why should I give it to you? Why don't you share your family's women and your wealth with everyone? Lastly, from the start, I never thought of myself as a resident of the Tokyo district. Yizai's big speech made Kikunaju Tendo's face red with anger. Just as he was about to continue scolding Yizai, he was interrupted by the angry Saitenshi. Enough, Mr. Kikunaju Tendo. Please pay attention to your identity. Mr. Yizai is now the hero of the Tokyo district. His actions shouldn't be criticized by anyone. It was obvious that Saitenshi was on Yizai's side. Not to mention that Yizai had saved the Tokyo district, but in essence, Kikunaju Tendo's words were already unreasonable. And Yizai didn't have a good impression of the Tokyo district. Kikunaju Tendo's actions undoubtedly made Yizai hate the Tokyo district even more. Yizai didn't want to continue talking nonsense with Kikunaju Tendo. Instead, he returned to the village of curses. If the other party was secretly causing trouble for him, then Yazai didn't mind helping Kazara Tendo take revenge and kill this old man. After hanging out with Rentaro and the others for so long, he knew about their relationship with Kazara Tendo. It was roughly about Kazara Tendo's parents discovering all kinds of darkness within the Tendo family. After collecting all kinds of evidence, they were about to report it. 
However, Kikunaju Tendo and the others received the news in advance. Then, Kizara Tendo's parents were killed, and it was disguised as an attack by the Gastria organism. Rentaro was adopted by the Tendo family since he was young, so he knew the Tendo battle technique. He also had an inexplicable relationship with Kikunaju Tendo. However, when Kizara broke off with the Tendo family, he still resolutely stood on the side of the goddess. Kikunaju Tendo watched Yazai leave with a vicious gaze. He did have the intention to kill Yazai. However, he wasn't stupid enough to do it himself. Not to mention that the other party had a superweapon that could kill a stage 5. Based on his own strength, there weren't many people in the Tokyo district who could fight Yazai. However, smart people didn't need to do it themselves to kill people. Often, as long as they used their brains, people who could help them would appear endlessly. Superweapon, is it? I believe I'm not the only one who is tempted. Then, Kikunaju Tendo picked up the phone beside him and made a call without batting an eyelid. And the person that the Kikunaju Tendo was calling was shockingly the same as Saitenshi, the ruler of a region, Sojin Saitake. However, the district that Saitenshi was in charge of was the Tokyo district, while Sojin Saitake was in charge of the Osaka district. Unlike the Saitenshi, Sojin Saitake was a real ambitious person. The Osaka district was no longer enough to satisfy his appetite. If possible, he even wanted to rule the entire Japan and even the entire world. On the other hand, the phone call from Kikunaju Tendo accidentally revealed the news that Scorpio had attacked the Tokyo district. He also accidentally revealed that Yizai had a weapon that could destroy stage 5. That's right, everything was accidental. He, Kikunaju Tendo, was wholeheartedly thinking for the Tokyo district. How could he possibly be a traitor? 1. On the other end of the phone, Sojin Saitake put down the phone with a solemn expression. Although he knew that Kikunaju Tendo, this old fox, had bad intentions and most likely wanted to borrow a knife to kill someone. However, Sojin Saitake was still tempted. There was no doubt that as long as he had a weapon that could destroy the fifth stage, let alone the Tokyo area, the entire world would be his. Sojin Saitake's ambition instantly swelled. It was as if his long-held wish had finally come true today. However, at the end of the day, Yi Zai wasn't in the area he governed. If he wanted to mobilize troops, it would undoubtedly arouse the vigilance of Saitenshi. In that case, since he was a Scorpio, he could at least go over and express his friendly condolences to the Tokyo district. And if, during this process, Saitenshi, as the ruler of Tokyo, suddenly died, then, wouldn't he be able to take over the Tokyo district as well? At that time, whether that Yi Zai was round or flat, he would still be able to do whatever he wanted. Immediately prepare a plane for me to go to the Tokyo district and call Saitenshi. Tell him that I, Sojin Saitake, will be going over for a friendly meeting. On the other side, the people from the Tendo family were not the only ones who received the news. As a family that was on par with the Tendo family in the Tokyo district and engaged in the weapons business, Yi Zai's super weapon that destroyed the Scorpio naturally attracted the attention of the Shiba family. Considering that the eldest daughter of the Shiba family, Miori Shiba had the best relationship with the hero of Tokyo who destroyed the fifth stage, the Shiba family sent Miori Shiba over for this mission. As a matter of fact, Yi Zai had just returned from the Holy Residence. Miori Shiba had been waiting for him in the Village of the Cursed for a long time. Other than Miori Shiba, Kizara Tendo and Rentaro had also come. On one hand, they were worried about Yi Zai's situation. On the other hand, they were also curious about how Yi Zai defeated the fifth stage. The Village of the Cursed had defenses. As for the defenses, they were all good seedlings that Yi Zai had carefully selected from the Cursed Children. However, whether it was Kazara Tendo, Rentaro, or Miyori Shiba, they were all regular guests here. The little Loli also knew that they were good friends of Yi Zai's brother, so under normal circumstances, she would not stop them. You vixen, what are you doing here again? Don't tell me you have designs on Yi Zai again. Yi Zai, then what is Kazara doing here? Don't you want to see what little Yi Zai used to defeat the fifth stage? Before Yi Zai had even entered the room, he could already hear Kazara Tendo and Miori Shiba tearing each other apart. He reckoned that this situation would continue for quite some time. 
After all, it would be strange if the two of them did not start tearing each other apart the moment they met. Yi Zai now had some sympathy for Rentaro who was currently in the same room as them. Although he did not want to be involved in this strange, azure field, Yi Zai still braced himself and pushed the door open to enter when a friend came to visit. The moment Yi Zai entered the room, he clearly saw Rentaro's gaze as if he was looking at his savior. It could be seen that this unlucky child had been tortured to the point of near collapse. Kizara Tendo and Miyori Shiba's quarrel was usually only the first stage, and the second stage was when they directly started fighting. Moreover, they did not use their extraordinary martial arts skills, but instead acted like shrews, either pulling their hair or tearing their clothes. This made Rentaro suffer. He did not know if he should look at this dazzling scene. And if they found out, would they settle accounts with him? One must know that he could not afford to offend either of these two women. Little Yi Zai, you're finally back. Look at how rough Kazara is, she actually tore my kimono collar. Seeing Yi Zai enter the room, Miori Shiba immediately jogged over to complain. She even pretended not to care as she lifted her collar to show off her assets. You shameless bastard. You actually used such a despicable method. Kizara Tendo was even more displeased with Miori Shiba's actions. My assets are richer than yours, but did you see me being smug? Actually, although Kizara Tendo and Miori Shiba's relationship looked bad, their relationship was not bad. The reason for this was because they recognized each other's excellence and did not want to lose to each other. Just like just now, why did they tear each other apart like shrews? That was also because Miyori Shiba had considered Kazara Tendo's physical condition and that she could not fight, so she chose this method to vent her dissatisfaction. Seeing the signs of a fight, Kazara Tendo and Miyori Shiba, Yi Zai immediately raised his hand to interrupt. Miyori, I know why you are here. But I can only tell you, I still have the weapon to destroy Scorpio Constellation, but I cannot sell it to you. When Miyori Shiba heard that Yi Zai still had the weapon in stock, her eyes lit up. Initially, she came with the intention of giving it a try, after all, a super weapon that could destroy the fifth stage, could not possibly be a fake. Who knows, Yi Zai might only be using the weapon's last energy reserve. Then little Yi Zai, since you don't plan to sell it, then can you lend it to us, Shiba Heavy Industries, to research? Don't worry, the cost will definitely satisfy you, and we might even be able to find a way to replenish the weapon's energy. Yi Zai did not plan to sell the weapon, Miyori Shiba had already expected that. So before coming, she had already decided to take a step back, and change to borrowing the weapon that Yi Zai used to destroy, Scorpio Constellation, and bring it back for research. With the industrial capabilities of, Shiba Heavy Industries, even if they could not completely replicate it, but they could obtain inspiration from it, and create other derivative weapons, should not be a problem. Impossible, I do not agree to this. Before Yi Zai could speak, Kazara Tendo jumped out to sing a different tune. Now that the weapon was in Yi Zai's hands, then he would be in an undefeatable position. But if the same weapon were to become widespread in the future, then Yi Zai's position would not be comparable to now. Kazara Tendo was also worried that Yi Zai would suddenly become hot headed and lend the weapon to the Shiba family to research. One must know that their family was in the weapon business, as long as they could sell it for money they would not care who they sold it to. If someone were to use Yi Zai's weapon to deal with him in the future, then they would be suffering the consequences of their own actions. Kazara, you have no say in this matter, everything depends on little Yi Zai's decision. And if we really research such a weapon, at the same time when we sell it, we will sign the relevant agreement with the buyer. Miyori Shiba knew what Kazara Tendo was thinking, but she did not want to give up. If this matter were to happen, then her position in the Shiba family would definitely be superior. How can I have no say, Yi Zai is my employee, so I have the right to interfere with his actions. The reason was rather far-fetched, but Kazara Tendo still had a righteous appearance. Then, as long as little Yi and I get married, we won't have to be separated. Give up, you vixen. Yi Zai will never marry you because. Hearing the noise beside his ear, Yi Zai hurriedly reached out his hand to interrupt the quarrel between the two of them. No wonder the old man always said that three women could be compared to a vegetable market. It was not without reason. Miori, it's not that I don't want to lend you the weapon for research. It's just that this weapon is very special. 
No matter how you research it, you won't be able to find any effect. Furthermore, the so-called energy source of this weapon was absolutely irreplaceable. Although it can still be used, once it's used up, the weapon will disappear on its own. Yazai wasn't lying. They all treated Saatama's serious punch as a super weapon. Then, it was true that this thing could not be replicated or supplemented. Miori, I really didn't lie to you. If I wanted to lie to you, I would have said that the weapon was destroyed when we destroyed Scorpio. Looking at Miori Shiba's unconvinced look, Yazai could only say that. No matter how much Yazai said, it was still because Miori Shiba had helped him so much. Furthermore, they were friends. If it was someone else, Yazai wouldn't even bother to talk to them. He would just kick them out. Then, can you sell one use of this weapon to our Shiba family? Indeed, Miori Shiba also felt that Yazai didn't need to lie to her. If he really didn't want to lend it to her, he could have just rejected it. I'm very sorry about that. Because of the following uses, I want to save the lives of these children. Perhaps one day I will leave this place, so I don't intend to sell it. That's right. Ever since he obtained the Saatama Serious Punch card, Yazai had this idea. After he left this world, with so many cursed children gathered in the cursed hometown, it would definitely attract the attention of some ambitious people. As for Kazara Tendo and Rentaro, although they were quite strong, they were far from enough to protect these children. As for the number skill card, it could actually be used by others. Yazai's original intention was to leave it as a trump card for these children. In addition, Yazai had just used such a weapon to eliminate the Stage 5 Scorpio constellation. He believed that it had already created a certain amount of deterrence. In the future, those who wanted to reach out their hands would have to consider whether they were more durable than the Scorpio constellation. After hearing Yazai's words, Miori Shiba already knew that she couldn't do it. Because she was very clear that Yazai viewed these children as very important. It was as if from the first time she met Yazai, Yazai's actions were all done with those children as the starting point. Miori, I've said so much to you because I see you as a friend. I hope that you can keep what I've said to you today a secret. Saatama's serious punch had a number of uses. Yazai didn't want too many people to know about it. Because although that would still have deterrence, it would undoubtedly be much weaker. In the end, Miori Shiba left. Kizara Tendo and Rentaro temporarily stayed behind. Because as Yazai's companions, the moment they returned to the Tokyo district, they would be surrounded by all sorts of questions. It was simply annoying. Brother Yazai, another cursed child just came. She said it was Ko Senju. She said that you asked her to come and find you. Kizara Tendo was originally trying to get the reward for this mission from Yazai's hands. Kana hurriedly ran in and said. It's her. I didn't think that she would come so quickly. Can you help me bring her here? Kana naturally nodded her head to show that there was no problem. Then, she ran out in a hurry. You kidnapped another lowly. Kizara Tendo looked at Yazai with disdain. She always thought that Yazai had a special fetish, but the latter refused to admit it. What are you talking about? You guys have seen this person before. The one who started the muscular bro in the meeting room last time. Because her promoter was killed by Kajitane Hiroko, that's why I took her in. In fact, Kizara Tendo wasn't the only one who thought so. Most people in the Tokyo district thought that Yazai had a special fetish. Previously, they thought that Yazai took in the cursed child because of his ambition. But ever since they knew that Yazai had a weapon that could instantly eliminate the stage 5, this thought was dispelled. Because with such a destructive weapon, the act of taking in the cursed child was simply a move. And because Yazai became the hero of the Tokyo district, the previous title of Lord of Curses also changed to The Man with 800 Little Lolas. On the television, Saitenshi was speaking. It was mainly about affirmation and commendation for Yazai's achievements. However, the main character wasn't present. The residents of Tokyo couldn't see the hero who killed Scorpio. Yazai is really something. So what if he went to receive the medal? He can also help our company advertise on the television. Kizara Tendo sat on the sofa and watched the hero who were surrounded by the group of Lolas. They were wearing magical girl clothes and performing how to defeat Scorpio. 
Those people on television who want to see a hero will never think that their so-called hero is actually a man dressed in women's clothes and performing fighting against small monsters. Rentaro was speechless as he looked at Yazai who was having fun. Every time he was with these little lolas, Yazai's entire persona would collapse instantly. The Yazai who said, I want to be their hero, to him was so handsome. But now, he was so funny. It's because of this personality that brother is so popular. Kao passed a cup of coffee to Kazara. Looking at Yazai who was interacting with the cursed child, her face was filled with a happy smile. Just yesterday, Kao Senju, who had just arrived at the village of curses, was officially appointed as the senior manager of the village of curses. When Yazai found out that Kao Senju was the initiator of the Dolphin Factor, and had an IQ of 210, Yazai immediately quit and became a hands-off manager. Without a doubt, compared to fighting, Kao's ability in management was more valuable. Facts also proved that her ability was indeed outstanding. She only took over for a day and managed the village of curses in an orderly manner. Not only did she divide the village of curses, but she also appointed all the little lolas to various positions. Kao, why don't you come to our company? You won't have a future if you follow Yazai. Look at him. Kizara was moved by Kao's ability and wanted to poach the little lolas to be her secretary. No, wherever brother is, Kao will be there. Moreover, I like this place and I like everyone. All right, Kizara sank in an instant. She was too naive. It was unrealistic to think that she could trick the little loli away from Yizai. All the little lolas here treated Yizai as their idol. Even a bad word about Yizai would cause them to be displeased, not to mention poaching him. Do, 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 do. Yizai, who was playing with the little loli, suddenly had his phone ring. He picked it up and saw that it was a call from the Saitenshi. Ever since the incident with Scorpio Constellation, Saitenshi had obtained Yizai's phone number from Kazara. Mr. Yi, do you have time next? The pleasant voice of Saitenshi came from the receiver. Didn't I tell you? I'm not interested in any award ceremony. Just do as you see fit. Yizai thought that Saitenshi wanted him to go over and attend some hero commendation ceremony. No. I have something else to ask, Mr. Yazai. Can you come to the holy residence? Saitenshi was furious. After all, she was the manager of the first district, and she was also considered a beauty. But to Yizai, sometimes speaking was not as useful as a little lowly. All right, I'll find some time to go over later. There was no choice. Yizai could not reject Saitenshi's words. Because not long ago, the other party had helped him a lot. After getting rid of Scorpio Constellation, Saitenshi was also quite trustworthy. She went against the opinions of the masses and sent everyone who was willing to go to the cursed village to Yizai. Although it was a deal that was agreed upon long ago, Saitenshi was facing so much pressure. Yizai did not mind helping Saitenshi a little. When Yizai arrived at the holy residence, he met an unexpected person at the entrance. And this person was someone that Yizai hated. What was his name again? Stop, this is the holy residence. It's not a place where a lowly person like you can step in. Yizai did not want to lower himself to the level of this retard and wanted to go straight to Saitenshi. However, before he could take a few steps, he was stopped by this idiot. As expected of a man who dares to call himself insurance. Kajitane Hiriko did not kill you, and now you want to continue to court death. Saitenshi is also stupid. To think that a piece of trash like you would continue to stay by her side and be the captain of the guards. Yizai had never been a person who knew his place. If he wanted to fight, he would accompany him. If it was a battle of words, he was not afraid of anyone. I'm called to Kudo Yasuwaki, not insurance. I've been unhappy with lowly people like you for a long time. Today, you trespassed into the holy residence. I can totally execute you on the spot. Takudo Yasuwaki was instantly enraged by Yizai's words. He took out a gun and pointed it at Yizai's head. Oh, you think this thing can kill me? You're right. I don't think you deserve to be called insurance because you're not insurance at all. Even if Yizai didn't want to argue with this idiot before, he was still infuriated now that someone was pointing a gun at him. Yizai gently placed his hand on the hilt of the sword at his waist. 
With his current proficiency in using the Imperial Wind Sword technique, he was completely confident that he could use Steel Slash to separate the head of the Protector before he opened fire. Stop, all of you. What are you doing? Just as Yi Zai was about to make a move, Saitenshi heard the commotion and came over. Seeing the two people at daggers drawn, she immediately stopped them. Captain Yasuwaki, Mr. Yi Zai is my guest. You can't be rude to him. When the Yasuwaki heard Saitenshi's words, the veins on his head bulged, but he had no choice but to put down his gun. In the past, Saitenshi called him Captain Takuto, but now they used his surname. It was obvious that they were alienating him. In the Takuto's opinion, all of this was because of Yi Zai. Ever since the Lord of Curses appeared, nothing went smoothly for him. Saitenshi no longer trusted him like before, and he was getting further and further away from Saitenshi. You actually keep this retard by your side. Sooner or later, he'll get himself killed. Yi Zai looked at Takuto and said unceremoniously. In his opinion, it was not impossible for a person who abandoned his partner in a dangerous situation to abandon his master in the same situation. Saitenshi naturally understood this logic, but under Takuto's pleading, her heart softened. Moreover, facing Kajutain Hiroko who was far stronger than them, even if Takuto attacked together, they would only be courting death. However, after that incident, Saitenshi also felt that the strength of the guards was not enough to protect her. This was also the reason why Saitenshi called Yi Zai over this time. Saitenshi wanted to ask Yi Zai to be her personal bodyguard for the time being. Saitenshi received news that Sojin Saitake was coming to Tokyo. Saitenshi had heard of Sojin Saitake. He was a very ambitious person. This time, he came to express his concern, but Saitenshi didn't believe him at all. Coming to express his concern was fake. His real intention was to take control of Tokyo. If Sojin Saitake wanted to take control of Tokyo, the first obstacle would be Saitenshi. It was quite possible that he would make a move on her. Considering these circumstances, Saitenshi wanted to entrust the powerful Yi Zai to be her bodyguard temporarily. Lord Saitenshi, we are your bodyguards. If you need a personal bodyguard, you should let me be your bodyguard. Before Yi Zai could say anything, Takuto who had been eavesdropping at the door couldn't hold back anymore and ran in angrily. Because in his opinion, Saitenshi was already his. How could he allow others to taint her? And now, Saitenshi directly bypassed him and chose Yi Zai to be her bodyguard. This made Takuto even more furious. Captain Yasuwaki, you just need to remember your duties. It's my personal decision to appoint who to be my bodyguard. And what you did just now was completely beyond your authority. I can definitely remove your position as the captain of the bodyguards. Saitenshi's tolerance towards Takuto Yasuwaki was reaching its limit. Previously, it was because of those sacrificed members that they had left behind someone to protect them. But now, the bodyguard not only eavesdropped on their conversation, but also wanted to interfere with her decision. This was no longer what a bodyguard should do. Please forgive me, Saitenshi. I was completely impulsive just now. Takuto Yasuwaki panicked when he heard that she was going to fire him. He still hadn't given up on Saitenshi. If he left Saitenshi, it would be even more impossible for him to get Saitenshi in the future. Captain Yasuwaki, I have given you too many chances. Please leave now. Saitenshi's face was firm. If it wasn't for the fact that there was no one else she could use, she would have fired the bodyguard long ago. Seeing that there was no way to salvage the situation, Takuto Yasuwaki could only clench his teeth and look at Yi Zai before leaving. That's right. In Takuto Yasuwaki's opinion, Saitenshi's alienation and even firing him was all Ye's fault. Seeing the look in Takuto Yasuwaki's eyes as he left, Yi Zai expressed that he didn't care at all. If it wasn't for the fact that this was the territory of Saitenshi, Yi Zai would have already drawn his sword and ended this idiot's life. Although it was impossible for Takuto Yasuwaki to do anything to him with his strength, the best way to prevent him from attacking the people around Yi Zai was to eliminate him completely. Yi Zai had never been a soft-hearted person. He had already decided to get rid of this person after leaving the holy residence. Yi Zai had also agreed Saitenshi's request. Anyway, it was only a matter of a few days. Now that Keo was in charge of the cursed village, he was almost bored out of his wits every day. 
Also, as the manager of Tokyo, Saitenshi had no prejudice against the cursed child, and Yazai was more or less fond of the cursed child. However, if it was Sojin Saitake, it would be hard to say. Yizai left the holy residence when he received the news that he would only start his guard duty tomorrow. When they arrived at the entrance, Yizai even specially asked the guard which direction Takuto had gone in. That's right, Yizai wanted to get rid of Takuto right now. What the f asterisk ck, revenge was a dish best served cold. Yizai's revenge could not be delayed. He wanted to eliminate all future troubles now. When he walked out of the holy residence, he was attracted by the scene in front of him. The scene of a young girl being surrounded by delinquents attracted his attention. A little girl about the same age as Kanna was wearing pajamas and large slippers. She was riding a large women's bicycle and was currently surrounded by a few delinquents. Encountering such a scene, Yi Zai could not help but be nosy again. It could not be helped. If it was someone else, it would be fine. However, when Yi Zai saw such a young lowly, he could not resist. Moreover, a young lowly of this age was most likely a cursed child. If he did not stop her, the young lowly would definitely not end well. The delinquents did not intend to do anything to the little girl. They just wanted to rob her. When they saw Yi Zai walking out of the holy residence and walking towards them, they immediately ran away in panic. There was no doubt that the people who could walk out of the holy residence were not people that delinquents like them could afford to offend. I really met the legendary hero. The young lowly muttered softly when she saw Yi Zai walking over. They can't be considered heroes. They were all scared away by themselves. Hearing the young lowly's words, Yi Zai could not help but find it funny. At the same time, he sized up the little girl from a close distance. She had an exquisite little face that was rich in collagen, but strangely, she seemed so tired that she could not open her eyes. Even when she was talking to Yi Zai, her eyes were half closed. It was as if her eyelids would close at any time if she did not force herself to. Are you okay? Did those people do something to you just now? Yi Zai wondered if those delinquents had used drugs on the young lowly, causing her to be in a daze. I'm completely fine. Tina is just not good at moving around during the day. I'll be fine after taking some medicine. The young lowly patted her chest and guaranteed that there was no problem. Then, under Yi Zai's stunned gaze, she took out a can of caffeine, poured a handful of it, and stuffed it into her little mouth. After taking the medicine, Tina has indeed become more energetic. Why the f asterisk ck are you telling me? How did you become more energetic? And eating caffeine like this, are you sure there's nothing wrong with your body? Yi Zai looked helplessly at the young lowly who could fall asleep at any time and complained weakly. Your name is Tina, right? You're a cursed child, right? Although the young lowly might have used her contact lenses to cover her red pupils, Yi Zai still felt it. After all, he had a bunch of young lolas at home. He was all too familiar with such an aura. Moreover, how could an ordinary person be able to take a handful of caffeine so casually? Even an adult would die from it. When Yi Zai said, cursed child, he clearly saw a trace of vigilance in the young lowly's originally dazed eyes. At the same time, there was a trace of pity. Tina had been through all kinds of assassin training all her life and then carried out all kinds of assassination missions. She had been modified and used, but no one had ever cared about her. Today, she finally met someone who not only saved her but also worried about her physical condition. However, Tina believed that all of this was based on the fact that she was not the cursed child. If he knew that she was the cursed child, this big brother hero would also show a look of disdain. However, to Tina's surprise, what greeted her in the next second was not a face filled with disdain and disgust, but a big hand that was rubbing her blonde hair. Seeming to have noticed the panic and doubt in the little Loli's eyes, Yazai could only say gently, You might not believe it, but I want the sisters of nearly a thousand cursed children. So, you don't have to worry about anything. I like the cursed children the most. Dot no comment. Yazai skillfully tidied up Tina's messy hair and began to ask about her origin. As far as he knew, most of the children of Cursed in Tokyo should have been taken to the hometown of Cursed by him. Other than the little Lolas who had become the initiators, it was rare to see the children of Cursed wandering around in Tokyo now. T 
Tina just came back from abroad. She's now surveying the terrain. The little lowly said in a daze. Yazai's gentleness made the little lowly reveal her origin subconsciously. Of course, Tina didn't mention the most important part of the mission even though she was in a daze. On one hand, this was the quality of an assassin. On the other hand, Tina did not want to bring disaster to Yazai. It's about time, Tina should go back. After chatting for a while, the little lowly said goodbye to Yazai despite her reluctance. Are you sure you can walk back by yourself like this? Yazai looked worriedly at the little lowly who was walking left and right with a face full of disbelief. It's fine, Tina is already used to it. He wanted to send the little lowly back, but thinking that he still had to deal with the bodyguard, he finally left his phone number and told the little lowly to call him if she was in trouble. Yazai did not know whether to laugh or cry when the little lowly got Yazai's phone number. She was actually worried that Yazai was lying to her. She first called him once, and when she saw that the call was indeed connected, she took the phone and left as if she had found a treasure. Looking at the clothes she was wearing just now, she should have a family. At least she doesn't have to live in poverty. Yazai murmured as he looked at the little lowly who was leaving slowly. This was also the reason why he did not invite Tina to the cursed village just now. Although having a big family wasn't bad, having a family that loved her was obviously the best home for her. Yizai tossed aside the other thoughts in his mind and disappeared in a flash. He still had to get rid of that bodyguard. After asking and inquiring along the way, Yizai finally found a bodyguard in an underground bar. At this moment, Takuto Yasuwaki was drinking with a few of his friends and complaining about Yizai. How despicable and shameless this gigolo was to obtain Saitenshi's trust. Takuto, although I sympathize with your experience, it will be very difficult for you to take revenge. That cursed child is really strong. Moreover, he has a large number of monsters. I think such a person should be bitten to death by those monsters. Should I say, as expected of someone who hangs out with the best bodyguard? Yazai had just saved the Tokyo district, and these people couldn't wait for him to die. Moreover, there were quite a few people in the Tokyo district who had the same idea as these people. So what if Yazai saved the Tokyo district? They would only think that the civil were paid to do these things, and that it was their duty to do so. In the eyes of the residents, those cursed children were gastria creatures, and they were all creatures that deserved to die. Yazai, who raised them, was naturally classified as one of those creatures that deserved to die. Doesn't the Lord of Curses value those monsters? Perhaps we can take action from here and avenge Takuto. I have a friend who is in the underground business, and he can get a lot of C4. At this point, a cruel expression appeared on that person's face. Although they were all, cursed children, if they were bombed at that time, they would still die. Hearing that his friends could get their hands on C4, Takuto Yasuwaki's eyes instantly lit up. He felt that this suggestion was great. After all, they were all monsters, and if they died, that person called Yazai would be heartbroken. It was the best of both worlds. And Yazai, who heard their discussion, was also glad that he had followed them. Otherwise, wouldn't he have made a big mistake? Suppressing the urge to kill that scumbag in an instant, Yazai squatted until they were ready to leave. After all, in a place like a bar, there were many eyes and ears. It didn't seem very good to kill people openly. And when Takuto Yasuwaki and his group were drunk and swaying out of the bar, Yazai quietly followed them. In the dark alley, a few men who looked quite frightened were huddled in a corner. When they saw the figure walking in with a knife, their bodies trembled crazily. In another corner, a figure dressed like a dog had already fallen in a pool of blood. He looked very miserable. His entire body had been cut into a human stick. He was barely hanging on to his last breath, but he wouldn't die for the time being. You damned peasant, what do you do? Saitenshi won't let you off. Even though he was on his last breath, Takuto Yasuwaki still cursed Yazai, even though his tone wasn't as strong as before. He was infuriating Yazai. His goal was to make Yazai end him quickly. He was in too much pain, and now he couldn't wait to be free. I originally didn't want to bother with trash like you, but you challenged my nerves time and time again. In the end, you even wanted to make a move on my important people. So what if you're Saitenshi? 
so what if you're everyone in the Tokyo district? If anyone wants to hurt them, I'll drag everyone down with me. In the end, Takuto Yasuwaki couldn't make it through due to excessive blood loss and directly died. Yazai even felt that it was a little too easy for the other party. After all, he actually planned to use a bomb to deal with a group of innocent lolas. It was simply crazy. After Takuto Yasuwaki, Yazai turned his gaze to Takuto Yasuwaki's friends. They had just witnessed Takuto Yasuwaki's death. In their eyes, Yazai's current figure was no different from a real demon. It was so much so that when Yazai's ice cold gaze landed on them, one of the more timid fellows among them instantly wet his pants. That's right, he was really scared to the point of peeing. In their eyes, the current Yazai was a perverted killer. Some of the weak willed ones had already crazily banged their heads against the wall in order to die a quick death so that they wouldn't suffer inhumane torture. It's all Takuto Yasuwaki's idea. It has nothing to do with us. Lord Yazai, please let us go. I can give you a lot of money. Of course, there were also guys who were anxious to cut ties with Takuto Yasuwaki and begged for mercy. However, Yazai's face was cold, and he didn't have the slightest intention of being lenient. After the miserable screams came from the alley, it slowly calmed down. Yazai walked out of the alley with a calm face, leaving behind a hellish scene. Although this MC have some weird taste and a bit stupid sometimes but I like him. The next day, Yazai reported to the holy residence on time. He looked warm and gentle, without a trace of the tyrannical aura he had yesterday. His mission today was very simple. It was to escort Saitenshi back and forth, including meeting Sojin Saitake. Yazai-san, I'll have to trouble you for the whole day. Saitenshi was very happy to see Yazai. Of course, if it wasn't for Yazai's prejudice against the residents of the Tokyo district, she would be even happier. It's okay. Anyway, I've been free recently. I was almost fired by Kizara. Yazai also joked, but in fact, Kizara was quite dissatisfied with Yazai's behavior. Because of the destruction of Scorpio, the Tendo Guard company that Yazai worked for became famous. Even Rentaro's IP ranking rose to around 1000 because of that incident. Naturally, a large number of commissions came along with his reputation. Furthermore, most of these requests were for Yizai, who was responsible for eliminating the Scorpio constellation. But Yizai had no interest in completing the commission at all. He stayed with the Lolas and had a lot of fun. Sitting in Saitenshi's exclusive car, Yizai chatted with Saitenshi to avoid awkwardness. Among them, Sojin Saitake was the one they talked about the most. From Saitenshi's introduction, Yazai had a preliminary understanding of what kind of person Sojin Saitake was. He also figured out why Saitenshi asked him to be a guard. It could only be said that at this time, this ambitious person called Sojin Saitake came to the Tokyo district with ill intentions. At this moment, Yazai, who was sitting in the car and chatting with Saitenshi, suddenly felt an alarm in his heart. A feeling of uneasiness arose spontaneously. As a sword master, his instinct told him that he was being watched. No, or rather, it was Saitenshi beside him who was being watched. Yazai san, what's wrong? Did I say something that made you unhappy? Saitenshi saw that Yazai, who was talking and laughing, suddenly had a serious expression. She wondered if she said something wrong. Nearly a thousand meters away, a young figure was lying on top of a tall building with an oversized sniper rifle in her hand. She was looking at Yazai and Saitenshi through the scope. An ordinary sniper rifle had a maximum range of a few hundred meters. Moreover, the angle and firing speed of the bullet would exceed expectations after it exceeded the firing range. However, none of this was a problem for Tina. Because she was a cursed child with the owl factor, her eyesight was outstanding. Apart from being a cursed child, she was also a modified soldier of the Homo Evolutus modification program, just like Rintaro. The spherical object floating beside Tina was called Celestial Field. It was connected to the AI chip in her body and could help Tina analyze all kinds of data to help her find the best sniping position and timing. Modified soldiers had a high mortality rate in the first place. Now that the children of Cursed who had the Gastria virus in their bodies were added with the Rhenium metal, the mortality rate was even higher. As one of the smartest scientists in the world, Ayn Rand had sacrificed a large number of cursed children to successfully create Tina. 
However, with a huge price to pay, naturally, came great strength. Tina and Yazai's situation was very similar. Their IP ranking was achieved by themselves. This was because Tina's theoretical promoter was the one who modified her, Ayn Rand, a guy who did experiments all day long. Tina's IP ranking was also quite shocking. She was ranked as high as 98th. That's right, this seemingly weak little mushroom was a fierce person who could reach the top 100 all by herself. Because of the angle, Tina could only see his eyes back through the scope. However, this did not stop her from sniping Saitenshi. Tina was completely confident that she could finish off the bodyguard with one shot and end Saitenshi with the second shot. But the moment she pulled the trigger, the scene in front of her stunned her. The bodyguard sitting next to Saitenshi suddenly kicked the entire car door away and pulled out a long sword. What happened next was even more unscientific than her celestial field could not fathom. The sniper rifle bullet that pierced through the air was cut open by the sword. That's right, it was cut open in that sense. After all, that was a bullet. Moreover, the speed of a sniper rifle's bullet was not comparable to that of a pistol. Not to mention, the sniper rifle in Tina's hand had been modified. Moreover, for a normal weapon, even if it was lucky enough to cut the bullet, the weapon would not break due to the huge impact. However, such an illogical scene happened right in front of Tina. When Tina saw the monster's face clearly, she could not help but be stunned again. Isn't this the big brother who saved the damsel in distress yesterday? He's the Saitenshi's bodyguard. Tina's mind went blank. The target of the assassination was actually the big brother who cared about her yesterday. On the other hand, after Yazai cut open the sniper bullet, his hands were trembling. He almost could not catch the Mura Mesa just now. Mr. Yazai, are you okay? Saitenshi was also panicking. If it were not for Yazai just now, she would probably be dead already. Next, you go see Sojin Saitake yourself. I'll go after the killer. From the position of the bullet, Yazai had basically determined the killer's position. Yazai still had the same idea. Revenge was not enough. Instead of worrying about when he would be plotted against, it was better to get rid of the other party as soon as possible. Immediately after, under Saitenshi's surprised expression, Yazai's body erupted with a wave of air and shot toward a building in the distance at an astonishing speed. After a brief moment of surprise, Tina finally decided to retreat. However, it was obviously too late. The distance of thousands of meters was only a few seconds in front of Yazai who used the sky dance technique at full strength. When he saw Tina holding a large sniper rifle and wearing a small dress, Yazai was also surprised. He originally thought that it was a professional killer, but it turned out to be the confused little Loli from yesterday. Today's Tina was completely different from yesterday's dull and confused look. At this moment, she was holding a sniper rifle with a conflicted expression and pointing it at Yazai. Why does it happen to be Big Brother? Tina doesn't want to be Big Brother's enemy at all. Tina was quite uncomfortable now. Yesterday, she thought that she had met an angel, but today, she had to. However, Tina did not dare to disobey her master's orders. If she did not, Tina did not even dare to think about the consequences when she returned. I didn't expect it either. Yesterday, I thought that the little girl next door was a little girl. Today, she turned into a professional killer. Yazai also did not know whether to laugh or cry. It could be seen that the little Loli did not want to kill him out of her intention. Moreover, Yazai felt that killing the little Loli was too. Why don't we pretend that we didn't see each other and just let it go? But you have to promise me that you won't assassinate Saitenshi. Yazai could tell that Tina didn't really want to kill him. She just didn't expect that he would be the one protecting Saitenshi. No, Master's order is to kill Saitenshi. If Big Brother is protecting the mission target, then Big Brother will be Tina's enemy. Hearing Tina's words, Yi Zai's face fell. He wasn't angry at Tina, but at the person she called Master. It was another fellow who looked like Kajitane Hiroko. The originally innocent and naive little Loli had been trained to become a psychopath who killed without batting an eyelid. But looking at Tina's appearance, it was obvious that she wasn't as deeply poisoned as Koina Hiroko. She could still be saved. Saitenshi is a good manager. Do you know what will happen to the other children who are cursed children like you if she dies? 
Without a doubt, if Saitenshi were to die in the hands of the cursed child, Kikunaju Tendo would definitely make a big fuss about it. He might even start to clean up the cursed children openly. Perhaps this was one of the reasons why he tipped off Sojin Saitake. Also, where is your bullsh asterisk tea master? Big brother will help you get rid of him. Then you won't have to carry out orders that you don't want to. Yi Zai tried to reason with her. However, although Tina was hesitant, she didn't put down her weapon in the end. It wasn't that she didn't know what was good for her. In fact, she had already given up on assassinating Saitenshi and didn't want Yi Zai to look for her master. As one of the smartest people in the world, the power that Ayn Rand possessed was terrifying. In Tina's opinion, Yi Zai going to kill him was like hitting a rock with an egg. Tina had already made up her mind. She was going to fight Yi Zai and die under his blade. This was the best ending for her. Tina was already tired of the assassination life, but she couldn't get rid of it. Rather than dying in the hands of others or becoming an ugly, gastria creature, one day, she would rather die in the hands of her gentle big brother. Bang! Following Tina's gunshot, the battle began. Yi Zai instantly jumped away from his original position, sheathed his Miramesa, and used the scabbard to fight with Tina. Now he was angry. Even if she was a beautiful lowly, she couldn't be so willful. Yi Zai decided that after he subdued Tina, apart from asking her about her master, he would also spank her a few times as punishment. On top of the tall building, two figures moved quickly. Tina was like a small armory, constantly pulling out all kinds of weapons. Yi Zai couldn't help but want to ridicule him. Are you Doriman? Why is there a howitzer under the skirt? With a large number of weapons and the support of Xianfield, Tina was like a humanoid cannon with 360 degrees of supercilious eyes. Even Yi Zai felt a little troubled. A storm like barrier appeared in front of Yi Zai, sweeping away all the bullets and cannonballs flying towards Yi Zai. However, after the wind wall lasted for a period of time, it disappeared into thin air. What followed was a few rolling remote controlled bombs. Although he had the godly skill, Wind Wall, that could block flying items, it still had a cooldown. The enemy's attack was simply continuous. What is Tina's IP ranking? Why do I feel like she's more difficult to deal with than Kajitane and Koina? Yi Zai, who was hiding on the stone pillar, was also covered in dirt at this time. In fact, Yi Zai could easily take Tina down if he used his sword aura without holding back. However, he had the demon blade in his hand. If he didn't control it well, the little lowly might die on the spot. I can only use my superpower. When this girl fights, she's much more difficult to deal with than that idiot Rentaro. It was not that Yi Zai looked down on Rentaro, the real protagonist, but if Rentaro really fought with Tina, he would most likely be no match for the little girl. There were probably only a handful of cursed children and modified soldiers in the entire world. Boom! Not long after Yi Zai hid behind the stone pillar, several small armed drones flew over and began to bombard Yi Zai. This time, Yi Zai didn't continue to hide. Instead, he charged in Tina's direction without hesitation. Wind Wall A slash that was like a wall of wind, like a chasm, blocked Yi Zai and all kinds of bullets that were shot at him. However, this wind wall didn't last for long. After blocking a large number of attacks, it disappeared into the air. What welcomed Yi Zai was another wave of large-scale gunfire and hail of bullets. Although Tina had been trying to kill Yi Zai, Yi Zai wasn't the only one who was holding back. Tina was doing the same. Although a large number of bullets and cannons were shot at Yi Zai, these were all calculated by Xian Field and would not cause Yi Zai's death. In the face of the second wave of bullets, Yi Zai didn't choose to retreat like before. Instead, he focused his mind and used his superpower. What happened next made Tina's little mouth open slightly. It was as if something unbelievable had happened before her eyes. Time seemed to have stopped. The bullets that were shot at Yi Zai in the air seemed to have lost their momentum and stopped in midair. Although Yi Zai was equipped with the Kaiatsu card, using his superpower on such a large scale drained him quite a lot. As for why he didn't directly use his superpower to control Tina, it was because Tina had Xianfield. Even if she was suppressed by her superpower, Xianfield would still help her control the drones. 
The drones, bullets, and grenades all stopped in midair. Yizai didn't waste any more time and planned to quickly subdue Tina. However, when Yizai was about to rush to Tina's side, Tina did something that Yizai definitely didn't expect. He saw Tina smile apologetically at Yizai. Then, she actually jumped down from the tall building. Tina had the animal genes of an owl, but this didn't mean that she could fly. Yizai's brain instantly went blank. At a time like this, he couldn't think too much. His body erupted with the strongest aura yet and he jumped down right after Tina. If I fall to my death from such a high place, will Tina be in a lot of pain? Tina, who had closed her eyes and was waiting for death, couldn't help but mutter to herself worriedly. If you know it will hurt, why did you jump down? Isn't this troublesome? She felt her rapidly falling body suddenly come to a stop, followed by a warm embrace. She also heard Yizai's voice, which seemed to be quite troublesome. Brother, you can actually fly. Tina finally opened her eyes, and she was quite surprised when she saw the two of them floating in the air. Yeah, so you're not worried about me even though I'm so powerful. Yizai shamelessly praised himself and then began to talk to Tina. On the other side, Saitenshi successfully met with Sojin Saitake. The moment Saitenshi appeared, Sojin Saitake's expression was strange. Because Saitenshi's appearance meant that the assassination attempt failed. He even went abroad to find a professional assassin, but this was the level of the assassin. It seems that Sir Sojin Saitake is not very happy to see me. Saitenshi looked at Sojin Saitake and said with a stern face. She just came to meet with Sojin Saitake, and she was assassinated on the way. Even a fool would know that it was Sojin Saitake's doing, so it would be strange if Saitenshi was happy. The assassination attempt failed, and Sojin Saitake did not have the patience to argue with Saitenshi, so he directly expressed his intention for the super weapon. Although Saitenshi was a young woman, this was her home ground, so her attitude was naturally tough, and she had no intention of relenting. Saitenshi, do you think that the strength of your Tokyo region can withstand the attack of our Osaka region? I heard that because of Scorpio, your self-defense forces suffered heavy losses last time, right? Saitenshi's face turned pale when she heard Sojin Saitake's words. Just when Saitenshi was about to rebut, an accident happened again. Someone rushed into the room with a panicked look on his face. Saitenshi, there's a message from the giant stone tablet, the giant stone tablet showed signs of corrosion, and a large number of gastria creatures gathered around the giant stone tablet. The moment Saitenshi heard this news, her mind went blank as if she had lost his mind. Then, she looked at Sojin Saitake angrily, thinking that it was his doing, but at this time, Sojin Saitake's face was also filled with fear. I want to control Tokyo region, but I don't want to destroy it, and I'm also in Tokyo region now. The corrosion of the giant stone tablet was not a small matter, because the giant stone tablet made of I had always been the fortress of humans. Isolating the Gastria creatures was the invasion of humans, and if the giant stone tablet collapsed, then the result would be obvious. A large number of Gastria creatures would rush into the Tokyo area and prey on the powerless Tokyo residents. What's going on? Why would the giant stone tablet suddenly show signs of erosion? Saitenshi was anxious. She had no choice but to be anxious, because the current situation was even more dangerous than the Scorpio constellation from before. According to the images sent by the satellite, there is a special gastria organism lying on top of the giant stone tablet, spraying liquid that corrodes the stone tablet. And that gastria organism has just been confirmed to be Aldebaran. Aldebaran, the subordinate of the Taurus. Due to its special ability to corrode, vibe, metals and release special pheromones that attract other gastria creatures, it was given the name of the constellation of the Taurus. It's actually the fifth sign of Aldebaran. But why did it have to choose Steel 32 in the Tokyo district? But now was not the time for Saitenshi to think about this. She had to think of a way to deal with the incoming Gastria army. Contact all the craftsmen in Tokyo. The new monolith must be built immediately. But it will take at least a week to build a new monolith. But according to the corrosion rate of the fifth sign of Aldebaran, the current monolith will completely lose its effect in three days. Saitenshi's face turned ugly when she heard this. This was simply an unprecedented crisis. With such a thing happening, Saitenshi was no longer in the mood to continue arguing with Sojin Saitake. 
now she needed to go back to formulate countermeasures and appease the residents of the Tokyo district. This matter was not like the Scorpio constellation incident, which could not be hidden at all. The corrosion of the giant stone tablet was getting worse by the day, and it was impossible for the residents living in the surrounding area to not notice. In other words, this time, in addition to dealing with the crisis of the gastria organism, they also had to deal with the possible riots in the Tokyo district. Your Excellency, it seems that you have encountered a little trouble. Do you need help? Our Osaka district is very willing to lend a helping hand. At this time, Sojin Saitake, who was sitting on the other side, suddenly said. What do you need me to do? Saitenshi was not a fool. Would Sojin Saitake be kind enough to help? She would be thankful if he did not cause trouble. I want half of the management rights of the Tokyo district. If you agree, I will mobilize the self-defense forces of the Osaka district to support. Sojin Saitake took the opportunity to ask for an exorbitant price. His original intention was to destroy the Scorpio superweapon. However, it was said that this thing was in the hands of a citizen called Yazai, and Saitenshi herself did not have the right to use it. Therefore, Sojin Saitake's idea was to first erode the Tokyo district, and then slowly deal with the citizen of Yazai. In the face of Sojin Saitake's robbery, Saitenshi clenched her teeth, but in the end, she relented. Your self-defense forces must successfully defeat or kill Aldebaran, then I will hand over half of the management rights. Saitenshi had no choice. She really loved the Tokyo district, but the self-defense forces of the Tokyo district had already been crippled by the Scorpio constellation. They were simply unable to deal with the coming Gastria army. However, she also kept a secret. That was, Sojin Saitake must successfully defeat Aldebaran before Saitenshi could fulfill her promise. No problem, happy cooperation. I will go and contact the Osaka district now. Seeing that Saitenshi clenched her teeth and agreed, Sojin Saitake laughed and left. Saitenshi also returned to the holy residence, and at the same time, she invited a large number of media. This matter could not be hidden, so she could only try to calm the people as much as possible. After Yazai brought Tina back to the land of the cursed, the little Loli could not believe that there was actually such a place in the world. Under Yazai's repeated assurances, and after showing the battle record of eliminating the Scorpio constellation, Tina finally felt at ease and stayed. At this time, the TV was broadcasting the corrosion of the giant stone tablet. Saitenshi was nodding her head and apologizing. She also called for the capable people of the Tokyo district to form an alliance to resist the Gastria army. On the TV, Saitenshi was still there to reassure the residents. This time, even the self-defense forces of the Osaka district would help. They would definitely be able to survive this ordeal together. However, it was obvious that Saitenshi had been working hard, but the residents did not think so. First, it was Scorpio, then it was Aldebaran. It was simply endless. Some residents had begun to question Saitenshi's ability as a th manager. Due to the corrosion of the giant stone tablet, the current Tokyo district was in a state of panic. Some people simply gave up on themselves, some looked for ways to leave the Tokyo district, and some even implicated the cursed children in their anger and began to shout at them. There were even more radical people who even formed a team to eliminate the town of cursed children near the Tokyo district. Moreover, in the latest regulations announced by Saitenshi, only about 30% of the population of the Tokyo district could complete the transfer. However, this 30% of the population was determined by drawing lots, and the cursed children also had the right to draw lots. And when the residents of the Tokyo district learned of such an outcome, they found it even more unacceptable. The number of places to leave was limited to begin with, and they actually had to be distributed to those monsters. Most people could not accept such a fact, and some had even begun to take action. They planned to eliminate the cursed children in order to free up their own places. Yazai held the Muramesa, his body covered in blood. If one looked closely, they would discover that the blood was not the blood of the Gastria animals, but scarlet. In the past few days, Yazai had killed countless groups of people who came to seek death. He had never been a kind person, and Yazai did not show any mercy to those who wished for them to die early. And despite Yazai's wanton slaughter, it did not scare away all the crazy people. In their opinion, once the Gastria creatures entered the Tokyo district, they would most likely be devoured. Instead of waiting for death, 
they might as well think of ways to increase their success rate of drawing lots. That's right, these ignorant people did not think about how to fight against the gastria creatures that were about to arrive. They only knew how to bully the weak and fear the strong. They bullied a bunch of young Lolas in order to increase their chances of survival. In the end, the annoyed Yazai could only release the news that the town of Curses would not participate in the drawing of lots. Only then did the situation become much better. But because of this, Yazai's attitude towards the Tokyo district, which did not have a good impression of the Tokyo district, instantly fell to the freezing point. Have you really decided not to join the coalition army and help defend against the Gastria army? As the Holy Son and the protagonist, Rentaro naturally joined the coalition army formed by the people. Furthermore, because his IP was ranked in the top 1000, he was even given the position of a small team leader. But at this moment, his face was full of anger because his close friend, Yi Zai, actually refused to join the coalition forces to save the Tokyo district together. That's right. Why should I risk my life to save those idiots? Rentaro, you've seen it for yourself, haven't you? They can't wait for me and these children to die, yet they actually want me to repay their evil with kindness and save their worthless lives. What happened before made Yizai completely give up on the Tokyo district? In Yizai's opinion, the only way to change this distorted world was to kill all those idiots. But not everyone is like that. Those are lives we're talking about. Are you just going to watch them die in the mouths of Gastria creatures? Rentaro was a little agitated. In his opinion, Yaizai's actions were too cold-blooded. Heh, Rentaro, you have to get this straight. Their lives are important, but are the lives of the cursed children not important? As for those who don't hate these children, after an investigation, I'm very happy to accept them into the cursed village to receive protection. But if you want me to risk my life for those idiots, I can only say that I'm sorry. I'm not that open-minded. The walls of the cursed village were all made of Vi. Although they weren't as majestic as the giant stone tablet, in order to be safe, Yi Zai didn't cut corners. Everything was made of pure Vi. In the past two days, the reason for the giant stone tablet's problem had been found. It was because the person in charge of the project had cut corners for his own benefit, which led to the arrival of Eldebran. Therefore, from the beginning, the cursed children had the right to draw lots. It was a joke because they didn't need to run at all. But those who were blinded by anger wouldn't think so much. They were led by someone else and clamored to kill the cursed child. At the same time, because of this, Yi Zai was completely annoyed. In fact, Rentaro wasn't the only one who wanted Yi Zai to join the coalition forces to help defend against the Gastria creatures. Previously, Saitenshi had also called. She wanted Yi Zai to become the commander of the coalition forces. But as one could well imagine, Yi Zai naturally refused. Still, Yi Zai wasn't magnanimous enough to repay evil with good. If Saitenshi came to the cursed village, Yi Zai would naturally welcome her with open arms and legs. But if she wanted him to risk his life for those idiots, Yi Zai wasn't interested at all. During this period, Saitenshi also asked Yi Zai if he could use the method to destroy the Scorpio constellation again. Yi Zai's answer was simple. He didn't have any energy left, so he couldn't help even if he wanted to. Are you really going to leave us in the lurch? Seeing that Yi Zai was really indifferent, Rentaro finally asked loudly. But Yi Zai's attitude was firm. He directly faced Rentaro with silence. In the end, Rentaro left dejectedly. Although he was very angry, he also knew that he couldn't blame Yi Zai. He could only say that those people in the Tokyo district were really too disappointing. Due to the large amount of corrosion caused by the giant stone tablet, even the sky started to become as dark as night. Black rain even started to fall. Because of this, the price of the tickets to leave the Tokyo district skyrocketed. Those who had no hope of leaving also started to give up on themselves and indulge in the last moments of their lives. The streets were no longer as peaceful as before. Smashing, robbing, and stealing became the main colors of the streets. In the face of danger, all kinds of bad habits of human beings were exposed. Currently, the people in the Tokyo district could be divided into three groups. The first group was still rational. They believed that there were still many civilians in the Tokyo district. Together with the self-defense forces of the Osaka district, they might be able to put up a fight. 
these people were mainly the civil and those who had the ability to protect themselves to a certain extent. The second group was those who started to gradually realize their mistakes. They felt that they shouldn't have hated the cursed child and hoped to be protected by the cursed village. The last group was also the most numerous. Almost 90% of them were unrepentant. They believed that the cursed child was a monster and should be killed. Some of them even suggested that they should chase all the cursed children out of the cursed village. Then, they would be able to enter the wooden walls of the cursed village. Moreover, there were quite a few people who were so shameless. Never underestimate a person's darkness. When faced with death, they could do anything. As for those who wanted to take over the place, Yazai naturally didn't choose to let the matter rest. Kanna, Tina, Yazai, and a group of cursed children who were suitable for combat had organized a line of defense. Not to mention the ordinary people in the Tokyo district, even if the Gastria creatures wanted to break through, it would not be that easy. Although killing people was a little unacceptable for the little Lolas, Yazai wouldn't show any mercy when he did it. After this incident, people finally began to officially recognize these cursed children. No one would have thought that a group of children like them would have such amazing combat power. But now, everything was irreversible. Previously, they wanted to kill them. Now, they wanted them to risk their lives for them. Do you think it was possible? Even at this point, those people were still stubborn. They believed that even without relying on those cursed children, the self-defense forces of the Osaka district could defeat the Gastria army. When such a voice reached the ears of the civilian coalition army, it immediately made the civilians who were rubbing their hands and preparing to fight with all their might feel greatly disappointed. They had originally planned to sacrifice their lives for the Tokyo district, but who knew that no one had any expectations for them at all. So, what were they doing this for? In addition, the main contributor in the battle against the Gastria creatures was the initiator of the cursed children. And the attitude of the residents of the Tokyo district towards them had greatly disappointed them. Finally, on the third day, the giant stone tablet that had been corroded by Aldebaran for three days finally collapsed. And the Tokyo district also ushered in the invasion of a large number of Gastria creatures. The first line of defense formed by the civilians finally clashed with the Gastria creatures. The battle was on the verge of breaking out, but the situation was far worse than what everyone had imagined. Aldebaran's IQ was quite high. He could even command the Gastria creatures to attack in an orderly manner. These organized, Gastria creatures were terrifying. Be it in terms of numbers or strength, they were far superior to the civilian coalition army. In the end, it was the commander-in-chief of the civilian coalition, Nagamasa Gadu, who paid the price of losing a leg to barely injure Aldebaran and made him retreat temporarily. However, everyone knew that the fifth sign of Aldebaran wasn't heavily injured. With the Gastria organism's recovery ability, it wouldn't take long for him to fully recover. When they attacked again, the civilians would not be able to stop them. This was because in just the first contact, more than 30% of the People's Alliance army had died. Furthermore, most of the initiators had mutated due to the excessive amount of Gastria virus in their bodies due to prolonged battles. And to the Gastria creature, the number of deaths was nothing at all. Everyone could even foresee that there would be even more Gastria creatures attacking next time. Unlike the disappointment of the citizens, the citizens of the Tokyo district were quite excited when they heard that the citizens had defeated Aldebaran. In their opinion, if even the motley crew could defeat Aldebaran, then the well-equipped self-defense forces would definitely have no problem. What didn't disappoint the residents of Tokyo District was that the self-defense forces of Osaka District finally attacked and the Gastria creature was retreating. They wanted to take advantage of Aldebaran's injury to eliminate it in one fell swoop. Then, the other Gastria creatures would naturally be leaderless. Even if the Gastria creatures wouldn't disperse after that, an unorganized Gastria army would still be much easier to fight than now. In order to win over the people's hearts faster, Sojin Saitake had really put in a lot of effort this time. Not only did they send out a large number of fighter jets, but they also sent out a lot of ground troops such as armored vehicles. The self-defense forces that carried the hope of the entire Tokyo district had arrived. A large group of fighter jets flew over the sky of the Tokyo district in a mighty manner, causing the people to cheer. However, when these fighter jets had just flown out of the range of the Tokyo district, 
a few laser beams suddenly shot out from the forest in the distance. These fighter jets that were placed high hopes on didn't even have time to fire a single bullet before they were instantly destroyed. The troops on the ground weren't any better. In the process of chasing the injured Eldebrin, they couldn't even see the other party's shadow. They were drowned in the Gastria creatures that had been lying in ambush for a long time. As mentioned before, Aldebaran's intelligence was quite high. How could it not understand the schemes of humans? When the battle damage report was placed on Sojin Seitake's table, the entire Tokyo district panicked. The self-defense forces that they had placed high hopes on had been completely destroyed by the other party without any achievements. Then, did they still have hope? The entire Tokyo district fell into panic at this moment. Even the self-defense forces had been defeated. Then, how many times could the remaining people coalition army resist the attacks of Aldebaran? It would still take a few days for the new giant stone tablet to be completed, but they could hold on for a few days. Faced with such a situation, Saitenshi also had a bitter expression on his face. In the end, she decided to personally go to the village of the cursed again and ask Yazai for help. Now, in the entire Tokyo district, the only one who still had the strength to fight against Aldebaran was Yazai. Yazai's personal combat strength was one aspect. He also had a large number of Lolas with explosive combat strength and a mysterious superweapon. If there was anyone who could still turn the tide and save the Tokyo district, Saitenshi believed that this person would be none other than Yazai. When Saitenshi arrived at the periphery of the Village of the Cursed, he realized that it was unusually lively. Other than a large number of people, there were also many residents of the Tokyo district. These residents hoped to enter the Village of the Cursed to receive protection. Now that the self-defense forces had been defeated, they had lost all hope. Therefore, the Village of the Cursed was their only chance to survive. Yizai naturally ignored the residents who were yelling at them. However, these people did not leave and continued to wait at the periphery. As for the people, they came with Rintaro. They were led by Nagamasa Gadu, who had lost a leg. Their goal was the same as the Saitenshis. They hoped that Yazai would lead the 800 Lolas to join the battle and save the Tokyo district. Perhaps Yazai was really annoyed by the commotion, so he finally walked out this time. What do you want? I said that I won't join the battle so I won't join the battle. Don't force me to attack you. The people of the Tokyo district were in this state because of their own actions. Yazai would not sympathize with them at all. 